world, but also somatic shapes. These are the moats we're told, right? Because we're all taught that the castles were, and, you know, were these square buildings with a moat. But when we can see them from above, there's these intricate cymatic patterns. And clearly you can see why we call them star forts, because they look like stars. So here's one in Portugal, one of the star forts, the huge amount of terraforming around it. Amazingly, this one is still in pretty much pristine condition compared to the destruction of most of the ones you find today. Piano notes. As you can see, these are all cymatic. A, A sharp, B, C, and they're all these cymatic shapes. These are cathedral windows, this line here. These are, you know, rose windows or rolling cathedrals. And these are cymatic patterns, which are, which are created through um, frequency, so either harmonics or intention. Down here we have, this is our DNA, so these are fractals or cymatic patterns of our DNA. This is this is what we get when it's when it's good intention. We get these perfect, you know, geometrical shapes, and when it's bad intention, we get this goop. So this is like a polluted river, and this is like a clean river. And so if we tie this back to the cathedrals who, that have got these windows and they're connected to the ether with all these spires. And then what else do we have in cathedrals but these things called organs, right? And we have these things called organs in our body. And we just, the DNA, you know, um, cymatic is the same as, as some frequencies in these windows. So what this is all looking like is these are, these are you know, healing, healing factories, or, or not even healing, wellness, I guess, just to keep people well. They're pumping out, they're pumping out frequencies. You can literally Google any city of, of the old world from the 1600s and back and it will come up in these star fort shapes and every single one is like Venice and these canals everywhere. Those were the highways of the time, but they were also so, so much more with all of like this hidden technology infrastructure and buried history. And you can see this one again, all of these big cathedrals in the, in the cities, but Here's one of the, the stars, right, or batteries attached into the wall. And there's even another one, one of these more sort of um, irregular shaped ones out here. But they always have these stars attached, you know, to these star cities. And again, the canals, and, you know, you can see this is a big island kind of thing as well. But the thing is with water, water's free energy. You know, you float a boat, you use the current, right? The current. How about the Electricity just as much as it was the physical power and mechanical power that they used out of it. What's to say that windmills and water wheels weren't actually generating hydroelectric and wind power a few hundred, five hundred years ago? This is a, a drawing, this is um, New York City, right? Um, battery Park is because this is what was there, a battery. All right, we are live. We have Campbell. And we have the Dutch sense. Uh, Mike, you are muted at the moment, though. Uh, good day, Campbell. Hello, hello all. Dutch. Hello, hello, everybody. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. I feel very honored. Very good to see you guys. And I'm recording at my end so I can play it back on my YouTube channel in a premiere. And you guys can come over to the chat room over on my YouTube channel and we'll watch it back with thousands of more people and get it out on my main YouTube channel when it's all done here. So that'll be cool. That'll be great. That'll be great. Absolutely, yes. brother. And uh, we'll help bring in a little bit more understanding of such things as these star forts, the mega terraforming, and uh, such where such things that it's like the Grand Canyon even potentially could be lost, uh, destroyed civilization and that you've actually found that uh, it seems a lot of the continents even are from a mega size to down and that there's been many, many huge catastrophes in the past. And that's what you track and uh, have also deciphered the cycle of the energy patterns of, uh, well, the realm that we live in. You're very kind in your assessment of what I have found. Uh, for those of you who have never seen me, I don't normally show myself on camera, okay? Yeah. I, I'm on here with these two guys, and they look way better than I do, just so you know. 
<laughs> Man, oh no, it's it's really good to be on here. And we're going to talk about a few of the things that I found. I'll do a screen capture and we'll show um, the indisputable evidence of giant structures that have I found while searching earthquakes. The way <coughs> it all started, and I will explain as we go along, how I found it, how I found you guys, how I found mud flood and uh, Tartaria and all that. Because I, at the uh, starting about three years ago, I was clueless on all these topics, and I actually came across a uh, a music video of a guy playing drums, recent Tartarians, and I came across that by searching. I was searching for the ancient history of Greece. I was searching up these. Uh, somebody <laughs> had told me a, a legend of Zeus and Kronos and the gods of ancient Greece and tossing mountains, and they had these. Uh, hundred-handed creatures that were the size of mountains that could toss mountains, and those creatures fought with the Titans against Zeus and the gods, and they got tossed down to a place called Tartarus. And I was searching Tartarus, and up comes recent Tartarian's drum guy, which then led me to Zertus, and a bunch of videos by him who I'm like, what's this guy talking about? And that then led me to go look at things in a little bit different way on the shapes of things. And next thing you know, within a few months, I'm noticing earthquakes striking. And the earthquakes, as I zoomed in on them, I noticed were part of these. Well, I'm not doing the Illuminati sign, just so everybody knows. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing a diamond. Really, shape, the Star Forge. Illuminati shape. confirmed. Okay, it's this <laughs> shape, like that. Okay, it's, it's a diamond shape, not, not the yeah. Jay-Z, whatever. But I'm just doing that shape with my hand so you can see it. I'm not making any hand sing signals, guys, just so everybody knows. <laughs> and the owl on my head is from Night Owl Seeds. Long story on that. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting that out of the way right now. But I will, if, if you don't mind, I'll turn on a display capture, and that will show you my whole screen here. This is going to show you everything, including the back end, whatever, but I don't care if anybody sees it. Because we're going to jump right over to Google Earth, and I'll show you starting... And Sorry, oh shout God. out to Andreas Zertis, who uh, we are actually live on the Zertis channel right now, uh, and oh. I sent Zertis a link, so uh, he Ooh, might okay. join us if he wakes up, but uh, probably won't in time, as we had a late one uh, earlier before this. But yeah, it's uh, funny how the world works, and that it was the topic of Titans, you said, and Tartarus, and then your first dream here. Uh, you met Mike and talked to Mike and all of his research on Titans. And it's just these, it brings back the actual real possibility that every, what we've been taught to believe as fictional legends of our histories were in fact uh, the actual realities and real histories are a lot closer to them. And that uh, the Hopi legend, I thought like the five realms where they, go of uh, the sun and of humanity where one gets destroyed or goes underground comes back up and stuff but that it was like it went from uh, the titans on, or the turtles back to the titans to the giants or the gods titans giants and then us and then potentially even going into a new uh, fifth age of the sun too and that's a whole another rabbit hole or portal or black hole white hole uh dutch that i want to go down with you too of uh is the sun white now or is it now a white pulsar do you know anything of that of the sun cycles and the thing of it Have you heard it, of it's very interesting you mentioned that on the sun cycles and the white light and the sun the, the light that the uh, sun used to emit and that will apparently supposedly emit in the future you know, when you were talking about the cymatics and the church uh, stained glass and the leaded glass, the red glass, the blue glass, the different colors, that the sunlight is already known to have this effect. We already know vitamin D. and We already know vitamins, quote unquote, um, are contained in the sunlight itself. But it's just the inducing of that out of your body with the light, with the photons in your skin. All right. It brings out. But vitamin D goes into your body that's produced on the surface of your skin from the reflecting of the photons that's just with the light now do i know if it's white or not i can tell you that i've seen some videos on youtube over the past few years showing the difference between what our sunlight used to look like let's just say 20 years ago and what our sunlight looks like now 
and that it does appear to be whiter. And I saw some articles on that too in the mainstream media, but you know, I mean, yeah, mainstream media. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point with stained glass, isn't it? You know, is is was that developed to change the color of the sun when it goes white? I don't know. Random thought, right? Yeah, the there's animal. a lot of talk about that actually, about the yeah. the, the white light with the church in particular churches and um, cathedrals and uh the holy or just the sacred temples and energy points of, mm. and palaces everywhere and pyramids too what, what i've got on the screen here is in case you guys can you guys see it can you see uh, the glow yeah. here on the screen okay um this is antarctica okay so for instance here's australia here's africa Here's South America. Now, I noticed that a series of earthquakes are striking up here, right next to our letter X, right up here. Now, when you look at South, uh, the whole South Pole, or whatever you want to call this, look at it. I want you to see, well, I'm not going to tell you what to see, but I'm going to tell you the shape that is here. And I'm not doing paradelia. This is physically oh. in the plates. First of all, we have a spade shape. Now, it's not completed all the way. It's a spade shape, though. Okay, at the center, it looks like a spade symbol. I, I now, see what you're saying there. Okay, yeah. now, around the outside edges are the actual fractures of the plate boundary. And let me back it out just ever so slightly. Starting back here, okay, we have the classic starport pentagonal shape around the outside edge of all of, all, uh, of the entire south pole going out to australia over to the east going out to africa over to the west and going up to the middle of the indian ocean where it shoots out like a lightning bolt out and going up to the north now i'm going to explain this all to you what i found i measured this i measured this from the far back south and i'll show you it on google earth so you know i'm not tripping just on my copy of earthquake 3d that it's all about orientation on how you view the earth you guys already know this looking at the geoglyphs around the planet and all the different things that you're finding. But when I look at it this way, now you can really see it on the plate. Do you see, first of all, I should ask, do you see it? Do oh, you see five A hundred percent. And yeah, it's like those bastion, same angled bastion shapes of the star fort shapes and mm -hmm. uh, trigonometry. And that it's the exact same ones that you also uh, have shown and demonstrated and measured throughout North America and uh, the massive star fort uh, geometry there. And here it is on the screen. Okay. I mean, you can see a thousand different examples of it. Here's one, the famous one in Holland, but this is the shape we're talking about. Okay. So this shape right here on screen on the sides of the star fort is this shape around Antarctica itself with a spade symbol. Okay. Now, just, it, you, you know, you, you might think that I'm just seeing things or whatever, but now I'm going to take you over to Google Earth and we're going to, I know we're using the round Earth, whatever, but it doesn't matter because we're going to zoom into where it's flat. We're going to zoom into a, a view flat onto the Earth, so to speak. And now we're looking at California. In case you don't know, this is California. I'll bring this back to North. And this is the way people normally look at California. All right. Now. I'm going to turn it sideways to see what we're talking about here. You don't really have to look too hard to see it, to see the same shape. And I will trace it out for exactly, you with my ruler. Right? It is yeah. the exact same shape as the star fort. It starts back here, goes up to here. It's about 125 miles exactly, almost at 25. And then up to here, this is points up to the San Andreas. It's 300 miles long total, and it's in the topography of the mountains itself. These are mountains. These are not rivers there are rivers that flow along them but these are actual thousands of foot high mountains i can move my mouse over it goes up 1500 2000 feet high it's Major 300 miles ranges. long now and get this in the middle of each one and there's more than one there's three of them going all the way up to the washington state there's three huge ones there's a military base in the middle of each one where we launch nuclear bombers from this one and they built a big x marks the spot in the middle of each one too i will show you at least 10 more examples of this where there's a military base or u.s government base built right in the middle pinnacle tip of one this is 300 miles long look guys i'm measuring just straight back to the back end look where it goes back to is that the, the grand, grand 
Yeah. That's the Grand Canyon. Yes, sir. It's blown out on the back side. It's like on literally the right inverse side. features to the extremes uh -huh. on each end of it. And that at, at the t intersections and tips of each of these angles are these energy nodes that now the military or the um, powers that be in highest technology are using their uh, building their sites on. Right. And now I can prove this. This is at first I would understand people would be skeptical. But with Edwards Air Force Base in the middle, you might say we're just tripping on the right side over here, right on this side of the star fort or what, I, what I'll call a star fort is Area 51 and the nuclear test sites. Here's the nuke test sites. And now the nukes tie in on this. I'll explain in a minute the nukes. But here, these are all underground craters. Here's Area 51 right next to it. So on one side of this giant star fort, which it is, and it's symmetrical, and it's the same measurement on both sides. That's key to this is that these are down to the mile on all sides the same. Now on the west side over here is the U.S. Marines training base and bombing range called 29 Palms on this side and where they store a bunch of nuclear material. So nuclear material, bombing range on this side. Nuclear material, Area 51 and bombing range on this side. And in the middle pinnacle tip is Edwards Air Force Base. Now, over here, there's two more. They're harder to see, but they are there. And I have measured them in the topography, and I'll do it for you right now. Going up to the north and back down to the south, it's a giant triangular shape. It's the old ocean that used to be in here. And on the back right side of it is Salt Lake City, the Big Depression. So on the back right side of one of them, we have the Grand Canyon. On the back right side of this one, which I will measure for you and show you, it's the same distance from the back to the front. Again, we're going 300, 350 miles. At the pinnacle tip of this is another military base. This one is where we store nukes again. This is the Sierra Army Depot in the middle pinnacle tip of the second one. Now, there's a third one. It's easy to see. It's so over on the east, far eastern side or the northern side. This is Washington State, Bend, Oregon. Here's the Puget Sound in Seattle. And here is our giant third part of the 300-mile-long star fort. And it has a giant crater at the back side. What's in the pinnacle tip? And it's the same geometry as oh, yeah. what you originally showed Sorry, around the sneezed. Antarctic. I almost just sneezed in the microphone. At the pinnacle tip is not a military base, though. At the pinnacle tip of this one is the Facebook, Facebook. And, yeah, Facebook and Apple data center is at the pinnacle tip of this one. And I'll, I'll turn on my label so you can see I'm not exaggerating. This really is the Facebook data center. See, Facebook data center and zoom in, Apple data center. They've built their data centers in the middle of the, <coughs> of the third one up on the east side. So now that's three of them. One, two, three. All three of them have a pinnacle tip, something in the middle, significant and a blast outside on the back side, all three of them. Now, you'd have to say that that's coincidence with all three with the military base in the middle of them. But there's another one, an even bigger one, and it's in the Midwest U.S. This gets into what I found, guys, and what my wife found. I'm looking at the Midwest like this. Here is St. Louis, Missouri right here where I live. And on this over here is the town of New Madrid, Missouri. You guys may have heard of the town of New Madrid from the great New Madrid earthquake right here, town of New Madrid. So what I want to show you is the exact same shape in the actual mountains of Missouri pointing down to Oklahoma. And on the left side is New Madrid. On the right side is St. Louis. On the far right side over here, Kansas City. And on the pinnacle tip, Muskogee, Oklahoma, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. On the left-hand side is Little Rock were built out at like a Pentagon all the way around it. And this one is 300 miles long. And I'll measure it from back to front to show it to you. It's pointing somewhere, which I'll show to you in a second, but it's almost right down to the mile of the size of the ones over in California. Now, this is significant because on the left side here is New Madrid. And on the right mm -hmm. side here are the Cahokia Mounds right across from St. Louis, right in here. They're directly across from downtown St. Louis. And I know I've got the map turned sideways, so I'll bring it in here and show you why the Cahokia Mounds matter. Here, let me get the Cahokia Mounds on here, first of all. 
Here's downtown St. Louis. We go due east, and they are right in here along the train tracks. I don't have my really? place marks. But anyway, okay. So why is why are the Cokia Mountains there. significant? On the back, this is a giant 300 mile long one. Look it's at plain. that. Look, Look at it, right? Wow. Right. Now to seal the deal that this means something. Once we're gonna zoom in on the them, back. You can't unsee them, they're literally everywhere. Look at this. Look at this. On the side of it, this one's huge. Fractal. And on the side of it is a tiny one that's six. Well, it's tiny. It's six miles by nine miles. And that's right here. And this is made of mountains. And I'll wait for the imagery to load because it looks like it's just tree clear cuts. But no, these are actual foothills. This goes up from 300 feet to 600 feet. It's 400 feet high almost. And it's exactly down to the mile, six miles by nine miles. See nine miles? Looks yeah. like a diamond, right? Okay. Nine miles, nine miles, six miles, 5.9. I'm not doing it exactly. And... 5.9 to 6. And now this, here's New Madrid. Here's the tiny star fort. Now right across the river, if I turn it this way, we go over here. Right over here, and this is the Ohio River where it comes down and meets up with the New Madrid. Go over to the east of the Ohio. And that gets in with what my wife found. But before we get into what my wife found, which is huge, we got to get back to this one. This one here where St. Louis is on this side. I just showed you the star fort down here. It's indisputable six miles by nine miles. Over here in St. Louis is the one I did a video on on my YouTube channel, which is Excellent the, this, video, by the this way. one right here, which is in downtown St. Louis. There is the old star fort, which is confirmed, and the geospatial agency, the agency that does the mapping for all this stuff, for LIDAR, <laughs> for ground penetrating radar, they're building their new headquarters right in the middle of this one, which I will trace out for you with my mouse if right I need to. Right in the center of the old, right? You can see the, the same the angles map. there. And then you showed yep. the old map of it. And we've looked at these maps many a time over. And that, and the water tower, and it's a very famous uh, remaining St. Louis water tower. As, it's a Printhian column, I believe. I'm going to try and find the picture here. I don't care if anybody sees oh, my screen cap on this. Yeah. Got, uh, I, 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 I do not. Yeah, Some. I don't mind if people see what I've got in here. I, I need to have had that one open, on. <laughs> but I've got a video on it so you guys How can all see it. we? Yeah. Exactly. So, Every this here is significant. This is huge Thanks. because right across the river here are the Cahokia Mounds, and I will zoom in on them. They're, they're right here. Let me in the train the right tracks way. just hidden up. Okay. And now this has government installation built in the middle of it. Now there's one more. It's going to blow your mind. I already showed you the big one. Let me show it to you again. It is right here. It is five sided. That's undeniable fractals repeating patterns over now, look, and over again. There's a smaller one that's built in to the bigger one. And I'll trace it out for you so you can see it. And I'm not pair dealing this. This is really here. It's it's one quarter of it is well, its you, own. You measure them out over and over again. It's the numbers don't lie. Numbers can't lie. And this is okay. just the geometric structure and fractal structure of the realm or of matter of uh, the earth, of, you know, and how the energy this one, unfolds. This one right here, let me zoom in on the middle of it because look what's here. Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, the big army training base. Yet another fort. And another big thing people need to understand is that uh, uh, the average definition of a star fort or what you should have in your mind, they start with what's called a bastion fort is what they're known on in Wikipedia and in uh, like history books. And uh, they're also known as batteries. And uh, there you go, that shape right there. And that <clears throat> they're literally everywhere uh, from the, what was the base of uh, the Statue of Liberty in New York to uh, what me and Campbell Autodidactic have found a wall uh, that runs 2,000 kilometers long uh, right from where there currently is the war raging of uh, the Dnieper River around the Azov Sea and the Blackhoff Sea, or the Black Sea and the Azov Sea, and there's this Dnieper River, 
And that's literally where the Ukrainians and the Russians are fighting, the west of the east. And uh, from that exact Dnieper River that's separating their contact line right now, uh, runs this channel up of across uh, all of eastern, northeastern Ukraine, and then all of northeastern Siberia, where about every, I think, kilometer or two kilometers, there's one of those same bastion battery forts the same into this type. wall. And then you see the... Do you see the snake? The snake's head and the shape of the craton itself. Oh, yeah, I can see the yeah. head. Okay. It With its head cut off. Head. Its head's cut off right at the New Madrid. This is New Madrid, the town of New Madrid. Okay. Yeah. Now, this this gets really heavy. Okay, so the, the Star Fort is here, six by nine. Backing it yeah. out, we have a bigger one with a military base in the middle of it, Fort Leonard Wood. That makes up yeah. one quarter of the bigger one that goes out and points this way. Now, yeah. you're not going to believe it. It goes somewhere. Let me show you. We're going to just go from the back end of it, out the middle of it, like it's pointing, pointing somewhere. And we're going to go out. We're just going to draw it. Here, let's, well, I'm going to make sure it's lined up. Don't worry. But right there. Okay. Just, I'm just bringing it randomly out into the ocean. Pretty far. You can see we're going out into the ocean from this. Now, I'm going to follow this. We're going to go across. We're going next to our California star fort that I already showed you. And we go out into the ocean here. Look what's there. This is one of the more famous, quote unquote, UFO places, according to the mainstream media. They said this was uh, at first they said it was a mistake of underwater bathometric measurements and that the ships must have been crisscrossing in a way that like, caused just the, shape. the size of it. Like those are mountain ranges and trenches like that's yeah. such a macro size. It's unbelievable. Lower right hand corner of the screen. You might not be able to see it. It shows our elevation. You can see they're like two and three hundred feet high and two and three hundred feet deep. Some of them are mounds, the others are trenches. But notice the direction that which they go in. This is 5,000 feet okay, down in the gotta ocean. Just pause for one second and give like visualization for people. They tried claiming that they had misdredged these themselves for the, how they got them there. And it's like, uh, these things are a difference of 400 feet from the 200 mm. up they go and the 200 down they go that they've carved into Sorry. the bedrock and uplifted. It's 100 it. miles long. The damn thing's 100 miles long. And it's, it's again, 200 feet one side, 300 feet deep the other, and it goes into the plate. This is 5,000 feet down in the ocean. And you can clearly see these go into the plate, like some kind of entrance or something. Now, yeah. weirdly, it points in the same direction back to this, to the big, to this big guy. Now, I understand there's going to be people that try to say that's paradelia, but with the military bases in the middle of each one, and what does this point to? The famous Muskogee Airmen Base from World War II. World War II Muskogee Airmen were, were training there of all the places out of Tulsa. But now, before we go any further... These are just the four big ones that are here in the United States. We get into other ones that I've found, and this gets into, well, uh, we'll get back to the Midwest United States and the long skulls and all that good stuff. But this gets into the greater stuff that you guys have found with the geoglyphs around the world. For instance, I'm taking you all the way down here to a place called Rapa Nui. You might more know it more famously as East Easter Island. And out here at Rapa Nui, Easter Island, I'm going to turn on my volcano place marks just so it makes it a little easier for everybody to see where I'm talking about. But what we're going to show you here is a phenomenal discovery I made, proving that the plates and the islands themselves were made in the past at some point. 100%, I can prove it. So we'll start over here at Ascension Island out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which we'll talk about later because the Atlantic Ocean and Atlantis and so forth like that, we need to actually get that out of the way about Atlantis. But yeah. Ascension Island, if you measure from Ascension Island over to the nearest point on the tip of South America, it is exactly 1,400 miles. Now, you need to remember this, this 1,400-mile thing, because this proves that the islands are made at some point exactly. in the past. Exactly. We and Campbell have came to the same measurement and conclusion. And like, especially uh, when we first start looking in, I think, to Man Badol there and uh, Easter Island and uh, then following those, the undersea 
straight yeah like what you're showing it's just it's so i i just measured from ascension island to south america it's at 1400 miles exactly now here's our volcanic group for rapa nui for easter island and rapa nui itself is we got to remember this is a giant triangle an equilateral triangle with a blown out side got to remember that because of the other one right you know, if we measure just roughly we could just go into the middle of the volcanic group and measure over to the west to the next volcanic group middle and it's right on down if you go from one volcano to the other it's exactly 1400 miles okay now that's weird okay now that's two now i'm going to do it again we're going to go 1400 more to the west and where do we go look we go into the middle of tahiti now if we go into the middle of tahiti you're going to see that tahiti is shaped like a pentagon but with a back end on it and an arrow pointing out slightly to the west west southwest you see that so it's got an arrow in front of it Amazing. pointing us which way go next now it goes next we can go 1400 more over and you're not going to believe it another pentagon island exactly we go over here and we get 1400 right down to the middle of the volcanic group and we've got another one that's shaped almost exactly the same in two directions an arrow pointing one way and an arrow pointing the other it's were eroded over time now that's four of them 1400 okay, 1400, 1400 1400 1400 going across you, the whole Pacific and Atlantic, connecting the land masses all the way across right, that's, equally. Uh, did you hit Nan Manol yet? No, no, no. We haven't gotten to uh, Nan Manol yet. So, yeah, 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 so we had the one that was a pentagon and the two arrows, one on either side. Now we had the next one at that was two arrows going into each other. And then let's see another 1,400. Oh, okay. Well, we go another 1,400 over here. Let me just type it in. I'll just type it in because this one speaks for itself. Micronesia. You may have heard of Micronesia before. It was right on the edge of all of our nuclear tests that we did over here at the Bikini Islands. And we blew the heck out of this place. Here's the one, the famous Bikini Atoll, where they did several of the tests. And you can see it's symmetrically shaped. And it may have been, guess what? The, it was called Operation Castle, by the way, with, wow. the, uh, nu wow. yeah, with the nuke test that they did there. And there's nuclear again. But I want to show you Micronesia. This is what Bernie's talking about. Here's Micronesia as a whole, the whole island chain. But the island of Micronesia itself is a giant pentagon. Boom. Now, you might, say that, you might say that's a paradelia moment where you're just seeing five sides. But to prove that it's five-sided and it's meant to be five sides, we go on the east side of the pentagon. And here is the famous Nan Madal and mm -hmm. Na Island and all that good stuff. And that's right here. Nan Madal is an ancient star fort made of hexagonal basalt columns. Which yes. is fully acknowledged one to be built from the sea and out like the man-made reclaimed and, land. And it is mm. essentially also the star fort. And uh, Dutch, if you don't mind actually like exploring a bit of uh, that island itself, going back into it, you'll see there's a whole bunch uh, of canals that uh, or yes. they're recognized uh, in the Nan Madol area of being man-made and part of it, but then they actually run through that entire Pentagon Island, uh, perfect canals throughout uh, some of the areas and around the coast and stuff that uh, you'll see that... Uh, uh, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, th this is indisputable. It's I, I, I don't know exactly where you're talking about, but you're right. It goes all the way around. But the canals he's talking about, guys, in case you don't know, are connecting in between there. Some of them are. Yeah, more some of them are, yeah, there you can go. Now you can see some of those those lines right there, because these are trees that are growing on top of the basalt uh, man made islands and that it goes all the way through and that you'll actually see those and that it's uh, like a Venice almost uh, channels and all basalt and completely man-made in the middle of nowhere. And once again, at that exact 1400 mark. It's, it's indisputable that it's um, pentagonal shaped and that there's a Pentagon fort on the side of it. Now get this, the week that you guys talked about this on your channel, that very week, a hurricane, which they call a cyclone, or what yeah, I think uh, yeah, a cyclone. Yeah, cyclone over here. Yeah, and it went and hit Japan, but they named it Hurricane or Cyclone Nan Madal, the same week that you discovered the Nan Madal thing and made it put it out over on 
my, no, on my I, prediction. In case you didn't know that, they that love doing they did. that. Ah, it's it's for the algorithms. I swear to God, it's oh yeah. Uh, they'll create just like uh, it's so it doesn't automatically go to Nikola Tesla every time you type in Tesla. Oh, no, I guess that Elon Musk yeah, and yeah, trying to sell you a yeah. car. Uh, it's they do it with movies all the time, right? It'll bring you mm. back. Okay, now this yeah. is the mind blower on the 1400 mile thing. I think the 1400 mile thing has to do with an ancient wall that exists going from here on South America back, and it's actually octagonal, and I will measure it out for you. The curvature of the earth actually interferes with us measuring this, which makes me skeptical on the curvature of the earth. But when you measure it, it goes almost like the shape of a star fort. Now, where do you see this? This is gonna, this is gonna blow your mind. Here is Australia over here, going out to a pinnacle tip of Fiji. You see it, okay? Yeah. Now look what look what Alaska and Hawaii are doing. They're opposing each other, wouldn't you say? Hell, like one, one arrow pointing one way, one arrow pointing the other. Now, in between them is an avenue that I've found that's exactly two thousand miles wide. It's two thousand miles wide, exactly all the way across, and it measures from Nan or from. Easter Island, all the way over to Nan Madal. And it's a 2,000 mile wide avenue. And I'm not doing an exact measurement. You can see it's from undersea. It's exactly 2,000. Yeah, and like, they're so straight. Like, it's just, it's nuts. These... Okay. So it's an avenue. And mm -hmm. in the middle of this are three huge super volcanoes, we're told, that look like giant craters. There's one here, one here, and one here. This one is the most well-known called Tamu Massif but it is in the middle point between the two opposing arrows, which are forced this way, uh, one going one way, one going the other, with this giant avenue in between filled with giant craters that goes back over to South America and connects in this way. And you have to look at the earth upside down and sideways to even see the damn thing. Now, before anybody thinks that I'm tripping and that I'm just seeing shapes, let me remind you again one more time that the five-sided Antarctica, with its spade shape in the middle, or its starfort shape of a continent itself, points to the north, which points into another one that's hard to see, but it's here. It's right here. This yeah. one goes up and points into the number seven shape bend of the Carlsberg Ridge, comes back out to the U.S. military base of Diego Garcia, and goes, it's hidden in the ocean, but you can see it now, that there's another one. It, this one points into this one. And this one is the same damn shape. It is. It's indisputable. I already measured it. It's just like the one in California, only it's, really it's like I already measured it, and it's indisputable. It's like yeah. It's, I mean, I've already measured them. It, it's, it's down to the point, down to the mile, twenty five hundred miles on either side. Now people will say, "Ah, Dutch, you're just seeing things." But let me show you. No, no, all you're the... measuring the numbers, and that's literally okay. The proportions that it gives. It, here's like... how we view. Here's how we view Earth normally. And here's how you're going to have to view all of Europe, Asia, and China going forward. Over on the west side is India. Over on the east side is Russia. As we go to the north, see out here? It's submerged. But out here, up here at the North Pole, matches over here at Saudi Arabia. See it? And then we go to the north. Oh, and you have UK. like that same angle again. Yes, it's a the... fractal. It's like, it, it's, it's another, weird. this is a huge, to see it. Once you see yeah. it, you can't unsee it. It's literally right, right. It's a giant yeah, equilateral right. triangle. Yeah. I'm going to measure it. I'm going to measure it for you to prove that it's the same size all the way up to Portugal. But the curvature of the earth is totally screwing with us on this. But you can still see it from point to point. It goes out on both sides and it's an equilateral triangle that goes across this way as well. Now, you, you might say, oh, Dutch, you're tripping. It's just... It's just the same, you know, here's Scandinavia, here's Turkey, here's UK, here's Italy. You see how they branch off like a Christmas tree? Now yep. watch, look, here's Spain and Portugal. Uh, look at Portugal oh, right there, no. This is Spain and Portugal. <laughs> Spain, look yeah. at Spain and Portugal, the, the home of the Star Fort, right? Wow. Do you see it? And you even see it again in the sea off the coast, right? Like. Off the right. corner of it. The okay, so of... here's Portugal and Spain. Oh, no. Right smack in the middle of it is Madrid. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and yeah. Okay, now, now, going off of, this is more like a six-pointed star, a hexagram, 
or an eight pointed star, but it's that classic star fort shape where on mm. one side and on the other, on one side and the other, over here and over here, it's symmetrical. It points somewhere. Okay. If we follow this just like the one I did in the United States, this points to the closest point that Ascension Island meets at down here on the coast of South America, the closest point of South America to Europe. This points directly to it, directly across. Now, let's get into the other plates, and I'm going to get back into Europe in a second, because this one seems pretty big, right? Like, right? I mean, it's big. It's huge. It's all of Asia, all of Russia, all yeah. of Europe, all of like, Portugal. Like a giant star blow my mind every which way you turn it i'm seeing the same fractal over and over again there it is Massive. it is it's repeating in on itself it's symmetrical on all sides now i'm going to turn and it's india that and trenches and that they're like mountains and like uplifts and downlifts and major like uh geological energy points right right they're coming up to points and stuff and now here's india and you can see india points back down too Antarctica, where it's receiving energy, look, the spade points up to the one that's broken, where you can clearly see it used to point straight up, and these two used to point right to each other. Yeah, there's been a couple fractures. Connecting like um, like a spark gap, right? I mean, you know, like yeah. in Frankenstein movies where they'd have two wires and the electricity would be going zoop, zoop, zoop up the wire, that this oh. would be going straight out into the side of this one. And now let me show you the others. All of them do it. Here's North America. So check out North America. Yeah, and look at how it shattered there too. Okay, Florida is on the right side. Broken apart in a million trillion pieces is Nineveh going up into Alaska on the left side. But you can clearly see it's doing the same thing on both sides of the plate, right? Then we go up to the north. Here's Newfoundland, the Newfoundland. And one side's blown out, but the other side is still there. And you can see it now. And I've already measured it. It's symmetrical as well. So now we've got a big pyramid, a huge one, a medium-sized pyramid. Now you start to understand why the ancient secret societies worship the pyramids, the three pyramids in particular. Now, let's take it up to the front. You're going to see it's the same. I could take it all the way back on either side. It's 3,600 miles. It's 37 right down to the, to the mile. And it's 3,700 across. It's an equilateral triangle to where it makes the bend. Now, that's... That's North America. So here's Europe, like Asia. There's That's number two. The third one is South America. Now, South America seems to me to be the most weathered one, but this is also where all of our pyramids are and all of our Aztec pyramids and step pyramids. And this is a little harder to see, but I will show it to you. It goes down to here, and it makes the, the classic star fort bend in down here. And over here, it's a river valley that's been eroded in time. But you can see it again. The mountains down here are coming in and going like a lightning bolt on the backside this way. And it comes in this way, and it's harder to see. But it does. It comes in, makes the lightning bolt shape, and comes in on that side there. Now, before you think that I'm seeing something, we're going to zoom in on the one that's still here, which is this one. Built into the plate itself, pointing like a giant arrow across it, and this curvature of the Earth is really screwing with us on this because it's a perfect draw across. I will draw it for you to show you. We're going to go right through the center of it. We've got a giant blown out basin in the middle of here, but I'll try it across just to prove it. Because again, I know there's going to be people that are not going to believe because they think I'm seeing something, but if I can draw the line through the center and it goes to the center of the next one, we got a problem. We've got symmetry. No, no, it's, if you don't, if you're not seeing it, curvature not of the earth, really. the, uh, the geometry and the repeating, uh, equilateral triangles that you're measuring it's a repeating geometry fractal it's undeniable it's not seeing something it's identifying a pattern measuring it proving it and uh showing it over and over again now documenting it and using it to figure out the construct of this reality do you see the mileage on here <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now on the back right side, we've got the big crater. I'm not joking on this. This thing's 666 miles long. It's going to play in in a second because look, we're going back down to Antarctica. This is big deal, guys. This is a really big deal. I don't care what your superstitious beliefs are. If you're watching and you've got beliefs about the number 666 or whatever, down here on the back end, I measured this. I went to the big undersea mount where all these ships have overlapped for some reason right here on the volcano that's here in case you can't see it. 
me just back it out one more time. We've got a big volcano and all the ships have overlapped right down here on the backside for some reason, as if they were looking at the volcano. Now, I can measure from the backside to the front side of Antarctica through the South Pole, and it's 6,666 miles long exactly if we measure back to the back end where the undersea mount is. And I already did the measurements to prove it. We go right down to it. I'm drawing it out right down to the mile. I can't get it down to the mile here. It's 6665. But it goes right through the South Pole. To get it right through the center of the South Pole, the curvature of the Earth kind of messes with us a little bit. But it's 6,666 6, miles long, is, or 6665, is all of Antarctica. All you of know, Antarctica. All of Antarctica from back side to front. And I'm not cherry picking that. That goes right up and also to the 666. It, it's weird. It's just a weird thing, right? Like, okay, so now recapping, we've got this plate that's undeniably, this is all of Asia and Europe. And at the pinnacle tip of it, like a star on a Christmas tree, this points out to South America. Let's go around because here's pyramid number two. Like that Portugal out. one is identical to the one that you've, uh, right going through California there, especially. Yeah, yeah. It's an exact match. It's undis indisputable. Now, the final part on this is the at Africa part. I just showed you all the rest of the plates, and they're all making either triangle, perfect pyramid shape, whatever you want to call it, star fort shape. What about Africa? To see what's up with Africa, we have to look from almost a world away. It's so big. Now, I'm going to draw it back out to show it to you. Okay. It's like an arrowhead shape, just like the one down in um, Antarctica, the spade shape. Now, I'm going to draw it out for you just to prove it that this is really here, that we go all the way from back here at Madagascar, all the way up to South America, and back down and across over to here. And half of it is submerged. It's blown up. It's, it's cut in half. It's half of it's broken apart. It's got a big crack going through the middle of it. And I will draw it out for you on the mouse so you can see we do indeed connect across plate boundaries that come up, go back down this way, and then this is just one half of it, and this is the other. And I think this may be the quote-unquote, that continent that everybody would want to talk about as being the missing continent that went sinking, that off the backside, it's indisputable curve of the earth again. But 5,500 miles on one side, 5,500 on the other, exactly 5,500 then we come back to the back end of it, goes back down, goes back down across Saudi Arabia, goes back across over. Do you see? I mean, it really is there. It's not me doing this out of paradigma. Oh, it's undeniable. It's Yeah, it really is there. And, and so this is Africa, the giant one. The biggest, I'd say, of all of them is the one that's fractured completely in half with the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and it sank. The way yeah. I know that this is the uh, Ascension Island is right here on the side of it. So. That's the I mean, Atlantic, yeah? Or, yeah, that's the Atlantic. That's the yeah. half the Atlantic, Atlantis. And yeah. now look at this one. This one's a mind blower because yeah. this gets into star forts. Actual star forts has in bastion forts. This one, which makes up a good part of the Caribbean, and part of the arm of it goes underneath the United States and ends right down here. You can barely see it. It goes under the Florida Keys. And in the Florida Keys, right here, is our famous Fort Jefferson, the hexagonal uh -huh. brick star fort, where yeah. they got out here and supposedly built this in the Civil War, which is total BS. They did not build this in the Civil War. It's got Byzantinian, it, like cannons are going to be up there or something, please. Uh, they built a walkway around this thing. This thing's made out of solid brick. Let me get this actually. So I, I just love it. how it's got a moat, but it's it's in the ocean, right? <laughs> Look at it. Oh, Byzantinian yes. construction. And they got a big radio tower they built on it, by the way. And, These are the and dry that's right. Like how many like uh, hurricanes have gone through this area and that it's completely withstood and surviving? Like, Oh, just, it's impossible. You know, I... Now, it's got a, an island over here that and points in a direction. They're, they're all yeah. man-made. Those the, the Star Fort Islands, at least two-thirds, if not probably 100% of the Star Fort Islands are man-made islands, just like they admit Nan Madol was that we just showed you a little bit earlier. 
and that that that's a key part of it now you're seeing these same fractals being reused in an architectural layer and building method on these same exact energy points and being used by man in our in the architecture or yeah. somewhat i agree general. no i agree with everything you just said that key west florida right here on the screen the southernmost tip of the united states if we go due west of key west in the nature preserve we've got an old star fort shaped arrow shaped island and in the middle of it we have an old carved geoglyph of a iguana which was not in the united states until the 1700s so this is older than that which means right, there I was see an this one you showed me this I, or the last time yeah. i saw it was just like or, sorry, is, showed all of us this. I was watching yeah. live. And like This is Key West. This is west of Key West. And then here's our Star Ford out here built in the ocean that they said was built in the Civil War. But I'm challenging that. I don't think it was. No, How did they build islands during the Civil War? Like yeah, at that time period. It just like it's impossible. It's so, like, million. During the Civil War, we decided to take and Campbell, you, you've done several uh videos on that one and how many bricks is it or something 16, I think 16 million 16 million bricks they would have all, had to make as, ship out to it. on ships apparently yeah it's just a silly story it is and i mean like, what, what point does what point does a fort in the ocean serve like boats oh. would just sail around it it doesn't make any sense at all yeah, like no. cannons, can, cannons can only shoot, what, 20 miles at the most? Exactly. So, so you start, start at 25 and just go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right. like dumb. Now, I made a video on this part, which here are the Florida Keys. Just showed you the star, <coughs> un, in, indisputable, this is in the shape of the star fort with the uh, geoglyph inside. But this, this one was controversial, but up here in the woods, or, well, not the woods, in the swamps themselves mm. is another one. Now, I'm going to trace it out for the people who can't see it, but it's right. What drew my eye to it was this right angle in the trees itself. And I was looking through the Everglades. I just so happened to be, you know, just so happened to be looking through the Everglades and I found the Star Fort. Now, really, the way I found this was the giant city. Do you see this, first of all? Now, yep. on the inside of it is another one. Another one. This yep. one. Yep. And it's got this on the side of it letting us know that that was actually, this has been made at some point in the past. That's circular, perfect circle. Anyway, this thing is out here in, this is a small one inside of the greater one that's here, that's in the swamp. This is now swamps of Southern Florida, but the real thing is this. This is what it is. This, I'm going to turn it around so you can see it better, but I made a video on this already. And this is, well, I already measured it but I'll measure it again for you on here live. It's two and a half to three miles. On, well, if we, depending on where you measure on the corners, where the blown out corners are, it's three by five miles. Now, I understand that there's going to be people that say that it's paradelia, what I'm seeing here, or what anybody can see if you just look at the screen, is that it's a rectangle surrounded symmetrically by lines that spread out in all directions like an old bastion. And this is the Florida Keys now. These connect out to the Keys, in all directions like a spider wave. And I wouldn't ask anybody to accept any of that except for on the back side of it, back up here in the woods, back up here in the marshes is the star fort that it connects to on the back side, which is indisputable in the topography here. It really is there. That's not just a river. That is the real shape going right into the back end of this huge, this is all underwater. Now, the name mm. of the key here is called Dildo Key. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, oh no no hold on I'm sorry I'm sorry dildo and Johnson key side by side. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. oh no 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 hey before anybody gets a dirty mind it's named after the dildo cactus. Oh my god, don't use that whatever you do. Yeah. So <laughs> they like named those in, instantly I any thoughts you had just it's horrible. It's like, and the reason they did that, I think is that if anybody found this, that they would have to report they found something out by that key. <laughs> and then it would, you know, the media can't report on it. Nobody's going to touch it. Nobody's going to look into it. And now... It could, it could just be a subtle little message saying, go and F yourself. Yeah, basically it is. 
And so what this is, is an evidence of an ancient civilization. The, the petroglyph or the geoglyph that's carved into the star fort shaped island, this proves that, that ancient people had the ability to sculpt and shape an island in the shape of a giant diamond that's bigger than anything that the Chinese could build today and that it mm. points somewhere. It actually points, these, these actually point you to the nearest landmass, which is Cuba's edge, which has another one that points you down here. Now, where do you see this? The giant so aerial here's map. the Caribbean. Here's Florida. I just took you below the Star Fort, and it goes all the way down here to the coast of the United States, right next to Washington, D.C. D.C. is right here. But back over to the west, we go out and we go down to the Caribbean. Do you see it? It's a right-angled mm -hmm. rectangular shape that looks like an old port that's been carved out. Of, this is 10,000 feet deep. And it's, in, again, an indisputable shape of the Star Fort that's built into the whole Caribbean. And this makes up the other final Star Fort shape, which is the other cracked Star Fort that's fully submerged. There isn't one part of it left but it's right next to the, what I would call the Atlantean plate, which is this one, the African one that I already showed you. The one next to it is fully cracked in half and submerged, but it's there. It goes from here, back here, following our fracture zone, right up mm -hmm. into, up into the pinnacle tip, where we go right into Central America, Mexico, where the, Me guess what's right here? All the old pyramids. Uh, mm -hmm. all, the, all the pyramids are right there. Here, let me bring it back due north so you can see. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, right, Central America, yeah. Right, right, right. So here's the coast of Mexico. Here's the coast of Cancun. And if you guys have ever been to Cancun or Tulum or any of those places oh, yes. along here along the coast, I mean, yeah, there's Cancun. The Tulum pyramids are right here. Yeah. Okay, so, so here we go. We got the submerged one. beautiful spot. I've been there, and it is super advanced. Uh, to the point that uh, well, if you clap, stand in the middle of the field and clap, you will get a Caesar beam of your clap back at you, or like a magnification of it back at you, where like it hits you and stuns you almost. It's pretty crazy. Wow. And that also, uh, this guy right here, there's another one of these heads in the snake that go up uh, along the stairs of the central part of this pyramid. And I was actually uh, blessed and able to be there the one, <clears throat> the one time I've been to the uh, Cancun area and to teach it. So back when I was 20, God, it's been, I don't even want to say how long. Uh, anywho, uh, I was there during the winter solstice. And as the sun set, the shadow literally moves on uh, the building and that the snake it becomes a snake or dragon that comes alive <laughs> on the step pyramid on the corners of it and that uh, this is this south america right here northern south america in the rainforest where the quote-unquote cannibals live french mm. guinea okay and right down in the middle of it is this now we're told this is a lava flow look at that geometry again how did All the right, how did lava just flow in an equilateral <laughs> triangle? No, 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 no. Lava flow, BS story. This is obviously something else. And it, part of it is somewhat hidden. You have to actually look at a greater view to see the outside edges of it. It's, it's, this is elevation-wise. You can see, hopefully you, you can see, the outside mm -hmm. edge of it, which is dark green. And it actually goes out around it. Now there's another one. Now, I don't know if you're going to see the face in it or not, but I can see the, face. Yeah. the skull, the skull. OK, I don't know if you're going to see that the creepy skull. Oh, instantly. Wow. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. It was like, OK, wow. yeah, they got the headhunter. These are where the headhunters are from, guys. So we got pyramid. We got headhunter. We got the pyramid and headhunter geoglyph in the lava, quote unquote. And then you got the three pyramids, which, again, are weathered over time. Two of them are visible. One of them is not. And this is turned. This is South America turned sideways. Now, I'm going to bring you yeah, into, you know, wait till like we get to Australia. Time. You're going to love Australia. But I got to bring you into the others first. Here's South Africa. And at the south tip of South Africa, here's, of course, South Africa. But what I want to draw Boom, your attention again, to are, are right the mountains. There, the same as your California one. And those are mountains. Like, that. that's what's the craziest part is, like, this isn't just, like, lines or trees, pareidolia. No, this is 
identical geometries repeating itself over and over and over again and it's the highest points and like the lowest points like those are mountain ranges it's just nuts yeah and it's blown out on the back side back right side again this is southern africa all of southern africa being one of them a part of a giant structure that was built a long time ago it blew out on the back side which makes me think wireless power flowing in like anode cathode you're going to be floating to one, flowing from Stock one side to the other, yeah, yeah. and out the tip, right? And also, now, salt bridge. Mm. Australia, you ready? I'm ready. Aze, Aze. Hey, hey, hey. Seriously, are you ready? Because look, look at South Australia. Here we go. We're going to go in and zoom in on Southern Australia. Now, these are mountain ranges too. These are not. This is not forestry clear cut. Let me just prove that to you. So you see how yeah, we go from yeah, plains so up into foothills. Good. Okay. Mm. Now it's a little obscure and a little hard to see, but I'm going to draw it and we'll, uh, I'll prove it to you. So coming out the backside and it, it looks truncated at the, at the front end, it is truncated, but it does go out to a pinnacle tip out at the plate boundary. We're going to go down the other side and see that it's a perfect match. And off one yeah. side, just like the United States, we've got one that's still intact. The other is eroded over time, but it's still there. And now before you think that I'm tripping, this is actually a greater structure. Let me draw it out for you. Now on the inside of it, hold on, I'm not doing it perfect. There we go. On the inside of it, it makes a curve inward and it's been weathered over time, but you can see it still in the actual, between valley and mountain on both sides. Now, I know it looks like I might just be seeing something there, and it goes back, but on the back right <coughs> side over here, look what we've got. <coughs> is that the harp facility? Yep. yep. The hexagonal harp facility, right which is called Exmo. Wow. Just like the one over in the United States in Florida, only it's an old star fort made of brick. Wow. A hexa mm. It's the same thing, though. It's the wow. same size. It's the same size, guys. Go oh, compare yeah, the one cool. over here the to the one size. over in the Florida wow. Keys. Now, look at the other side of Australia. This yeah. is Tasmania out here off the coast. But I'm going to draw it out for you again to prove it to you, just in case you don't believe. It comes down in the topography itself. Hold on. Let me draw it out for you there. Comes out and goes down in two. I know this is going to be the most hard to believe, but when I turn it sideways, you're going to understand what I'm showing you in about two seconds. Okay. Now... Here's what we're really dealing with, with Australia. Mm. And I'm just, I'm just roughly drawing it out because the curvature of the earth really does interfere with us. But we are going into and bending around, coming in, going down, back out, and back around. Now, in the center what is what appears to be a backwards eye of Ra, almost, which is right where all of our deep earthquakes are happening. So on this side of the plate, you might say, okay, look, this would be the biggest stretch, I think, on all of the plates that I've found so far, is that this one is an equilateral triangle, but it goes in through the center of the plate, and it's really hard to see. This would be, I, again, I, when I back it out further, it you can see that it's, points over it, it over certainly again. is part of the arrowhead shape, but that cuts into this, which is, of course, the one that I've already showed you. So this one is the only one which I, I would have to ask you to see the shape because it's on its own. But now that you know what to look for, you can definitely go. And what guess what's right here? Aluru, Ayers Rock. Yeah, Where it comes yes. together, Ayers Rock is right there. Let me go turn our borders and labels back on. Up, up a little bit, yeah. Where Across are my place marks? Left. Hold on. Just, I, got, I got place marks that show yeah. it all here. It's up from where it says Australia. It's around there. But to yeah, the yeah. It's like right at, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So coming back to the middle pinnacle tip of it. There we go. So on the back side of it, where it comes back down and goes back up in, Ayers Rock, I mean, I'll call it Ayers Rock's on the back side of it. It's not directly at where it bends, but it's just when I see that and I have to show you, the other plates are all doing it. Australia is the one to me it seems like it's the most mysterious one. The one that's connected between them all, submerged. People were asking me about Asia and what's going on over here. There are smaller versions of what I've been talking about, but this goes from Taiwan to Japan to Guam, 
back down to Philippines. And it's symmetrical again, this plate here, the diamond-shaped plate, but the curvature of the Earth is what's interfering with us seeing this. That's the only thing interfering with us seeing this perfectly is if this was all laid out on a flat map, it would be... I mean, it would be perfect. You would see... I'm wondering, yeah, I'm wondering what the geometry is going to make when it, if it was drawn on a flat circle and not a flat rectangle, like... Because that would make Antarctica a bunch of triangles pointing inwards, wouldn't it? Pretty much. It it would, and it would make Antarctica. They're all pointing back. They're all pointing to each other and opposing each other. In some mm. instances, pointing against each other. Um, in other words, it looks like they were used for some kind of wireless power transmission. Exactly. As far as I can see. And, we're talking about you know, very low frequency. Yeah, geometry, yeah. platonic solids, all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Now, I know this is all mind-numbing for everybody, but I got more. This is I've got so much more. This is insane. Just so the in star case portal, your mind hasn't been blown 10 times over yet, there's more. Look at the screen now. This is – Bernie, I think you actually have some videos on this, or maybe um, autodidactic. You might have some videos on this. Oh, this oscilloscope, is, yeah. Yeah, the oscilloscope uh, uh, sound program that allows you to put Ooh. shapes on your oscilloscope. Yes. And this video in particular comes from – Gabor Cesarier from over in Russia or something. And sure. what this yeah. program does for everybody who's a viewer who doesn't know, it will it's a computer program that takes the probes of an oscilloscope, basically, and uh, you run the computer program into your oscilloscope, and it combines sawtooth waves, square waves, and sine waves into shapes. And it can make any shape using the combination of those shapes. You can make pretty much any shape you want on the screen. But it's doing it using electricity, just so everybody knows. It's using the probes of, uh, it, it's modulating the electricity in the computer program and putting it into your oscilloscope. But I want you to see what happens as he brings it up frequency-wise from zero up. Listen. I'm going to stop it in a minute here. Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. There we go right there. It got into a couple star shapes. Now watch. Pentagon. Yeah. And as he brings in the square and sawtooth, we start to get the Starforge shape. The the five-sided, or in many cases six-sided, but it's five-sided. It's going off the outside edge. Okay, so what's happening here is the combination of a sawtooth wave, a square wave, and a sine wave, all three together, are making that star for that pentagonal and hexagonal with the shapes off the end of the star for that that tone, yeah. Yeah. that tone in particular. Now that tone in particular ties in with 180 hertz of all things, and 180 hertz matters because of the conch shells inside of the Indian mounds. And guess what conch resonance? Shells. Guess what? Yeah, conch shells found inside and, of and Indian mines. Do you know what they used to make old um, cement? Is seashells, right? Yeah. Conch, concrete. Yes. Concrete. Yes. Concrete. Mm. Oh, hey. Hey, concrete. Mm. You might be onto concrete. something there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Made out of the conch shell a bit. The wow. limestone, the, uh, yeah, it's a portion. You're 100% right, Campbell. That, that's a key part of it. The See on the screen now, what we have here is something my wife found. She was doing research on her family genealogy and found information on Southern Missouri, which then led her to an explorer by the name of Dickinson. Dickinson was an explorer in the early 1800s who unearthed many different mounds. And what he found, what he said he found, and what he showed he found were giant skeletons of a lost race of giants, according to Dickinson, the explorer himself, on page 107 of the study about him, it talks about how he found giants of a lost race right here. Supposedly gigantic lost race of mound builders. One facet of the mound builder myth. On the other hand, Dickinson was a trained physician, and it seems like he could recognize large skeletons when he saw one. And Dickinson then went on to find human bones down below ancient extinct animals. Uh, yeah, Dickinson, can you zoom in on that a lot a bit more too, please, brother? And shout oh, out sure. to Duchess. Thank you for all of uh, 
your wife's wonderful work and like that right there the different layers are identical to what i see in the badlands of drum heller alberta right by where i live uh in this city's backyards there's these mounds that uh flat topped and alternating similar similar colors of these dirts and that uh, this is portraying that there's essentially levels of different uh giants buried within it and it also i can't help but uh how similar it is to that Freemason pyramid and all of the steps on it. Uh, kind of creepy. It, 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 it is, actually. Yeah. It is. It, now, look at the size of the trees in comparison to the size of the skeletons. Yeah. I and see. now, in the middle, they're finding, they, were, they found, and found in many of the middles of the mound, a giant skeleton holding a conch shell. Now, the conch shell is the 180 hertz. And the 180 hertz, when you blow the conch shell, whoo, and it makes that tone. Guess what else is working on that tone? Transmission lines in the third harmonics of transmission for wire, for power in your power lines, which explains uh -huh. why they're building these power lines over the different mounds because they're collecting really? this 180 hertz energy. Yeah. And now well, to that's... seal the deal, look at this. Uh, I'll take you into what this guy found, and we're going to go through. This is from a painting that he did or that he had commissioned of his sails down the Ohio and Mississippi River Valley. And what he found was stuff like this in the rivers, stone heads, ancient carvings on the hillsides, labyrinths that they called them, huge mounded bastion yes. forts, wow. as they called them. And these are all cave paintings. Now, when he got to a place at the Ohio River, let me take you back to Google Earth now. This matters. We're going back to Missouri over here in the United States, if I can get the proper orientation. There we go. And we're going right down here to the town of New Madrid again to our star fort, that I, the six by nine mile one. Now, right across the river over here is a place called Cave in Rock, Illinois. And at Cave in Rock, Illinois, this ties in with what my wife found, which is this. Let's zoom in and go take a quick gander and see. And they might have a better view of it here. Hold on. Let me uh, see if I've got a closer zoom in view on the cave here. There we go. So the cave has some pretty interesting stuff in it, like an Ouroboros of a snake eating its tail, a symbol seen in other cultures around the world. And oh, in the lower wow. right hand corner, what you're going to see is that look, that look that you make when you find a 12 to 15 foot tall long skull. Nice. Like Elon when here. you find the long skull in the cave in rock in Illinois and look at what he's doing. He's making a little kind of ghoulish. Who he, you know, but over here, we're going to go over and look at this guy, which is a younger version that's still mummified and it, but he's covering his eyes. Now this matters. A viewer sent me something of the, I think they're called the Caracas mummies. Maybe that's Caracas. not the name. Caracas. Caracas. The Paracas monkeys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. monkeys, mummies, and the yeah, Paracas. Yeah. Hold on, got to spell it right. Paracas. Yeah, the there they are. Through. And what do they do? They cover their yeah, eyes. Cover their They're covering eyes. their eyes. And, and they're always in a seated position too. Yeah. Yep, they're in this position right here. And now hold up, because they are from all the way down here at Peru. On the edge of our 666 mile long right star, by the Nazca right lines near the, the they're right from there. Yeah, and so they have them practice, yeah. All the way up here, doing the same thing means they're connected, obviously. Mm. But to prove that they're connected, there's some other weird things that are in this giant panorama painting from across the country or across the Midwest United States. Huge mounds. And let me see if I, I don't have the, all the pictures open at once. Look at this. No. Oh, now this wow. is this is big. This is really big. This isn't just like a small little statue that they have carved here. They have it in a greater scene. I want to say, let me see if I can get the greater scene. There it is. Wow. So that's huge, right? And and look at him. Look at him. The guy's an Indian guy from India with a. Bald oh, and a third eye. Look, yeah, he's got the third like eye. Yeah, or 
Oh, wow. he's got a eye. Come on, he's got the third eye. He's got a goatee. Whoa. He's bald. That, that's a llama or something from, where, from over in Asia. Where is this? So, in Mississippi Valley. Yeah, 1800s Mississippi Valley. Wow. Okay, now, so they, this guy went across and started excavating all kinds of mounds. He, he documented everything across the area. Um, he was part of something that they ended up calling the mound built the mound controversy. And I want to tell everybody who's listening now, you need to get on this. You need to start looking up Dickinson, D-I-C-K-E-S-O-N, and mound controversy. Apparently, there was a huge controversy about who built them. And these naturalists, including a guy named Lyle, who ties in with earthquakes and volcanoes of all things, Lyle got involved with this, according to page 108. Lyle shows up on the scene to debunk Dickinson. And Lyle's a naturalist who Darwin quoted in his voyages across the ocean. Darwin brought Lyle's books as inspiration of his wonderful volcanology work, where he went into the layers of the earth and put numbers assigned to them, which are totally bunk. And, and Lyle's a chill. What's Lyle's hilarious, a I, I've got to say, like, uh, of um, his voyage around, before he put forward this evolution thing, it was taught and accepted everywhere that it was catastrophism. Geology class was catastrophism. History was Atlantis, and that there was something big before that, and that everything happens by these mass catastrophisms. And then they came with Darwin and got rid of that idea and got rid of uh, pretty much everything else that could have existed before it. Because YOLO. Here's an example of something that many mud flood people talk about when they show San Francisco houses and the houses built on top of mounds. Mm. So you, when you look at those San Francisco houses and they're built up on top of that and you're like, why did they build that there? They built their houses originally on top of the mounds. And some people say it was just, you know, because they liked building on top of mounds. I'll say they were probably using wireless power. And those houses were tapping into that. And that's why they built into it. Oh, but look, at the, yeah, yeah. look at the size of these. And look at the labyrinths and the nature of the size of some of these structures. I'm going to take you back to the start of this panorama. And let's see if we've even got it in here. I don't know if this is going to be it or if this is the first one. Or is it in the middle one? I got to find the picture to show it to you of all the pyramids that they found were just insanely huge, which I can't believe I can't find the picture of it now. Hold on. It's one of these. There's the head. There it is. Okay. So look at this. These are from actual voyages along the Ohio and Mississippi River. What? Look at it. Yes. Like that's identical to uh, Karakura. They tore them down. In, in they Peru, another one in Mexico City, another like... Uh, another one in the UK and England as well, I believe, or in like the Scottish area. These, like, mm. yeah, oh, they God. tore these down and drained the mound builders' controversy. So the mound controversy was: we had naturalists, which are people who it, it, it just goofballs at the time in the 1800s who gave <laughs> us all the right. We've got the wow. naturalists, and they stepped in to deny that there were advanced people who built the mounds. And to, mm. then they, they justified that to destroy them. And they used the, the dirt for this and that. And they tore them down. Now, nice. look, at, look at what else my wife found. Along with that, she found this at loke.gov, wherever that is. And this is a book, a documentation of all the star forts and all the Indian mounds that were torn down. It's 500 what? pages long. I will provide all the links for this. Yeah, I'll yes, provide all the links. Please. And oh, they have wow. pictures. They have pictures promise, and descriptions. Sorry, I can promise once you send this to us, we will do a full video series reading out every one of those 500 <laughs> pages and uh, documenting these. That's absolutely nuts. And thank you, Duchess. Like This is restoring 
history. So it's like uh, when you found those uh, certain petroglyphs and then they tried claiming that you were racist because you used some sort of wrong terminology. It's like you are literally what? rebuilding really? I said, I said American the Indian. Aboriginal people's histories. And it, like, it turns uh, out, yeah. Yeah, I said American Indian. I supposed to say Native American. It turns out Native Americans wow. wrote me and told me that they call themselves American Indian, so it's no big deal. They don't expect no. a, a guy no, like I me. Never, it's never those. Uh, no, it's just everyone who's a different color that gets offended. That's you know, come on. <laughs> uh, you catch me on a good day. If you catch me on a good day, I might be a slight pale gray, depending on how long yeah. I stayed up or how much coffee hey, I drank. Put me out in the Australian summer, and I, I'm a black person. Come on. Okay, you get nice and tan. That's good. That's good. Yeah, man. He healthy melanin, you know? <laughs> we Now, check it out. Look at this. So they, they documented these, and they when they came through and tore them down, they tore these down. They measured the height elevation of them, and we get a side profile on height elevations and what was there. 140 acres on the inside, labyrinths, everything. So between this guy Dickinson, and what he found is he's sailing down the Ohio River, long skulls, evidence of, of Peruvian civilization. And then according to Dickinson himself, 12 to 15 feet or more in size for height. And that's insane. That's 15 feet tall. We're talking as tall as a, uh, you know, a Victorian mansion's uh, ceilings. Mm. In, in a Victorian mansion, we're talking that high. That's, that's insanely tall people. And the depictions of them sitting down or curled up are almost up to his chest level, just as a point mm. of reference. So, you know, if you're a grown man here and they're curled up and their long skulls coming up to his shoulders. So if they stood, they would be way, way, way bigger than him. And that's in the cave painting from his own descriptions of what he found. Now, finally, to seal the deal that we're dealing with some weird stuff going on across the, mid oh. across the Midwest, well, I mean, we already know that the you know we already know that we're dealing with some weird stuff going on, but mm. across the Midwest, the legend of the giants is carried on with the native Native Americans who went to war with them. Apparently, do you guys know this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The red-headed ones. Um, sometimes yes, they do. The love lock the the yeah, Well, they're talking about being hundreds of feet tall. That and they were hundreds of feet tall. Yeah, okay, that's I, what, that I had a Native American person write me directly below my video, and they uh, it was on the, the discovery I made up in Idaho, which I didn't even talk about yet, but the discovery I made up in Idaho, and they wrote me about the legend of the giants and how they fought the giants that took hundreds of Native Americans to kill one of them, and wow. that they, they were eating them, that the giants would come and eat them. Yeah, and that yeah, that's yeah. why they built their they built their structures on the side cliff sides that were hundreds of feet up, and that they couldn't the giants couldn't rappel down apparently for some reason maybe they didn't have ropes strong enough to hold them. And the little paths on the side of the mountains were too narrow for them to tiptoe across to come over to, and that's why they did their their structures on the sides and in the hills to hide from the cannibalistic giants. Well, that's that reasonable, fighting. right? Birds will nest up to avoid predators. Uh, if there was uh, cannibalistic giants hunting us, so would we. And I'm probably also far, while we were far, underground, far. too. Yeah, man. But this three pyramid thing and this big, middle, small, this then mirrors with over in Egypt and all the other stuff would we know about, you know, the regular pyramid stuff with the three pyramids. So that's just in a nutshell of what I found. Long skulls in the United States. All the all the plates. Oh, and to top it all off, the earthquakes. I haven't even talked about that. That the earthquakes are hitting down below these areas on the pinnacle tips of them. So like the pinnacle tip of Scotland. Scotland up here. Okay? Where all of our <laughs> old castles... That's how you became and... aware of these shapes and the geometry and the fractal in the beginning, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I didn't. I had no clue about star forts or the shapes or anything until I stumbled into Tartaria, and I then I went went and looked, and I said, "Wow, I go, that's really weird that that shape is in California, and the pinnacle tip of the one in California goes right out to this is the San Andreas. That's the San Andreas. Wow. So the pinnacle tip of it points to the most active earthquake zone on the planet that we know of, and then you got the New Madrid, and this one over here." Mm -hmm. And on the side of it, and then across the river is the cave and rock where they found the damn long skulls, which is what we call them here in the Midwest, by the way. We don't call them elongated skulls. 
We call them goddamn long skulls because they're cannibals. We don't respect them. Right? Have you seen that um, one movie? It was like time something where like they go back in time or like there's a time machine and then like when they go back even further, they found like this underground race that was like yeah, feeding the off the normal yeah, humans. Yeah. And they it's have not like a, movie, a famous book. Yeah, it was from a famous book, and I'm pretty sure they had elongated skulls in the movie. And oh, did the, they? The, yeah, because they did a remake with Guy Pearce or something. Yeah, sort of twenty years ago or something. Yeah, well, that's weird. You know, in the movie uh, Interview with a Vampire, that when they show Dracula in the shadow version, like they they always show him, and he's got the long hair and the long skull. That's weird. Ah, that is weird. Like that is weird. I just realized that. Oh, that's odd. Dracula. You get so good. <laughs> Dracula interview with a vampire. It's like those 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 R people. They have funny heads, don't they? Those rocky oh, people, people and bits, Roth people. Bits with the cone heads. The cone heads mm. and um, you know, Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, Dan yeah, Aykroyd yeah, yeah. Huge, Dan Aykroyd, huge uh, UFO buff. You guys know that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The crystal He's skull. He's a Canadian, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, he did that. That's why he did the long skulls, though. He, the egg he heads, the, movie, or the yeah. cone heads, are really just long skulls, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. The cone heads are long. Oh, skulls. undeniable. Uh, did you ever see or hear of Karen Hughes' work? She was the yes. former. Was, uh, yeah. Do you want to tell the story, Campbell, or should I? Um, yeah, well, she was just a high finance banker, um, and and started um, sort of looking around and got onto you know um, conspiracy type stuff and started researching banking and because she was very high up and she basically realized that a lot of these really really high level bankers um have got elongated skulls yeah um, i've got, I've got some photo, actually i wonder if i can find the phone she, she was uh yeah. working for the world bank and that well, she stated yeah. that uh places like Did the a series of videos. Wear, wherever they'd be wearing those big hats and then yes. the positions of powers that uh it Underneath them, there would be these elongated people. But that's that. that's oh, deep wow. down a Vatican. Uh, there is also um, footage. I mean, I don't know how real it is, but there is footage of like a elongated skull dude in the Vatican, and of course, you know the, the hats in Vatican, guys. right? And then you've got the the Dogon um, and Awanus and the God, and they've got the fish head hats, which is basically the mitre that the Pope wears. So, I mean, it's just <laughs> massive, right? It's just. I mean, even here I've got a picture of a giant and he's Alaskan and he's got a massive big like, hat on, like a beef eater hat. Um, oh, the Dogon you mentioned with the Nomos and the fish people and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. coming from the water. And, and uh, exactly. that's really weird because that ties in with um, I, I have a family friend from uh, Iran who came over just right before the revolution happened. So Iran used to be free, right? Like they were yes. Western basically. Anyway, he yeah. came over here with his family and became a family friend of ours. And he told me the story of the history of Iran. This is from a person from Iran. And he's like, you know, we are the people from the water. We are the Aryans, he said. He looks at me Iran. and he goes, we are the Aryans. And I go, what? And I'm, I'm an equality punk, okay? Like, you know, I, you know I, I, at the time I've got a Mohawk <laughs> and, a, you know, I'm a teenager and he's telling me. And I'm like, you're Aryan? What are you talking about? And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, you misunderstand. We, it means we come from the water. We call ourselves Aryans and we're blue eye with red hair. And I go, red hair. And I had no idea what he was telling me at the time. I was 16 or 17 years old. But it all makes sense now that they believe yeah. they came from the water, the water with the blue eyes and all that stuff. But that goes back to the Nomos in North Africa and the fish eyed people in the Sirius. See, this gets really weird, guys. The Nomos tribe of North Africa knew about the star Sirius and they worshiped it and yeah. they knew that it was a binary star system. They knew it was two yeah. stars side by side, but the only way you could know that is to have a telescope to see. But they said that they were told by the fish people star. who came up out of the water and they, they were the most nasty looking people they said or something. They called them, you know, uh, just disgusting looking creatures that came up mm -hmm. out of the water and showed them the knowledge of astronomy and the stars and they, they had this legend going back thousands of years or hundreds of years long before uh, Galileo. And um, then this ties in with Nebuchadnezzar because then the, the king of Babylon comes out 
And all these depictions of Nebuchadnezzar and all these old drawings or cave drawings, whatever you want to call them, depictions of him, show him wearing a fish garb and a fish um, fish scales, and he's wearing a fish head. He's literally wearing a fish head. Fish heads, right? The song Fish Heads now makes more sense. Fish, 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 fish heads, heads yeah. and the Pope. This ties in with the Pope and the Pope's hat. The Pope's yes. hat looks like a fish, and this Christian yeah. symbol is a fish. And yeah. the fish thing ties in way more with the fish people and the nomos than it does with Christian symbology. And that was yeah. adapted in as Christian symbology, but that originally it, it ties in with the fish people. And there it is. It, I mean, it's indisputable. It, exactly, so weird, right? right? And then yeah. Starbucks. So, yeah, man, it's all there. Mermaids, mermen. Yeah, the Melusine. Starbucks. Yeah. Starbucks, yeah, man. <laughs> what, what am I drinking a cup of there? What are you it? drinking exactly, man? If they're trying to take over the planet, what are they feeding us? <laughs> I'll bring up the logo. Uh, good old Starbucks logo. And you could search Starbucks logo Melusine. M-E-L-U-S-I-N-E. And I'll bring up a screen cap so you guys can see it. That this is actually ties in with Oh, hold on. I don't have my screen capture on. Damn. One second. Share screen. Sorry, guys. Forgot to turn it on. There we go. So going over to the mail you've seen, Starbucks logo. Check it out. This is the real Starbucks logo. And she's... Uh, now, yet. why do we call her... She's... Are you sharing screen? Position. She's in the buck yeah, position. We, we right? don't see... Uh, Mike, oh, you don't see it. To share it again, please. No. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> ben, can you see it now? <laughs> okay, we got yes, it now. Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Here we go. So there this go, is the yeah. Starbucks logo. This is the one that they've got on all the cups now, and you can see an ancient depiction of the male you've seen here. Yep. Now, what what you do is you mate with her, okay? And out comes the juices of life. <coughs> nice. No, I don't know. No. I don't know really, but the, the, the legend <laughs> a long way. That's it. I was exaggerating. I'm coding. And, and it um, in with it Ishtar. Into the sirens as well, right? Who used to sing boats into the rocks and stuff. Right. Now, this again. Now, why did Starbucks adopt this as their logo, right? Like that gets into a whole separate thing about why this, those symbols are used. But the fish people, this ties in with the fish people. So mm. when we talk about the fish people, we're talking about things that I, I this isn't me making this up. I just want everybody to understand that, mm. you know, we're not talking about me making up the fish people. That's on the Starbucks logo. The Starbucks logo ties in with Melusine, Melusine fish people going back to the merfolk. And uh, God, this well, goes hey, in yeah, with, a massive, massive story to that one. Yeah, it's it's a domino effect of weird stuff that we would have to talk about to even explain this to the viewers. But this plate stuff. I cannot stress it enough. The plate thing is the biggest thing. It's proof, guys. If you needed proof of man-made structures that are huge, that are the size of continents, that are 1,400 miles spaced out across the planet, this should get, I mean, I stand by it. I, I'll stake all my earthquake, all my reputation, all my everything. Those are, those are made at some point in the past by someone who had yeah, the ability no. to make plates. Yeah, we'll definitely Giant do a bit Titan. more on that. So I, I, I've got to get a round map now of Google Earth and then plot it out on a flat surface and see what we come up with because there's clearly some kind of shape there. They wouldn't be just random, irregular, you know, or regular shapes, would they? they, they there's got to be a pattern, but because it's all been contorted onto a ball, we can't see it. Yeah, it oh, exactly, exactly. So Dutch, uh, you had also mentioned that in your forecasting model that there was a segment where it's like did the energy disappears for a couple of days or something, and it had you questioning the geometry of the realm. And uh, can you okay. explain that a bit more? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, so as we watch earthquakes, let me go ahead and let me turn the display capture actually back on. Sorry, I have to keep switching between it, but I don't want to hog your screen the whole time. Uh, uh, okay. This is all for you. You take oh, as wow. much as you need. Yeah, it's guys. Uh, uh, God bless it's, your heart. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, happy St. Patty's Day. Happy yeah. St. Patrick's Day, guys. Okay. Uh, let's go over and show you the earthquakes. Okay. So 
in the past several years, my viewers and I all watch the earthquakes start at a certain spot, usually with our deep earthquakes, and they usually start down below the pinnacle tips of these giant plates, which I've now proved to you, at least all of them look like they're star fork shape, and all of them are star fork shape, except for this one, which is where all our deep earthquakes are coming out from down below. So in other words, down below Australia, down below the Indo-Australian plate, deep earthquakes. They spread out and they go out and follow the plate boundaries. And the plate boundaries, I show, I show the USGS map of all things. I know, I know USGS, but here it is. Here are the plate boundaries. They're red lines that you see go out across the planet. Now, the earthquakes follow those plate boundaries. It's no shock. I mean, you push up on the underside of something and it comes up and goes, the pressure comes up and goes through it and passes out away. Now, what I noticed is that the earthquakes, they flow out and they go over all the way till we get to the mid-Atlantic ridge, to those fractured plates that I showed you. And when they get to these X's, we see the energy, either one of two things happens. Either the energy goes back through the planet and comes back out the other side with new deep earthquakes on the antipode, the opposite side of the planet, or somehow the energy gets from here back around and down to here and starts over. It's like Scooby-Doo running out the side of, of one screen and coming, or a video game, Mario runs out on one side and comes out on the other. And I can't explain it. It's other than a, there it's may be, oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, there, there may be an explanation, but I the explanation is more disturbing than than wow. I think anything that anybody's proposed, which is when our energy goes out and gets over to here, that it is going back around and coming back out on the other side. But on the other side of what? On the well, other exactly. side of what? This there's is such more, a... There's more out there, man. Yes. Have you, have you looked at any of the old maps? Have you seen like the 14, like the Monty Planisphere and things like that that show more land in the yes. middle and on the outside mew i've seen it all oh country. yeah mm. yes yes i've seen the mew maps i've seen the old asian map that shows the other continents spread out much further so i've yeah, got yeah. two possible explanations for this and both of them are disturbing one is that we're missing okay there's a reason they're not showing us the earth from far away there's got to be otherwise we'd have a live stream of it all the time yeah, so there's something they don't want us to see. And the only logical answers I can come to is, A, there's land masses, like the Earth really is round, but there's land masses, huge continents, that we have been, that have been hidden from us, that if we're watching yeah. a live view of the Earth, we would see something west of California float by, huge. We'd be like, what is that? That's a giant land mass out there in the middle of the Pacific. What is that? It's a giant continent. And there's, it lights up at night. There's people there. What are we doing? Like, okay, that could be there. Yeah. It could be that Earth is not round, though, but it's not flat. It could be oblong. It could be that Earth is more like a star forge shape, like a diamond, like a um, faceted jewel. I mean, I yeah, well, I mean ge a geometric shape would kind of make more sense, you know, based on what, what we see in our experience. It's troubling whichever way you go. So whether the earthquakes are going through the planet and coming back out the other side, or whether they're going around the outside edge of some kind right, of flat Exactly, earth. around the circuit. Right, it, it, that we're dealing, there's some reason they're not showing us Earth from far away. That's not good. Mm. Like, hey, whatever hey. the reason is, it ain't good, man, because, like, it's been long enough, we should see it. So it, it, what are we going to find out? That Earth is like a, a jewel? Are we going to find out that it's flat? Are we going to find out that it's a, a, an asteroid shape? Is it going to be shaped like three pyramids? I mean, what is it going to be? The, uh, all the plates in these shapes lend me to think that might be shaped more spiked-like. Which would fly in the face of flat earthers and round earthers. Oh, you know, I'm a spiked earth, I'm a COVID earth. I, I just don't know what to do. Oh, so God. The, all I know for certain is that the seismic is going from one side of the planet to the other. When it gets to our X's, it goes through or around and if it goes around From the axis or, yeah it, no, and this ties around. in with ed edwin edward that, ed, 
like evidence Edwin Haley. essentially of like a toroid or a hollow earth like if it's especially if it's going through like it should be dense and blocked but uh it could be a hollow straight does through that, shot and a toroid so does that does that line go from the arctic to the antarctic your line of x's yes Basically, oh yeah it, that's the middle of the cutting it in half oh yeah the mid-atlantic mm. ridge is a fracture zone that starts at a super oh, let me show you. okay yeah let me show it to you this way this will make a lot more sense the russians Everybody missed this. There's a giant super volcano down or a crater at the pinnacle tip of the North Pole. Here's the physical North Pole. And here is something I found on my own when earthquakes started to strike here. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a 60 mile long by 30 mile wide caldera. It's the same size as Toba's super volcano. And this is where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge starts at the North Pole. Then we come down and it's a fracture that goes all the way through Iceland. And it goes all the way down like a lightning bolt through those two giant star forge shaped plates that I showed you down mm. to the South Pole and connects into this, which goes back to our shape that's shaped like a here. Let me get it back on the screen. There we go. Goes back to our giant spade shape and star forge shape. Now, the weird thing about all of this, as if this isn't all weird enough, that with the planet shape, possibly being oblong or faceted like a jewel or for some reason they're not showing it to us we can say certainly that i i think some somehow someone a long time ago was able to raise these mountains and these plates up out of the plate using a frequency much like that video i played for you where, yes. where he's on his oscilloscope but it would be much much more powerful and it would come up through mm. the plates and vibrate up like cymatics. And that you mm. would vibrate up that sound or that tone. That ties in with the start of the video and your awesome intro, by the way, which is mm. showing mm. the church because the church yeah. is cymatics. Exactly. That, that You can see on videos, they do it with the iron filings and stuff too. They sort of get play frequencies and like builds in 3D, builds shapes. Yeah, and when you start combining the different waves and uh, the different wave geometries, the higher frequencies within it, then you start getting multi-dimensional geometric motions mm. and uh, form within it. And of course, uh, it ties straight into Dr. Emoto's work with the ice crystals, which we see the stars in and all that kind of stuff as well. The cymatics to me is a very interesting part about it because like this ties in with what you're doing, Bernie, with, um, well, I mean, even with monoatomic generation of molecules in water, that when we're talking about stripping electrons, when you're trying try putting like power through something and it gets to a point where there's too much power and it accumulates up on the tip of that and it starts to flow out and strip those electrons off. What do you think would happen in geopolymer? This ties in with Paul Cook and what they're scraping exactly. off of the uh, okay. Actually, give me a moment, and I'm going to resend the link to Paul. I had sent it to him earlier, <clears throat> but I uh, hadn't heard from him. I'm going to send it to him again, see if we can get him in here for uh, the last cool. little bit. Very cool. Very cool, because Paul Cook is finding all those scrape marks on the walls, and he's talking about a facade, that, or a, uh, as he calls it, a render, uh, that, that the geopolymer has been stripped off. But why are they stripping mm -hmm. it off? What if, I just, I'm just throwing this out there, what if, the geopolymer they were using was electrically conductive and that that's why it'd be valuable today that there well, be 100 percent it was it was like in this crystalline super capacitant nanotechnology that uh they incorporated to all of it that's why we can't replicate uh quote unquote roman concrete today why roman nanotechnology even in cups cast cups were better and then when you start uh getting into these massive layers of geopolymer structure that currently they claim as uh, naturally formed uh, and then looking at it and seeing that uh, it's actually mega ret runes, mega remnants of these underground, under mountain um, catacombs and cities and uh, past civilizations. And it was all made of geopolymer and geopolymer is essentially cement concrete except that it's uh 
exponentially harder on its most hardness scale of how it uh, uh, solidifies or bonds, how it bonds, and that it's actually a chemical reaction bonding mm -hmm. that uh, the geopolymer forms into as opposed to concrete uh, or sandstone sort of thing where it's just pressured bonds, uh, et cetera, that's very weak, and that you're able to get all the uh, theoretically all the way up close to almost nine nine and a half probably with some of these potential geopolymers and them replicating uh the granite the marble and everything on it and which also explains why you'll find uh bricks sometimes or mud brick or uh different conglomerates uh mixtures of like concrete or mud uh mud concretes in the pillars or in the inside walls of these ancient structures and then this uh inch to foot thick uh basalt or geopol or uh basalt or what's the one i'm trying to think of uh granite uh granite um as well as the quartz yeah, quartzite is in it a bit. Yeah, um, the granite stuff, but uh, there's a term for it. Paul knows it, uh, and it's a specific uh, term for the geopolymer uh, of granite. Yeah, it's, um, oh, gosh. Like schist or shite. <laughs> right? Let's... Give me a minute, and I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted there. went on a little tangent. Uh, let me try and contact Paul and... Uh, Please continue, guys. Oh. Sorry, I was muted. Um, the uh, I was just looking for a video from the University of Texas. It was a working group on geopolymer released by the University of Texas. It looks like it's been deleted, but I think I might still have a link on it. I made my own geopolymer like Paul did, and I followed the directions that they had listed on... Um, the Geopolymer Institute site. So in case you didn't know, uh, Geopolymer Institute put out directions on how to make geopolymer like the uh, the pyramids. And it's like, you know, certain mix or whatever. But then within six months of us all talking about this. Oh, wait, hold on. Within the six words, that's, me break, that's me breaking my geopolymer. Um, within six months of us all talking about this, Sorry. they... Uh, University of Texas oh, came yeah. out studying geopolymer and that they found that it's twice as hard as Portland cement and that it could be used to replace current concrete and that they then went and built an airport down in Australia made of the geopolymer. What? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Australia. Australia geopolymer because airport. That's interesting because... There's buildings in Miami. There's a town. Um, what, what is it? But uh, basically, the whole all the buildings there are poor geopolymer. Um, uh, Augustine, San Augustine, is that Florida? There we go. There we go. I just posted in so. the chat room. Seventy thousand tons of geopolymer concrete for airport. This is 2014. Uh, Dutch, um, can, if you have an article up, do you mind sharing it on ours as well as? You're no longer sharing screen here if you're trying to show us something. Oh, oh, here, here. Oh, okay, I apologize. I don't want to hog up the screen. Right. We, we like the descriptions as well. They're good. Okay. Touch <laughs> screen. Allow. There we go. 70,000 tons of geopolymer concrete oh, for what? airport in Australia. Brisbane oh. West Airport. Wow. 27,000 Queenslander attended to see this. 66,000 tons of carbon neutral, blah, blah, blah. Carbon you know, neutral. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, right. Got to save the planet, planet, man. Yeah, save man, like by building an airport. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yeah, Let's you know. An airport so then we can fly planes around the planet while saving it. Okay, nice one. <laughs> but the geopolymer <laughs> stuff is really, really interesting because they could have mixed in the, what they're, what's with all the radiation and the nuclear next to these spots? What if they mixed in some kind of uranium that we didn't know about oh. and that that was providing some low low amount of power in the 
geopolymer, uranium-based oh, right. geopolymer yeah, yeah, right. that had its own power source built in. I mean, it could be, yeah, and it all yeah, overloaded. So have you come across the red bricks that um, that they use as batteries? Have you, have you come Ooh. across that research? I, I saw that, and you know what? Something that Paul Cook might want to try when he's mixing his geopolymer. I, you don't want to really touch it or handle it with your hands, but graphene, um, that graphene will transfer and hold power if you put it in layers remember the indian mound that we were looking at with the layer of coal ah, at the yes, bottom yes, yes. that um the layer thing will generate power actually that if you yeah use well, it's layers. a capacitor that's a capacitor yeah yeah basically yes yeah, yeah it'll store energy or generate it depending on what we put into it and mm -hmm. um so in the capacitor it stores the energy and if you do carbon aluminum copper and calcium which fits with the bones, by the way. So in the Indian mound, you've got a base layer of carbon. Then you've got the yeah, and then you got the conch shell in the middle to project it out. Now the conch shell was shown worn by kings and queens back in the day. They would wear a conch shell over their third eye, or or the center of their forehead. Third eye is pineal, but they'd wear it over the center of their eye, just like the Egyptians with the coiled snake. So the Egyptians have the coiled snake over their third eye, the conch shell with its coil over their third eye. And then I'm not saying I'm I, I, I'm not into any of that. I'm just saying that like frequency wise there it's all on 180 hertz or so on the conch shell thing. 180 yeah. hertz ties in with electricity. With and then we get into the kings, nine. kings and queens. And in the kings and queens, they had scepters and orbs, right? Yep. Yeah, and crowns and jewelry. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, the Egyptians we're, we're looking into electro culture, and obviously we have with Bernie's kind of stuff, um, organite and all that, and that ties into the jewelry they were wearing. And um, I did an interview, and and with all these like tensor coils and that, they're actually tuned, so they're making tuned tensor coils. So literally, you, you could tune it like a bracelet to um, 180 hertz or whatever you want to. Speaking of bracelets. Getting into the um, the Egyptians, the Egyptians kind of show the same thing. Um, instead of a scepter and an orb, the Egyptians are using the ankh or ankh. The ankh, and yes, in. and the jed, the jed pillar, yes. Okay, see how they're holding that? Okay, yes. right. They got that, and in the other hand, they've got the the what, what was it called? The jed the, pillar. The, right, it, right. There it is. Oh, the scepter. That's oh, that's the scepter. The jed pillar is the capacitor. You know the pillar and it's got the lines across it yeah you yeah like, yeah, yeah, actually, I could yeah depictions of a jed pillar and an ankh sort of together you know now they all have some kind of elongated thing on their head yeah. Yeah. and they all have the coiled snake at the at the third eye or something at the level of the yeah. of the forehead okay each one of them and i propose and that this and hook. Yeah. is the same thing as this this is a vajra yes, yes. these were okay, both now this is yeah we went over the, I, I went over this in a interview last week like this you, exact you know stuff, about yeah. you know about elon musk right no who's that never heard of him huh. yeah elon, <laughs> elon musk posted this tweet and he said this is what on this is what's on my nightstand and on oh, the nightstand, what? he's got no. he's got three American books: the History of America and Democracy, red, white, and blue books in the back. He's got Diet Coke cans. He's got a fake gun from some video game, and then he's got the Vajra, That's and then he's got the classic gun pointing the other way. But now the Vajra he carries around with him everywhere. The Vajra oh is my God, I make a Vajra. I've the, uh, yeah, they're everywhere. Those things. Vajra they're, they're wireless everywhere. power. This gets into depictions of the goddesses. Well, actually, the gods. Vajra power projection, maybe? Maybe I won't bring it up. I don't know. Ah, it's not bringing it up on Google. Go figure. But in ancient depictions of India, the gods are holding this in one hand, just like, just like we're talking nice. about with the uh, Egyptians, and mm. just like the kings and queens from Europe. They're holding the and scepter that, and the orb. Now, you know the orb. The yeah, yeah, yeah. The scepter and the order and the, and the um, Egyptians, yeah, the, like the holy hand grenade, the Globus Crucis. The orb. And the Egyptians you have the flail and hook. When you shake the orb, 
it makes a bell sound. Did you know that? That on the yes, inside I did. Yes, boom, yes, boom, 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 boom. yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's got to um, be wireless power. With with the thing on the head, it's got to be for projecting your thoughts or controlling people or something. It would make sense that they, like if they were really powerful, why wouldn't they be able to force people to do things? You know, yeah, subject yeah, yeah. kind of thing. They like you, you they would be able to with wireless power force you to be able to build a, you know, force you to be a slave or force well, you to build I mean, a pyramid. The kings and the queens, right? They're the ones with what? The ones with the power. Right, I hadn't it's thought about it spelling. that way. It's all in the spelling. Wow, wow. I mean, and, and you know, we 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 l act them right. L God, we l act them to power. We go to the polling booth between the two poles, and we l act them to power. Electricity, elect. Yeah, elect l. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Or elect e l e c t r i c i t y electricity, right? Electric. Exactly. It's a, yeah, and the right. trick of wow. yeah, electing them. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the spell casting. Exactly. Oh, man. It is. It's. It. It is. Now that gets into, man. That gets into language and tone, and uh, yes, finishing. yes, yeah, yeah. And then you can go straight into um, like throat singing the cathedral. Yeah, the devil, devil, easy fire. tiger. Hey, mate. Oh, 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 there he is. Oh, my God. There he is. Oh, I'm starstruck, man. I'm star. I'm blushing. My man crush is complete. <laughs> so the guy was six hundred thousand. You're making me sweat, dude. You're making me sweat. Yeah, all right, mate. Pick up, guys. How you doing? Oh, good. Welcome, uh, brother. Oh, one man. love, easy tiger. Yeah, listen. I'm doing this on my phone, by the way, and I've got six percent. But I thought I'd jump in and say hello to everyone. Yes, Much well, love, brother. Glad you We're... did. We'll have to do a whole another one. Plan it out here. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Definitely. So I look a bit rough, mate. I've been out and about collecting nuggets, and I. Oh. Nice. Yeah, little... can I've see been that. Watching. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, I can see where you are. Yeah, yeah. mate. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> on the, I'm, I'm on. I'm on the field now, man. The geo bomber on the site, boots on the ground. <laughs> geo polymer. Geo polymer. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I wonder. If, I'll take you in here. I just went in here. I don't know where my, my phone's going to be. Oh, jeez. Caving geez. in that red layer. I oh, know, mate. I know. Oh. So it's, it's earlier when I was thing, describing mate. Paul's uh, layer of on the, on the these side caves of, the of former buildings, uh, this, the geopolymer, that red layer that they call sandstone here, that whole red layer, continental sh or layering of it is what... Paul is now finding out that's most likely built and was constructed through geopolymer by some uh, humanity or past. Interesting color, right? Red, iron. It's, 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 it's absolutely Kentucky, beautiful. It? It's a beautiful color. It's something you'd see in Petra or Africa or something like that. It's the exact same stuff you see there. Yeah, exactly, man. That's wild. Awesome. You know, Paul, I see, I, you know, I hear you talk about the geologist and then being full of crap. I agree 100%. You are not only on to something like tremendous about the construction of the place, you're, you're 100% on it, man. This oh, is big up, mate. That's, that's nice coming from you, mate. Talk to you. I'm starstruck, really, because you've made no, it. No, it's not like that, mate. Trust me. Yeah, that's Everybody's starstruck. Starstruck, yeah. yeah. Everybody's starstruck. Everybody's starstruck. Yeah, the only star I've got is a brown star. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's take this children. Sorry, that was, a bit, that was a little bit too crude. <laughs> <laughs> starfish in here, man. Come on. Uh, sorry about that. Let's cut that bit out somehow. <laughs> uh, we're live on all our channels. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and get a Cornish pasty now anyway, because uh, I've been, well, not fasting, but like, I haven't eaten nothing all day, so I just thought I'd pop in the silo. I've got minimal battery as well, and I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I need to keep oh. it up. Well, Thank up, you very man. much. This is yeah. awesome. We'll have to do a live at some point with me, Bernie, all you guys, and we'll all get yeah. together and we'll talk. Definitely. This yeah, is Yeah, 100%, good. mate. Definitely, because um, I've, I've been collecting loads of stuff. And and again, Dutch, it'd be an honor, mate, as well. I mean, like uh, me and Bernie uh, and Cam, we're like, we're like peas in a pod anyway, so to like... To uh, do a session with you would be something else, mate. It would be something else. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Definitely. We've we'll do it. We've got one coming up with uh, Michelle Gibson. Me and Campbell actually did one with her last night. 
And me and Paul have yeah. another one with her on Saturday, uh, March 25th. And uh, yep. she will be another perfect researcher to connect to all of the alignments and macro. Yeah. Uh, have you checked out her work? You're finding, Mike. Michelle Gibson done, has done yeah. a lot of stuff on uh, earth alignments and things. Yeah, and canals and stuff, man. So, yeah, that'd be brilliant, mate. That'd be absolutely brilliant. Well, awesome. I'm gonna, I'm, great. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out now, guys, anyway. Cool, Cheers, brother. Paul. Nice well, great to see you, anyway, all right? Ta-da. 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 That guy will put a smile on your face every time you hear him talk. I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, is he? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that cock me here, man. Uh, I don't even our our plan, I, I don't know if you've seen any of uh, the Science of Sound series that uh, we've been doing, uh, Dutch, but uh, Ominous, my good friend, uh, Ken the Beatboxer, his uh, ideal dream location to perform is the uh, Sophagium in uh, Malta. Ah, uh, Malta. Uh, Paul Cook, uh, he started out finding most of the stuff, the geopolymer, and discovering it in the Star Forts, being in Malta, which is a giant island that is one massive star like for island. It's, it's crazy. It really is. Well, there's also um, Analog, Ben from Waking Up with Analog. What was that yeah. island? I can't remember what it, but he's got proof that there is a, an island that was man made. Right? It's just so he's, we've, we've got, got to proof go to Malta, guys. Yeah. Made, right? We've exactly. got to go to Malta. Let's yeah, go to Malta. sorry. Finish that thought. Uh, we are going to get ominous and we are going to do an episode of the Science of Sound and a giant meetup of all of us in Malta and do. Uh, a... Yeah, you coming, Dutch? You yeah, coming? I'm there. I'm there. Right. Duchess, right. Duchess and I will both be there. I'll bring my better half. And I'll bring a frequency tone generator so oh, we can hit yeah. 180 hertz. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, nice. I'll bring a frequency tone generator and all the meters and everything. I'll bring my Geiger counters. I'll bring all the electronic equipment, uh, EMF detectors, everything. I'll bring it all. Oh, Beautiful, man. That's cool. And wow. Also, yeah, we're going to have to do. Mighty hertz dance party. Well, yeah, it'll, be like, uh, it'll be like the Matrix, only without, uh, without any, uh, you know, about uh, naked women. Yeah, bugger. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a dance party, not a rave. Who's Morpheus? Party. Is is Bernie Morpheus then? Does that mean he's leading the underground rave? It's going to smell a little hippie-ish. Uh, yeah, you might get a few know. whiffs of some stuff. <laughs> right. Well, it's Sophie. The Sophigium is underground, so it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, music uh, performance. Yeah, man. Can we Sophia. get Hutchinson there? Can we please yes. get oh, Hutchinson? Oh, yeah, let's get Hutchinson. Yeah, man. Oh, my uh, God. This would be like the yeah. trifecta. And that's what I was <laughs> just about to bring up is that we have to reschedule or schedule as well another future interview with uh, John Hutchinson, uh, Jeremiah, and Jeremy, the alien scientist, to get to the super technical levels of the science and the ultimate nerd out that uh, – uh, you guys will have that's even way over my head a lot of the time. I love John and Nancy. Oh, they uh, they came in. John and Nancy came here to St. Louis back in 2011, and and we met. Uh, they were driving through, and I put them up for two days at a hotel, and we got to hang out and play with their trailer full of gear, and it was awesome. Wow. I got a video of it. Yeah, I got video of that our meetup back in 2011. I'd love cool. to talk to them. I haven't talked to them in 10 years. Nice. Yeah, Look we're doing crystal battery uh, cells now uh series so the next uh one we get scheduled i will let you know and email you the invite for that as well uh just Very a cool. couple files of old maps that uh decide to open up and there's this is a repeating um one from what seems like the pre-reset of terra australis where uh australia was part of antarctica and uh I would like See to get your thoughts on this, Dutch. Does this seem mm -hmm. to be going along those same ridge lines or fracture lines that you found? And I have shout out Eric Hecker, uh, his comment up here. He's another good one uh, that uh, we'll have to have on a future technical panel. Eric spent a year living, working down at the South Pole. And I don't think. Oh, yeah, muted, Dutch. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. Well, working down at the South Pole, I could tell you a story. There's a uh, there's a chief scientist of a place called Lidos, L-E-I-D-O-S. They uh, do all the 
I, I guess they handle all the tr uh, shipping of all the goods down to Antarctica. And this guy joined a group that hates me, this Antarctic scientist. It's so weird, man. Something's going on down in Ar Antarctica. I'd love to talk to you about and uh, <laughs> we should definitely talk outside yeah, of this. Because, Andy, uh, you know, in Jeez, I'd be proud of that. Wow. Cool. Wow. Th these maps here, I'll tell you what. So, for instance, the first map you showed, if you bent that around origami style, that the bottom of the earth, that uh, that, that mm. would bend into that, that yeah. um, ace of flower. spades shape. Yeah, like a flower of life, really. Mm. I would say. It yeah, that, that's what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, We've seen life, those yeah. equilateral triangle points out on like the fractal mm. level. I'm pretty sure it will overlay on the in, now indentation there. So it would have, mm. what was once up is now sunk. That's mm. something else. We, that the, the way to view all of these Starfort things that I found so far is either turning the Earth 45 degrees or 90 degrees. So, I mean, we're talking about, or I'm sorry, yeah. 45 or 90, like a full right angle. You have to turn earth on its side to see them properly in their proper orientation. And we know scientists already told us about the, well, I, this goes into something else entirely. I got to bring up, which is Halley's comet and Halley's comet. The discoverer of Halley's comet was, was his name, Edwin or Edward, yeah, Edwin, yeah, Edwin, Ed, Edwin, Edwin. Okay. Ed, Halley discovered the Halley's comet. But after he discovered the Halley's comet, he took sail to the high seas on a pirate ship, what looked like intentionally what looked like a pirate ship. And he took a special compass that he made that measured the north and the south pole, what he called the fixed poles, the north and south fixed poles, and the two other poles that he said are moving along the equator. And that he was taking the ship when was this? following the equator. This is Edwin Haley in the 1700s. Following with a special compass he made, the moving inner poles that he called them, oh, with the inner no. sun in a hollow earth, and that Edwin Haley believed there was an inner sun in a hollow earth with two different poles. The fixed poles are tied to the crust, and that the actual moving poles are going along the equator, and he sailed around the world following them. And nobody knows about this. You have to go look it up in freaking old books and shit to find uh. this stuff. God. Yeah, for real. And it, nobody knows what kind of compass he made it himself. And, and um, I'm, yeah, I'm trying well, to find out if I, I'd make it if I could. I would do a fundraiser. Right. Right. So have you heard about the, I can't remember his name. There was a guy and he was a UFO researcher from New Zealand. And he was following UFOs and he found that they were always taking the same path. And he ended up mapping these um, like, you know, power, I guess, grids and um all the UFOs were basically using these grids for power and flying around on them. Oh, I can't remember what his name is. I'll have to find it out. Um, I mean, and then I, I just can't help but think of the big friendly giant and that kind of stuff, right? And when they, they, they step into upside down land, is there, is there another earth underneath us, right? With another sun and, and like two poles or something. Oh God, you're doing my head in Dutch. Right. Like it just gets into the earthquakes. That there's something going on down below these, it, the, down below the San Andreas, the pinnacle yeah. of the starport, down below the New Madrid, the biggest earthquake in U.S. history. This gets in the titans, the giants, and the difference between a titan and a giant. A giant yes. would be oh, something that we would talk about maybe being 10 or 15, 20 feet tall, like what I showed yep. you with the mounds. But then we yep. get into the titans, and this is how I found Tartaria which was searching the ancient Greek legend. And I found out that there was a war between Kronos and Zeus, the Titans who took the side of Kronos and Zeus and the gods. Oh, and God. that the Titans were thousands of feet tall. They said, yeah. Now yeah. I don't know if yeah. I believe that. I, I don't know. I don't know. But in, in the I, Bible, doesn't it say that Adam was 900 feet tall? There's there's in the book of Enoch. It talks about, I was going to say, I believe that's the book of Enoch. Yeah. In the book of Enoch, it definitely oh, talks yeah. about Enoch. giants, yeah. Nephilim, oh, fallen angels. Mm. Um, but uh, we, what would we call a fallen angel is somebody who's not from Earth, somebody who's not from Earth and we comes from politicians. somewhere else and not human. So, yeah, I mean, people would call them aliens, but I would call them fallen angels. I mean, fallen they were it crashed too, right? Like if uh, literally. literally fell from the sky. Well, I mean, here's another one for you, you know, fallen angels. 
um, stars, right? What do they get us to worship? Stars, right? From Hollywood, right? Hollywood is the tree that they make magical wands from. And then films are made up of a cast, right? And then they have their news where they do a broadcast. It's all stars, right? And, and magic, like fallen angels, stars. Oh, yeah. This gets into a whole thing about like corporate logos and and uh, and why did the media companies you know, right like oh my god guys we could we could have a discussion on this <laughs> my god i had no idea you were even into it we're gonna have to have like a conspiracy marathon i think oh yeah oh, wait wait hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> conspiracy which thing which, hat, which, hat, you watch which right hat do we wear oh we wear he's the, got the hat all right the sherlock we got the the sherlock yeah, hat man. right or if we're gonna talk conspiracies i suppose we should put on the top hat right or uh, uh, really got the sherlock the elongated hat. yeah yeah there we go this one's the best one the you faraday cage around the dome i've only got a jester's hat man yeah yeah well you need the you need the indiana jones hat or you need the tin foil dora i've got a tin foil fedora you've got a fin tin foil dora oh my god uh, my tin foil dora will amplify and it will collect as well oh my goodness campbell uh is that that's not real is yeah, that you real? Can't really oh it. wow i didn't see that wow is i that have to change my my screen or that actually screen. exists Are, yeah man oh my good i thought i thought that was like a cover or like a streaming effect listen it's a jester cap it's a jester cap man even bills. Oh, God's a cowboy. So there you go. And I got the, uh, you know, shout out. Oh to God, Richard, everyone's got uh, <laughs> Brand, you will do the little brand took there. there you and go. welcome, Gerald. Good day, Gerald. Right. Gerald's well, a buddy. major part of the real science that we do, and he wants to actually uh, Dutch incorporate uh these vortex coils and the geopolymer uh aspects and uh take it to the next level and also doing you're already charging in mung beans right now with pulsing your coils and uh the yep, electrical experiments they're actually but do you have a hand right now what's that Campbell? that's the question illuminati a confirmed <laughs> shriner hat love that eh He's the Grand Poobah. The Grand Poobah, oh, yeah, man. Well. <laughs> well, good to meet you, Dutch. I'm I'm overwhelmed. Like, you're awesome, dude. I've been watching you since you had maybe 400 subscribers. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, man. Awesome work. Dude, dude, awesome. thank you. That was six channels ago, too, remember? It was. It, it was. It was it, you know what? I, I said I was going to get that article from NASDAQ, but... Uh, you know, hearing that you're working on uh, geopolymer, what is it again? You're doing geopolymer for uh, for power storage. Is that what it is? Or, well, as soon as I get my uh, formula right on geopolymer, I'm actually going to be building a replica of a pyramid that works because I have vortex coils already, which is kind of like the fire within, if you want to look at it that way. So what I'm going to be doing is placing a, a specific type of geometrical coil inside the pyramid that's built with geopolymer. And I'm going to see if uh, it resonates in a way where it'll create more energy of a, a working battery system than um, just basically a tomb is what they believe it is. So that's that's my goal anyway. That's what I'm working on. That's cool. That is really cool. I can't wait to see what the results are. And well, I mean, I'm, obviously, if it works, you know, I mean, that that that's just phenomenal. It's well, as of now, the vortex coil that I've chosen for it, uh, I can take a 12 volt one amp wall plug and I can light up a 150 watt uh, LED grow beam at maximum for literally like 12 watts. So, um, that coupled with the geopolymer acting as a, a battery battery resonator, maybe get some more uh, output than what I'm getting now. So that's the goal. That's huge. That's huge. Even if you're generating one watt, even one mm -hmm. watt out of, out of it would be phenomenal. So, I mean, that's just, 
Wow. Wow. You know, I'll, I'll, if you want to, want to talk off here, I'd be happy to talk with you too. I've got something sure. I'd like to share with you. I've got a, a video I made called wireless power printed on paper or just power printed on paper. And it, it has to do with layers and electrons, uh, 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 valence electrons and so forth. But it, it might come in handy for you if you want to use it. I'll give it to you. I'm, I put it out there for the world to use. I'll give you the formula and how to make it and everything. You yeah, we got a formula. Out. If it works, I'll give you a working machine once it's complete. There you go. Why? That's I could use as many out. LED lights as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. Well, now I've gotten, I did an experiment yesterday and, this is something I've got on video I haven't released yet, but I'm going to release in the very next few days. Um, I can right now, now right like, here? No, Have I can't do it right here right now. It's, no, it's on my separate camera, so I can't. I got to upload it on my laptop. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But um, I'm now lighting LEDs, which is the bank of four, the strip that you see in one of the videos. It's, it's probably about 80 watts of LED. Then I'm lighting another uh, 15 watt LED bulb, as well as running that power into a transformer that's charging a 12 volt battery, all off of eight watts. So I'm playing with it, and 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 it's it's amazing tech. It's going to be released for free. I'm I'm going to go after the market of people that can't build them or don't want to build them themselves. But all the plans and everything and how to build them will be released for free so that anyone that wants to build them themselves can. So that's, I've been doing tutorials. Those will be getting released on Bernie's channel because I promised him. So he's got the scoop, but that's coming. So I'm almost wow. there. Of course. <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I mean, you know, who wants to be a billionaire? Honestly, like if you really think about it, like. Who would really want to be a billionaire? It'd be you know, with more money comes more problems. So mm. billionaire would they, suck. So it's better. They than only let off. you have that much if they let if they have something else on you. You know, like that. That's what I mean, I if you're getting you know free land, free electricity, you know, growing your own food, you don't need a billion dollars, do you? Well, that's the other part of it too. The electroculture. If if we prove it in these experiments that I'm doing now, from what I learned in the past. And, and what I'm doing now and all the old data that I've gotten from all these newspapers just blows my mind. Um, we're going to be able to grow food one third quicker with almost double the output, at least at 60%. Wow. So that's going to help a ton of people once they mm. get these experiments complete, if they're conclusive. Again, mm. right now they're experiments. And it's also so less water, no, no fertilizer and less water too, isn't it? Yes, big time. Yeah. And That's it can all be uh, stemmed from atmospheric electricity. You yes. could use a little solar panel to start it. There's, it's so easy how this, this can be put together. So one step at a time. But again, when those experiments are conclusive, then again, that's another aspect to this tech. So my belief system is when it comes to the pyramids, when they were operating, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm taking up the spotlight here for a moment but when they were operating they acted as power systems that ionized the air at the base of the pyramid and with the ebb and flow of the river nile which was much closer to the pyramid at the time because of what's underneath the pyramid which is basically a huge piezoelectric crystal when the ebb and flow of the uh, water would come up from the waxing and waning of the moon it would create that pressure and high voltage within the pyramid and the whole high voltage coupled with breaking water from uh, into hydrogen and oxygen, the flow of the gas turning into plasma with the sound coupled with the resonance of the actual geopolymer of the pyramid itself acted as an ionization for the whole ground area, like a big electroculture system and the water wow. acted as the negative. So yes. it was almost like a garden of Eden surrounding all the pyramids mm. when they were in operation. That's so part of the If they remove the water, that would that would turn them off. Yep. Yeah. And there was a couple other uh, reasons why they shut off. Like if you go back into the history books of when uh, I wouldn't say history books, you'd have to actually go into the Bible 
and you go to Moses when he took the Israelites yeah. out of, of Egypt, he also took the Ark of the Covenant, at least yes, that's he did. theory. Which so also did, fit exactly inside the sarcophagus in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. Which, because of the way it was built, would act like a giant capacitor. The capacitor, yeah, exactly. On that point, not, it would mm. facilitate the pulse within the resonance of the pyramid itself. So, okay, so that could kill it as well. So it was, it was, yeah. So that's part yeah. of the theory. I, I, I'm going to kind of release that out all in a series of videos in the near future. But yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. I think you're right, Gerald. You know, I, I just wanted to show you something that I, I put it into the chat room while we're talking here, but. Um, oh, you you bring it that, up on screen. Let's all see. Oh, I will. I'll bring it up here on screen right now. Check it out. Look at this. This is now, first of all, you mentioned the capacitor and the water flowing. Um, this yep. takes us into St. Louis, Missouri, for instance, here in St. Louis. Here's a plan of the French from the 1790s showing <laughs> St. Louis board. downtown. And on the north side, this is look which way the north is. So north is pointing to the right. But in the north side of St. Louis, we have an old star fort where they're building the geospatial agency now, which I showed at the start of this broadcast. They're, this is where the geospatial agency is being built now in 2023. And you'll notice that wow. around it is water and it's flowing out and then falling down a waterfall where they have a bridge. And then it goes down to the Mississippi river. Now the St. Louis arch has been built right here along the river and right across the river are the Cahokia mounds with their whole, layer thing going on with the multiple layers Earth and batteries. right right now the flowing water is a big thing because this star fort here has been hidden now that why would the u.s government come in and build all these bases in the middle of each one of these star fort shapes when it's so obvious now the flowing water thing ties in this also ties in with ghosts <laughs> i'm not yes. into you know ghost hunting but i i did do ghost hunts before and I know Absolutely. that there's all kinds of talk about flowing water and, and spirits and all kinds of stuff like that. So wow. there's just there's something to this. Water holds memory. Yeah, exactly. And they could possibly be a, an electrostatic uh, formulation of, say, like a, a, a plasma. But due to the memory in the water and the water creating the electrostatic flow by going past the geopolymer that could have some sort of property in that sense it, it, it could actually create a spot where you would see that as an apparition but really it's a plasmatic form of memory that comes from the water I, it's just a thought i like that actually that resonates with me so it's like plasma and water or plasma conscious memory taking form out of the memory of water I don't know if it's conscious. Think of it more like a snapshot of a, a moment gotcha. in time that's repeated due to those. Mm. those Formerly uh, conscious. Moment. <coughs> a recorded <coughs> conscious moment. It's a flicker, essentially. That, that, that kind of seems more realistic. I don't know. Again, it's just a thought. Just a thought. Yeah, it's like those ghost mud cameras mud they used right? to have. In the 1800s, you've seen those all like the um, like their mirrors, and they and they, they get like apparitions and ghosts in them, like these weird machines they had. Yeah, that's you've seen those pictures. I've yeah, never that, into that. That's interesting. Yeah, I'll mm. pop up now. Sorry, what were you saying there, Mr. Dutch, Mr. Synth? Oh, sorry. oh no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Either or the the um the ghost thing. I, I'm not trying to get too weird on us or anything. But on the ghost thing, that the Victorian mansions are the mud flutters, right? So we've got the Victorian mansions, we've got the mud flutters, we've got the use of what you could call, I mean, what would you want to call it? Some kind of geometry? Yeah, you know, I don't yep. want to call it sacred geometry because that gets a little, you know, like but a different. That's realm why it is sacred. It's, it's the geometry, geometry that is the structure of the universe, energy, matter, and the realm. It's, yeah, geometry gives off a feel, like certain yeah. different fields and stuff. Um, based yeah. on the shapes, yeah. This could kind explain of the theory of what you're finding, Dutch. You're finding uh, uh, geometrical uh, energy forms that were literally turned into matter 
of previous civilizations and how they operated maybe on some sort of a subconscious level i don't know but what you're finding is absolutely amazing so it could be the long skulls have a resonance you know i mean it might be something as simple as a longer wave in your skull and it, it, you know it, a standing wave in your skull or something i mean possible that's how they're the telepathic yeah yeah definitely like telepath te telepathy but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be mystical telepathy it would be scientific telepathy it would be there'd be a reason behind it there'd be some reason that that would be happen that would be that would explain why they were special why they were the kings and queens why they had the long skull yeah. they were literally projecting their thoughts and uh it's just well, possible domes. It's and then then what are they put on top of all the cathedrals and basilicas and domes right what are, what are they called bold men chrome dome a right. hey, chrome dome that fits with um these a lot of church <laughs> steeples have mercury mercury in the steeple tip right yes. you guys know this about the mercury? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mercury, now this yeah. fits with something paul cook found which was the mercury arc rectifier yes yes yes, yes, yes. the right. rectifier converts the rectifier converts ac the radio wave into yeah. dc yeah. for use and, vi and vice versa yeah, yeah, DC to AC, the rectif rectification, right? And, that gets and it self-rectifies so it never burns out. That's the other crazy part about that mercury rectifier. And then mm. they were and of old. course, yeah. now mer mercury is illegal because it kills you, right? Even though kids used to play with it in their hands in the 60s, now it's suddenly deadly. Yeah, same with uranium, right? Like, you know, yeah. radioactive, it's, it's I mean, supposedly it's like, lead. lead. And where do we get radiation from, right? Marie Curie, right? Mercury. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh hey i didn't realize that wow yeah yeah that that Mary Mary Curie, yeah <laughs> it's, it's everywhere it's all spelling right they tell us man they tell us we just got to work it out in your face it's straight up in your face it's like woodrow wilson being president during world war one right like woodrow yeah, wilson woodrow, yeah. coolidge franz ferdinand they're all double letter names it's like wait that's world war one like uh-oh nice World War One, Woodrow Wilson, Calvin Coolidge. World War One, you know, where, where they had planes, you know, flying around that were invented like literally like three years prior, and then suddenly they had like you know machine guns mounted on them and planes everywhere, and it's just dumb. The plane story. You, you guys know I found a steam-powered plane, right? Oh, what? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Built by Langley. Look this one up. Search what? Lang Langley, that that first aircraft carrier is named no, after this guy. It's hidden in we history. We demand you are the screen hog today, so you've already got it. You just post it up, please, for us to All see. All right, let me let me get it here. Let me search Langley, Langley steam power oh, airplane. Now this got this was years before the the Wright brothers. So let me get this this on screen here. Hold on. <laughs> this is funny. I can't believe I, I can't believe I'm going down this rabbit hole. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it, but hey, no, here with no. the mud flood, his story uh yeah, reset Sartarian Starfork community. We need some oh, steampunk in here. And so first a of all, Alan, powered plane before the Wright brothers. Right. And the pictures of this thing flying in the sky were taken by Alexander Graham Bell. Uh -huh. So it was hidden, uh -huh. right? And I was powered by steam. And they launched it from a catapult to get it going. But once it was up, it kept going as long as you have water in there. And it had a condenser that would pull water out of the air and put it back into its tank so it could keep flying through the ah. moist air. And they fly through the clouds to collect more water to put into the condenser to give itself more steam to turn it and keep going. Ah. And they said it, it was, look, 1896. Look, first genuine success on May 6, 1896. Ha, 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 ha. Whoops! Whoops. That's I'm ridiculous. looking for that mercury uh, rectifier right now in the drive that's been put together from old technologies. So I've also read somewhere that there was an actual electric plane in 1916. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. I don't that. Hey, I'm how about the plane? Yes, the electric plane. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's. That's the one. Is that New Mexico? That, oh, no, that's... Um, this is the uh, Ukraine the uh, Great yeah, Wall yeah. of Star Forts here. And uh, so let's uh, just take a five-minute bathroom break or smoke break for whoever needs. Yeah, and I'm going to play this clip, and it's...
this clip right here is you play it through Twitter and it blocks the ads and actually gives you higher uh, quality audio and video than playing through YouTube itself. And as you can see right here, that is that same geometry uh, of the, what they call the bastion fort or the battery uh, star fort here. And this is a buried one and that we're going to show here that you find one about every mile along uh, this wall for thousands of kilometers across the Ukraine and Siberia, the former Tartaria. And that uh, these are the same basic battery geometries and fundamental fractal mm. geometry that uh, Dutch Sense has been pointing out to us over and over again uh, throughout this. And uh, here's a, a bigger wall. We call it, we dubbed it the Great Wall of Tartaria because it's through the actual areas of the maps, uh, Siberia, that used to be called Tartaria. And that uh, there's literally no history for these. And you have the foundation of America, the... Uh, there's oh wow said her name earlier star. in new york the the statue liberty, of liberty statue of liberty was built off the base of one of these and then there's like a yes, wall thousands true. of kilometers long of buried ones of these with no history across the current flashpoint of crimea off the dynamic river and through siberia aka tartaria I recently and thank you to everyone who has donated today. Thank you. I, I recently found one uh, up north, actually, that uh, we should go over later. After the break, of course. All righty. I just pilot. posted into the chat room for anybody who wants to see it. World War II drones and B-17 bomber remote control airplanes that I found that they flew through the nuclear tests out of the Bikini Atoll and that they had full-on drone B-17 bombers in World War II with no people on them. And I just posted the article. You can go see it. They've got pictures of it all flying around and everything. They had fully remote control drone B-17 uh, bombers in World War II. We've got a, um, a bot in one of the chats. I don't know whose it is. Can mods get rid of that, please? Some sex Tinder chat thing. Oh, we're getting attacked by the the freaking porn boss. The box. I think it's, it's just not my it's channel. Sexy time, guys. Paul was here. <laughs> Paul was here, and look what happens, man. I'm telling <laughs> you, the guy brings it out. <laughs> uh, everybody uh, my crypto alchemist. Did they attack it all at once? Interesting. That's why I literally make everybody in my uh, live chats moderators because the uh, porn bots were so bad for a while that. Uh, they're relentless, so you make everybody mod. They can't uh, can't uh, get out there, and it's ridiculous because once you start making a bunch of people moderators, then they will delete anybody else that they have a dis like disagreeing volume. And uh, all right, press play. I'll be back. And if we come back, we'll I'll be right back too. I guess I'm going to have a quick break here. as well. Me as this, well. We'll get into the, this wall as well. Yeah, so this is what we dubbed the Great Wall of Tartaria. And that um, we'll be getting Olaf, the Sverker um, channel, Olaf, to come on with us to do a full uh, presentation of uh, it, where it begins in the Black Sea across all of the Ukraine and then across all of Siberia into the uh, Russian Arctic Ocean, and, and uh, this is just the middle of Ukraine. Mm. And you'll see, I mean, this, this one, you know, is very, very hard to sort of point out, but there are, you can see sort of a bit of a star point there and down here. And that's been marked because uh, um, Olaf, is, he's uh, got a YouTube channel, Olaf the Sverker, he was getting the old maps of this area and overlaying them on Google Earth. And then, you know, the old maps would show where these stars were. And then he would, he would you know, overlay the map. And he'd find, in a lot of um, circumstances, these um, old stars. Because, I mean, you know, otherwise, imagine just randomly trying to search for this stuff. Because, look, here's another one, right? Look at that imprint in the ground. I'll just wait for it to buffer a bit. But you can, you can still see this star. And it looks like there was a bit here they couldn't get rid of. It's still sticking out the ground. 
But again, they've just put a farm over the top of it. You know, and there's all these other, you know, interesting, you know, circles and bits and pieces in the ground as well. And of and, course, and always, you know, next to waterways and things. Everybody can hear and the Some of them right? do have like fortress names and histories. But uh, as we go through and uh, we've discovered and Olaf has discovered, especially as it gets into Russia uh, on the other side of Ukraine, that there's not even official histories for lots of these forts along this wall. Mm. You can see this one was obviously the foundations were a bit too big and a bit too high, so they've just gone around it. Um, but you can see, we can see a bit more in this one. We can see this point below it, which is called a cavalier. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure it's a cavalier. And if they're attached to the fort, they're called bastions. Um, you know, this is all obviously talk about when they're war. Um, but another thing, you know, a lot of these forts, um, you know, the army and the armed forces, they call them batteries. Right? Then, of course, all the troops come out and charge. So, you know, we think there's a lot hidden in the language as well as far as what, you know, what the function of these things were. But if we come down here, we'll start to see this wall that just appears out of the landscape and the same features. We get these, um, you know, we'll call them bastions, these, you know, pointy, um, spear tips, also pedals, the same kind of stuff that we see pedals. here. Pedal, yeah. Pedals is probably better. That's what Olaf is calling them. You know, pedals is much nicer, right? Much, much um, and less. They're the uh, exact violent. same shape and wall as, for instance, uh, the map that we showed of New York City, the Wall Street, that wall. This is the same yeah. identical infrastructure pedal bastion. Uh, wall that is wall street yet it's the other side of the world and no real official history of wall itself was or when it was built oh did we just lose bernie okay so the, oh, I, i've got my camera yeah. off just to try to preserve bandwidth oh you keep cutting out a bit there okay so we're going we're just following this wall um, now if google would be nice you'll see so here we get these pointy bits along this wall and there there's another one there they seem to be pretty equidistant and like bernie was saying these are the exact same features we see um in all the star cities and we saw in that picture of new york uh, on wall's point was, was this exact same kind of wall. And we don't even know, you know, why they have these, um, you know, bastions, these pointy bits, but they're, they're everywhere, they're equidistant along all the old structures. And this wall, and you can see how old it is, you know, there's literally just remnants of it left. You can still see it, there's another pointy bit. And there, and there's a big one, which probably means there's a star close by. Um, and it just keeps going always close to water um, and then up here see it starts again there's another pointy bit so um, again like Bernie was saying that there's no narrative at all as to who built this you know and and this thing is a massive massive construction uh, still going down here you can see another pointy bit down here Oh, and look, there we have another star fort, <laughs> a star just sitting in the middle of nowhere, right? And again, um, they've had to go around this one rather than covering it up because the base is obviously too big. So you can see that there's a connection between these walls, these stars, and as I've been mentioning, they're always close to water. Now, you can kind of see the remnants of the water here. This, this place as well um, has been bombed. It's been carpet bombed. You can see, like, if we go down to places like... Uh, it's probably not the best one, but in some areas, it's literally just pitted with um, with holes. But you can see all the markers for this wall. It just just keeps going and going. Um, and here's another star, right? Just consistent. Not, no narrative as to who built these stars. Mm. So it's, it's and, and like um, we've been saying, this is the same stuff that you can find in you know the Americas, in Africa, in Europe, you know, it, it's the same 
stuff. That's why we keep saying it's it's built by the same civilization, right? Like there's a bit of the wall there you can see. It's just, and, and you know, we sort of spent, you know, I don't know, three or four hours doing this, but uh, with more time, um, we're pretty sure that this would map right across because when I pull out, the same stuff is up here. So no doubt this system goes, I mean, and no doubt it just spreads out and goes everywhere, I would think. Um, but up here, you know, we see these same canals and these same, you know, star forts and things up in, what's this? Is this the Baltic Sea? Yeah, this is just this off of the Baltic Sea. the Sea of Tartaria, didn't it? Right behind. Oh, that's uh, the Baltic there, yeah. Yeah, is that either St. Petersburg? Yeah, behind St. Petersburg. But so this canal system through St. Petersburg actually goes through the rivers, connects to to Moscow. All right, I paused it there. I'm, I'm seeing your comments and requests. I will be posting all the links for Gerald's channel for this video and everybody else's. Uh, I'm just going to finally run uh, to the washroom quickly as uh, we wait for everyone else to get back. There's about five minutes left in uh, this current video, and then we will uh, take it to the next topic. Uh, love you all, and Enjoy the rest of this clip. Then goes south all the way down to where we were uh, going through uh, the Black Sea and Azov Sea and the Dnieper system there. And right yeah. there, that's a prime yeah, example it, of uh, an old star. Exactly the that entire coast and it's yeah. And this is an interesting one. I, I think this is probably partly because of, um, you know, water levels rising. It's this canal. It's right on the coast. And, and surely and some of the canals are newer developments and newer infrastructure, but it's that when uh, there just has to be comparative research of bringing up all of the old maps, sourcing them, and you'll be shocked at how many times there's actually even more uh, canals in the ancient older maps than even do exist today and you end up finding dried up uh, ones and everything. It's just mind boggling mm. each time we go in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, you know, some of this is new and some of, you know, they've done, you know, some retro work and that, but but the old system itself is, you know, is definitely um, old world because, you know, it's not complete, you know, it, it sort of it goes along, then you find some covered up bits and, and then it just sort of pops out somewhere else. But they obviously, you know, are tying into it, you know, where they can use it. But I mean, it's, so yeah, this is, look, if you look at this area, if you Google Lettuce, I mean, you can sort of see, it just looks like it's been decimated by something. Like the landscapes you see out here, they're just very strange. Not that Google's been very helpful. Uh, and there's this, He's just like pitted with holes and stuff like down here. You see all these just sort of random kind of holes and they're just sort of everywhere. So it looks like this whole place was literally bombed out. You know, look, I mean, look at this landscape, all these. Yeah. Right, and it's, it's very strange. Like uh, Alaska and the Yukon as well, and then all of uh, the Siberian coast. And they claim that it's from this glacial uh, ice scarring. But when you go into these, some of these ancient maps that we'll go through at the end here of Tartaria um, in the east, northeastern Siberia, any uh, former civilization, yet you'll see these castles and these cities all marked on these rivers and stuff. And then when you go through on Google Earth, it just looks like these massively blown out, bombed out uh, former ruins and war zones. It really does. And Google's not eyeing on that. Let's have a look. But this kind of stuff, just these kind of random, you know, holes everywhere. Um, it's just all over this region, but also these lines in the ground. I mean, that could be a road, but look at this. This looks like a big foundation of some kind of big building and even when we come in on these cities we get this this look where they all kind of splay out from a centerpiece 
And that's another thing is all the cities, they seem to be laid out in the same way. There you go. So make sure you subscribe, share this around, guys. Stay awesome, and we'll talk to you all. Next upload. Bye for now. Every city, please. Estonia. And that it's... Mm -hmm. A this canal system literally from where we are right here in the Black Sea, the Azov Sea at the edge of Ukraine, uh, travels the entire uh, Euro European continent, I guess, um, connecting the Baltic to the Black Sea. And who built it and when? It just boggles the mind. It's ridiculous. This one. As you can see, like all dead straight, but it just goes on forever. And it, they they enter. Oh, come on, Google. They enter lakes often, um, and different sort of water features, and then they just pop out the other side and keep going. Oh, come on, Google. It's not being nice, but you can see it coming all the way down here, uh, and it just keeps going. And this, when you look at it, this is uh, this is a massive um infrastructure you know it's huge the amount of territory it covers and they're just going you know winding through all this farmland nothing around them and as you can see here they have these lakes and they'll come in one side down here and then they just pop out the other side so this was a fully integrated system you know of water and of, you know you know, we don't know, but we think that the water was something to do with, you know, the um, the power, the electricity or something, or at least, you know, the frequency, you know, obviously water whole, you know, is current, right? But Just like electricity, the, but the you see them connected the up with the stars. Trade too, right? That, that they had these full of water highways across the entire world that they had built at a time that they shouldn't have been able to even measure the ground to be uh, stable to do this. It's crazy. It is. Now look at this. So this is, can you see the imprint here of this star in the ground? Uh, hi, and clearly, yeah. we have the imprint of another star. Just so everybody knows, um, so when I'm typing in chat, it's putting what and... I'm saying. So Dutch this sense has just been leveled as just being said by on the top of it, everybody, including burning and Zertus and a bunch of other people. I don't know why it's doing that, but through. just so you know, they're not, and, and there's more along this. They're not line. So typing what I'm typing. How old that is. It's like we're not all typing anymore. the same thing at once. Just right. letting and everybody know that. Along, I don't know why. There's a wall it's doing that. That, that connects all these that goes along next to this man made canal system. So, you know, we're finding all this stuff and it's all connected. Here's another one, right? Uh, this imprint of this star and they've just built a farm over it but that's clearly a star you know what they want us to think is a star fort just the foundations of it and if we come back we'll i mean you can see there's a line of stars here and, um, but there's we'll get into the this wall as well yeah so this is what we dubbed the great wall of tartaria and that um, we'll be getting Olaf, the Sverker um, channel, Olaf, to come on with us to do a full uh, presentation of uh, it, where it begins in the Black Sea across all of the Ukraine and then across all of Siberia into the uh, Russian Arctic Ocean. And uh, this is just a segment of it off of the Dnieper River uh, in the middle of Ukraine. And you'll see, I mean, this, this one, you know, is very, very hard to sort of point out, but there are, you can see sort of a bit of a star point there and down here. And that's been marked because uh, um, Olaf, this, he's uh, got a YouTube channel, Olaf the Sverker, he was getting the old maps of this area and overlaying them on Google Earth. And then, you know, the old maps would show where these stars were, and then he would, he would, you know, overlay the map, and he'd find in a lot of um, circumstances these um, old stars. Because I mean, you know, otherwise, imagine just randomly trying to search for this stuff. Because look, here's another one, right? Look at that imprint in the ground. Uh, I'll just wait for it to buffer a bit, but you can you can still see this star, and it looks like there was a bit here they couldn't get rid of. 
it's still sticking out the ground. But again, they've just put a farm over the top of it. You know, and there's all these other, you know, interesting, you know, circles and bits and pieces in the ground as well. And of uh, course, and always, you know, next to waterways and things. And some of them do have like fortress names and histories. But as we go through and uh, we've just, Olaf has discovered, especially as it gets into Russia uh, on the other side of Ukraine, that there's not even official histories for lots of these forts along this wall. So they've just gone around it. Um, but you can see, we can see a bit more in this one. We can see this point below it, which is called a cavalier. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure it's a cavalier. And if they're attached to the fort, they're called bastions. Um, you know, this is all obviously talk about when they're war. Um, but another thing, you know, a lot of these forts, um, you know, the army and the armed forces, they call them batteries, right? Batteries. And then, of course, all the troops come out and charge. So, you know, we think there's a lot hidden in the language as well as far as what the function of these things were. But if we come down here, we'll start to see this wall that just appears out of the landscape and the same features. We get these, um, you know, we'll call them bastions, these, you know, pointy um, spear tips. Also pedals. The same kind of stuff that we see pedals. here. Pedal, yeah. Pedals is probably better. That's what uh, Olaf is calling them. You know, pedals is much nicer, right? Much, much um, and less They're the uh, exact violent. same shape and wall as, for instance, uh, the map that we showed of New York City, the Wall Street, that wall. This is the same yep. identical infrastructure pedal bastion uh, wall that is Wall Street, yet it's the other side of the world and no real official history of what the wall itself was or when it was built. Oh, did we just lose Bernie? Okay, uh, so... The Oh, I, I've got my camera yeah. off just to try to preserve no, bandwidth. We just regained Bernie, and Bernie's been posting the links in the uh, live chat for everybody. We got Campbell back. We got Dutch Sense and Jill. We're all here. All right. What did you guys think of that one? Catch a little bit of that? I could go on for two hours on everything that you guys said there i mean the the, the giant wall uh, the wall with the star uh, star forts along it uh, reminds me of the 1400 mile long uh, islands out in the pacific that they're spaced just like that along a giant what i would think would be wall but ancient absolutely ancient oh, well, well, yeah we'll have to measure that the, the uh, distance between those bastions and because it's probably all based on like an ancient cubit length or something. Just different ratios. Right, right. Like the 1400 mile thing is really I weird. I bet it'll be exactly... divisible. It'll be divisible and like scale perfectly ratio with that 1400 mm. mile and 666 uh, mile or kilometer one that you're getting. It guaranteed it will scale into it. Oh, you're muted again. And of course, 666 oh, is yeah, 18. 666, uh, with, you know, 180, oh, it was 1400, wasn't it? 180 was the tune, wasn't it? That's right, the frequency. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with the 666 on the Antarctica, but that fits with the astronaut guy who said it was the most evil place that he had ever seen or something. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, all right. Right. it's getting a little weird, you know. But, um, you know, we were talking about this, the Star Ford things, and I wanted to show you something that you might not know about that's in New York City. Yes, and please. And most people... Most people just kind of gloss it over and ignore. Here we are in the Bronx, okay? And I'll, I'll zoom it out so we can see where we are in the Bronx. Yeah, you know, as you would imagine, big projects, you know, huge brick structures. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Eternia around, and we're going to look at what the, the projects are built on top of. Okay. Now, okay, yeah. so <laughs> the projects are built on top of what's called Fort Tryon. And we're told that this is the old oh, English fort that fort. used to exist that was here, but it's not. It's huge. It goes on for wow. 10, no. 10 miles. And they, those they apartment look. complexes are built on the foundation walls of that star fort. Like, look at that. Yeah, right you can see it. Are, you saying, are, 
Have you seen the pictures of um, the Bronx in like the sixties and seventies? Yeah, the oh, crumbling how Bronx. It is. They yeah, got yeah. destroyed, completely destroyed. Is oh look, they blurred it out. It? They literally blur out the parts, and then wow. the, the wow. parts that are closer are most likely a new facade. And the dual word amazing. meaning of facade, it's hilarious how when uh, oh, it was God. the new found land, reclaimed land, and they refacaded uh, all of the architecture, these old world castles look, and stuff. Look at this. Yeah. Your, your mind's going to be... Look at this. This is what the, the new um, buildings are built on top of. This, That's which insane. goes... This is, yeah, again, I can't believe it. Now, you're not going to believe it, but there's old brick buildings that are on top of the the Star Fort that are built new brick buildings on top of the old brick buildings that yeah, were there. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. even before, there's brick, there's the Fort Tryon or whatever it's called, and that's a load of crap. It's not Fort Tryon. Now, I'm going through here, and as I'm going through, I found hidden structures that New York has deliberately hidden. And they've allowed ivy and other things to grow over what were there, yeah. which are giant megalithic stones of massive proportion. Now, I'm going to back it out and show you where we are in New York in case you're familiar with New York. Let's bring this back due north. There's Fort yeah, Tryon. Fort Tryon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're going to go along the mm -hmm. highway right here and we'll show you what's really there. This is mind-blowing. This They've video. allowed ivy to grow up on the old walls that are here. And they, they are old walls that are here. And some of them, they it started to collapse. They had to come in and clear out all the ivy to fix the wall from it collapsing and everything sliding out from underneath. Oh, oh and God. this is this is what's there. Now, up on top of here are a bunch of old brick. See these? These brick buildings here? Oh, wow. All yeah. of these, they have castle tops on them. Every one of these. Sorry, I got to stop you for one sec, Dutch. The castle parts and that you see it's like that cobblestone wall of amalgamation and that that is castle. So that's still old world, but that's like the newer, newest the newer world, old world, the crappier <laughs> facade it's of a the it's old world. Like and yeah. that's guaranteed below that is then the geopolymer layer, layers of the uh, base foundation of these structures on the macro scale from uh, probably the Atlantean, Lemurian, or uh, giant ages, or in modern science, we call it the Young Gadryas event or the time before the last ice age, a.k.a. 12,000 years ago, a.k.a. as Graham Hancock points out in all the work of uh, Randall Carlson with him, of how the oceans actually rose 400 feet in only a matter of a couple of years at that period in time and that it was a massive catastrophe and that uh, what we dub mud flood in uh, this research community is that there's all of these cathedrals and leftover mega structure buildings that uh, are found and that uh, nowadays when they're renovated they dig up and dig below the foundations and that there's buried layers of even larger entrances of windows that are covered by like tens of feet, like a couple of stories lots of the time. And that these aren't the bottom layers with these windows and bigger doors that have been covered for mud the entire time aren't even included in the original blueprints and schematics no. and architectural drawings of these no. refound, reclaimed robber baron facaded. I uh buildings and architecture yeah they didn't build any foundations man it was just all old buildings this was already here they built this house on top of it an art deco house on top of this old what looks like an old bridge footing now oh, yeah, when you look at that old bridge that's massive but here's the current new bridge the brooklyn bridge so there was an old bridge that extended off of this above the bay and harbor that went all the way across and they tell us that's an Art Deco house. Now, this is the mind blower that nobody's going to believe. See these big, massive structures up here, these big apartment complex? They're housing yeah. projects for the Brooklyn. Yeah. For Brooklyn. Um, these are called the Castle, Castle Point Housing Projects, and they're built with the bricks of the old castle that was here. 
<laughs> right? The word spell again, the root words. D, D Nico um, pointing out foundation. The look how foundation. many there are. Okay, so they there was an old castle that they said was built in the 1920s by a, a baron of some kind, some guy's name. And they said that they he tore down his castle and built all these housing projects for the poor people because he was concerned about the poor. And so these these structures here with these castle tops are built from the bricks of the old brick castle that was up here that they said wow. that they tore down to build wow. those places. Right? Wow. And that's so, just like you know. Egypt where they claimed uh, or they uh, documented that uh, they took uh, all the stones from several pyramids mm. down and deconstructed it and mm. uh, uh, destroyed, removing several even larger pyramids. Now we've found, uh, shout out Ancient Historia channel, Luke. Uh, Michael, you met him last time, uh, our first stream. He was with us, uh, the young gay fellow. But well, uh, I mean... Paul Cook's finding this as well with where, where they're reusing and he's also finding where they're, they're cutting up the bigger blocks into smaller ones and that's what they're building, you know, the newer stuff with. So it's all just, you know, that, that's, that's that saying, right? We're standing on the shoulders of giants, but but literally we're building on their, on their foundations. We're parts of them anyway. Right, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, Luke found in, on the Nile this Nazra where the waterfalls of the Nile used to be. Now there's a giant dam and lake there. And mm. that, in fact, in all the old maps from the 1600s and all the ancient Greek testimonies of the area and their maps, right at this waterfall below it, that there was even larger pyramids than the Giza pyramids, and they were at the steeper angle like the Nubian pyramids further up at uh, yeah. the beginning of the Nile there in Ethiopia, Sudan, but that uh, the tallest one was 1,400 feet tall. Uh, wow. As so tall as the tall as, yeah, the, that's um, a mountain. That's a, a thousand foot's a mountain. So as yeah, tall as the Empire State was, Building, it was. Yeah, the and, Empire um, State Building. Fences, and then we but, went but also, and checked it. And we pulled up Google Earth, and we checked the spot right where the below where the waterfall would have been, and then now it's covered by a lake. But uh, where that fourteen hundred foot pyramid <laughs> was, uh, there was a giant. Uh, stone quarry it was one of the main quarries now the right where all. all the ancient maps and pictures depicted this mm. 1400 foot pyramid but, is now and speak of the devil welcome yeah. Luke. The the other thing is, they changed, um, mm, so they that changed the, the course of the nile and so what you were saying before gerald about um water needing to be on you know to rise up to set them off if they change the course of the nile then they they, they take the water the current right away from it and turn it they all off shut, they would shut down the negative aspect of how that electrical circuit runs my mm. question was it that nubian pyramid 1400 foot high not a question more of a, a statement that's a built at 76 Point three four five degrees angle that would make it that would make it an antenna almost like cell phone towers today in fact i kind of yeah. wonder if cell phone towers are built at that same angle yeah i've heard it's that important. it's yeah. important and there's also all that um research that the russians did on the pyramids with the different angles at the top and they were like yeah uh, I, 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 actually, that. <laughs> I have really? some uh, research on that and different angles of pyramids and the degrees and what they do and what parts of the, the body it heals and very interesting mm -hmm. stuff pyramids are amazing shape power i guess you'd call it there's a little more to it than that don't get me wrong that's more of a subtle energy but uh yeah mm -hmm. very interesting the numbers patterns right like the golden ratio the uh, Fibonacci sequence, oh, and hard. Mike pointed out there that it's 1,400 again, that 1,400 feet, uh, just like the 1,400 yeah, miles. Yeah, right. Islands. Yeah. Well, an antenna is what, 1,725 feet? So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Is that so not then, what it is? I, I got to show this part in correlation. This is the Grand it, Canyon topographical really map. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I just did want to interrupt you. Sorry, bro. Oh, okay. Hello, Luke. 
Welcome, Luke Ancient Astoria. So yeah, the, this is uh, two topographical maps of the main uh, pyramid complex section of the Grand Canyon where King Cat Cade's discovery was reported and where uh, this Isis temple is. This is the closest uh, one of the 50 pyramid marked temples uh, that anybody can see or walk up to access. Uh, not a lot of people know uh, that this entire area of the Grand Canyon is not just a no-fly zone 24-7, uh, 12 months of the year, uh, that they actually have active denial systems for drones there. Our shout out to our good friend Rex Bear at Leak Project. Uh, he's gone there a couple times and he has it on camera where he had his drone going over trying to explore it and then all of a sudden just boom they, they crashed it they freaking fried it well, and then I was just there after the uh, on video that he has it filmed and it's on his channel of the Apache helicopter coming up from yeah. out of the canyon and like they were chased out by an Apache helicopter and they were just on the edge of the Grand Canyon of the main site. Well, that you can look out to here and see. What if it's a no-fly zone because it's still producing electricity and it, and it's stu it's stuff. It was the actual area that that sank the drone because it's stuffed with the electrics. That, that's that's sure. possible. And why that is there would a military? Why the the uh, compasses always start spinning in certain areas around these places? There you go. It's in operation then, because yeah. I'll tell you this: my all the research I've done in the coils I build, they make my compasses spin or I can direct at what pole goes where. If I want the south pole on the bottom, I can do that. Or I can make it continuously spin. So that's when it's operating in like a vortex. And that's exactly what a pyramid does. It's torsion mechanics. It builds a torsion field above at the top of the pyramid itself. So if it is still operating and you're absolutely right. A drone in the wrong spot caught that wave, be gone. Well, uh, the, the drone actually uh, crashing, uh, Rex believes, and there's more cases of this, that it's actually the Park Rangers National Guard uh, and was probably a, a active denial drone unit on the Apache helicopter that he filmed a few minutes later that crashed it and that, like, it they straight hijacked it and then like intentionally destroyed it like where they accelerated it into the cliff sort of thing as soon as they got it uh this is one of the geoglyphs or uh yeah ge i think this is a geoglyph or earthen work whatever yeah, you want to call it yeah, yeah. of uh nazca peru the same mm. area uh dutch that you were showing the Kara or the nazca or yeah, it was Nazca Peru skulls, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so this wow. is uh, from the hill mountain there, which is now desert mm. down to the ocean. So this is a couple hundred feet, I believe. And it's uh, been there. They say it's thousands of years, just as old as the rest of the Nazca lines. So this is clearly a fractal ray antenna of uh, I was just, sorts. I was just pretty, about to say. Yeah, sorry, right. go ahead. Straight fractal ray antenna, and it has very similar geometries to the under ocean uh, structures that uh, you were showing at. Uh, mm. the it looks yeah, like that's that's the Titan Trident. Yeah. Well, good to apologize to everyone, by the way. I'm going to sound really nasally because I've just come out of surgery like two hours ago. Out of surgery? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It's like a. I should still be at hospital, actually. But oh, that's why, that's why yeah, uh, Luke's not showing his face. So, yeah, enough. yeah, no, I, yeah, it's all, it's all done up. Well, yeah, but, it uh, wasn't anything to do with the other stream the other night, was it? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't, I didn't overdo it. No, I had a <laughs> had a nose surgery planned for today, and had it, it was done. a cosmetic <laughs> plan. Yeah, right it's, it's not, it's not cosmetic. It's, uh, it's quite functional. Come oh, on, you just, you're trying to look like David Beckham, aren't you? Oh, I'm, I'm going to come on tomorrow with yeah, a completely different nose. But yeah, no, it's, it's quite quite awful because at least in England, right? You know, they, they kind of let you go. They're like, sign this form and you can leave, and you could have an axe in your head, and they'd be like, sign the form. It's not our problem. 
So as long as you sign the form, you're all right. So this this rule was like, you know, you got to stay until like five. And I was like, five? Give me the form. <laughs> sign the form. <laughs> pulled the cannula out my arm. They're like, you can't do that. It's like, yes, I can. I've I signed the did. form. <laughs> <laughs> I've signed the form. You're no I'm longer liable. The walking out, like covering my own blood, like, see you later, bitches. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> It was uh, uh, so it was well. Good. If you, I might have to go, join. guys. It's almost midnight here, and uh, hitting ten or oh, three hours. Fair enough, good Campbell. So I did you want guys to just can finish feel covering. free to keep going if you want to keep going. Okay. Uh, so so could, could I to... address one thing that everybody before anybody goes? Because there's going to be a lot of people when I play this back on my channel or whatever, and they will they will address it and and bring up the famous excuse that everyone brings up when we're seeing a lot of this stuff, which is they try to say it's paradelia, which is they try, people try to say that we're seeing shapes and things and that we're not really seeing anything and that blah, blah, blah doesn't mean anything. But I would bring back up what we started talking about at the start of this whole thing, which is the military bases in the middle Sorry. of each one. Sorry. And God, uh, before you continue on with that and addressing exactly what you're talking about, these topographical maps of the pyramids there. So topographical map means the lowest part is this river, the base, and then the highest point is the peaks. And each of the peaks are these uh, exact pyramids and temples that are literally called Isis temple, Hindu temple, uh, Ra temple, and so forth. But that uh, they <coughs> perfectly align up the peaks of each of those pyramid temples in the Grand Canyon perfectly align up to each star in the Orion constellation in the sky, as well as the other major stars in the Persinity sky of the Orion constellation, so that there's uh, not just it, but even more, and that uh, it's perfect proportion, star for star, or star for peak, over 30 stars and peaks of these... Uh, pyramid temple structures there so that if you're trying to claim pareidolia oh. or some coincidence it's come back Bernie. absolutely the connection oh, lords have spoken Dutch losing, your, losing your, bit of, <laughs> your finale there bernie but that yeah this is proving that that it's not pareidolia right that that is an exact representation of what we see in the sky so you know not seeing things all right go dutch bernie seems to have done a bolt there's there's a graphic that the bernie has on the screen the the showing the overlay of the constellation and people you know again they do they try to say that we're seeing things but it can't be that it is that it, it can't be that it's just us seeing something. I'm going to prove that paradelia is used by the most elite, occult, high end people in our current society, and that they use paradelia. I'm going to show it to you right now and prove it to you. Here's North America. We zoom in on North America. Here's the Colorado Rocky Mountains, and the Colorado Rocky Mountains. If you image? zoom in on them, do you guys see this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is the shape. If you look at right, it, I'm going to tell you what shape to see. It's a bucking horse shape, okay, where it's got two oh, hooves on the front okay. and yeah, the bucking yeah, horse, yeah, yeah. and it's got this weird mane on the back that's spiked. Now, I'm going to yeah. zoom in on what would be the eye, and you've got Estes Lake up at the highest point of Colorado of the eye of the horse. Now, to prove that this is not me seeing something that this is actually a shape that's there the eye of the horse is looking down upon the famous swastika shaped denver airport and <laughs> at the and at the denver airport when you're driving out of the denver airport oh, there is the very famous and let me see if i can find it on here the denver airport horse and uh, let me done something bring really it done. in at, at uh, ground uh, level here. Really, mate, we, we can't see what you put because Birdie's... Uh, Birdie, what have you hit? Oh, there. Okay. Okay, uh, okay. And <laughs> at the Denver airport is the famous Denver airport horse. 
Denver Airport horse. There it is. The blue Mustang. They call him Blucifer. Now, the reason they call him Blucifer isn't because it's a bucking Bronco for like the Denver Broncos. He's the same color as the mountains appear at a distance, and he's got a very specific shape to him. He's got the spiked mane and glowing red eyes, and now we can go in and see it at a ground level. They've gone up, and you can see at picture level if we do this. Blucifer is a giant blue horse, the color of the mountains at a distance, and he's got the glowing red eyes, but the back of his of his head is the mane that the I just showed you. intentionally made Blucifer. Yes. The intentionally made Blucifer here at the swastika shaped airport. The, the horse in the mountains itself. Like Now there's a guy riding on the so horse. Effed up. Like, w -W -W there's the huge underground uh, part of that place and that they intentionally made it a demonic uh, Blue yeah, that's the one like that had three horsemen coming in with the yeah. apocalypse. Oh, yeah, the three horsemen. horsemen. Right. Yeah, because it had the big mural in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, the apocalypse ties in with this because the guy riding on the back of the green or blue horse, depending on which one you want to go with, it looks, if you, it's paradealing now. We're parad we're, we're straight up paradealing on purpose that this is the bucking horse. The bucking horse is looking at the bucking horse and on his back is riding a guy in a cloak that looks like he's got a beard up here. And this is Yellowstone up here. The head of the horseman of the apocalypse that's riding on, it looks like he's got a cloak and he's over, this is his head. This is his nose and his eyes. You heard it here, folks. Yellowstone is going to erupt. Well, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, that this is paradelia. This is paradelia. first. And to prove the, that they're using paradelia now, I'm going to show you one more example of it. There's a movie called Zardoz with Sean Connery. It's a very, very strange movie where Sean Connery is wearing this. What? Oh my and gosh. Sean Connery, the movie starts out and it says the gun is good and the male appendage is bad, but they don't say the male appendage. They say the P word. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get your stream banned. But Sean Connery plays a mutant in the future. And in the future, there's this giant head that lands and they pour grain into the mouth of the head. And then they, the head takes off and flies through an invisible barrier to an Illuminati base made of pure mirror pyramids. And there's people that are living forever in this Illuminati base, but they require food. And we sh they ship them humans and food as slaves and as food. This is in the movie. Now, the head of Zardoz. Why is it called Zardoz? In the movie, Sean Connery plays a enforcer for these people. And he's a, um, he finds a book out in a burned library. And it, the cover's been burned off. And most of the book has been burned away. But he still picks it up. And he teaches himself to read using this book. It's the Wizard of Oz. But it says Zardoz because part of the cover's burned off. And he teaches himself to read via the Wizard of Oz. Now, why does that matter? The head of Zardoz is in the shape of the North American plate itself. Now, to see it, first, let me show you the head. And they always show it at the same angle in the movie. It's this way. Now, I'm going to prove this to you because the movie's about the Wizard of Oz. Why does that matter? The head of Zardoz is in the North American plate where the two eyes of Zardoz are here and the mouth is right here. Now, to see it, you have to look a world away. And I'm going to prove it to you that they meant this. Because when I zoom in on the mouth of Zardoz, where they toss the grain into the mouth of Zardoz, first of all, let me ask you, do you see the outline of the head of Zardoz here with the two eyes and the mouth compared what? to oh, yeah. wow. the like, picture of Zardoz? Longer, like, it, it's like he's got oh, the beard. He's got the But now let me prove this to you, that this is real. When we zoom in on the mouth of Zardoz, where you toss in the grain in the movie, there's in Kansas is known for its grain. But when I zoom in on the spot where the mouth is, there's this place. And it's called, <gasps> We're not in Kansas anymore. Well, it's ironic you say that because this is called liberal Kansas where the Dorothy Museum is, where the house for Dorothy is. <laughs> there it is. Dorothy's house. Dorothy's house is there where it goes over the rainbow. You so now in the movie, Sean Connery goes over the rainbow and they built this oh, weird airbase here too. 
And then we've Sean got Connery the Rainbow goes Bridge. over the rainbow to go to Zardoz. And here is Zardoz in the middle of the mouth of Zardoz. But Zardoz is set into the North American plate in a paradelia like shape. It's, it can't, it's can't be changed. Uh, Having liberal Kansas and, and Dorothy's house, I didn't know that was going to be there. I saw this first. I saw this. I was just goofing around. I was super high, sitting there looking at the freaking screen, right, probably like somebody in the 1970s it, was doing. It. I was high. I was looking at the screen, and I said, hey, that looks like the head of Zardoz. That's weird. I wonder what's at the mouth. And I zoomed in on the mouth, and I see the liberal Kansas, and I knew that the Dorothy Museum was in liberal Kansas because I've driven through Kansas before. So I'm like, holy sh! You've got to be kidding me. You know, so, so what just said and then here, dots in the in the comments section. I just have to point out that Dorothy is dot. You know, dot is short for Dorothy. So quite literally this, connecting dots right now. Guys, it gets dog, it gets no. weirder. It gets more weird. This gets more weird. It, it, this is it doesn't the story doesn't end yet. So Dorothy, the the pavement of gold, the yellow brick road, right? Guess what is here next to the Dorothy Museum? They're built part of the same structure. The Coronado Museum. A tribute to Coronado. Coronado was the Spaniard searching for the lost city of gold and the fountain of youth. Now, get this. At the Coronado mm -hmm. Museum, they have a statue of Coronado. And he's, and he's dressed as a Spaniard wearing the full costume that Sean Connery wears in Highlander. Now, Sean Connery, oh, after, after Sean Connery was in Z Zardoz, a few years later, Sean Connery played Coronado's chief metallurgist. He hops over. Highlander and his wife are making out on the, on the, at a wall, like in the Middle Ages or something. And here comes Sean Connery over the wall on a horse and he's like hello i am sean connery i am uh, the chief spaniard now they're in scotland why isn't sean connery playing a scottish highlander to be fair sean connery no, no. always plays a scottish person even when right. he's on a russian submarine right, the right. Russian so you gotta, of the Red October. he's the chief metallurgist for coronado in the and movie, he announces that's... this in the movie so now they have the coronado museum right next to the Dorothy Museum. And then you've got Sean Connery playing Zardoz, who goes over the rainbow to go to the Illuminati base, where there's a secret underground Illuminati base where they're living forever. And here at this base, they just so happen to have every fighter jet known to man in a museum <laughs> stored, ready to fly. Really? Yeah. What? What in the middle of the mouth the of Zardoz, stuck with one of the shit planes. How many? This how is true parodily, though. This like is earthquakes. Like, have you noticed from that spot? Is that how like you uh, first became aware of it, or was it you said you drove through there? I I I knew about the Dorothy house because I had driven through there going out to Colorado. My wife and I make a southern turn and went down to Pueblo and then went up through the south and we stopped at the museum. But I didn't know about the head of Zardoz until I watched Zardoz. And, and then I didn't put any of it together until I'm sitting there one day looking at, well, <laughs> believe it or not, I was looking at radar on my local weather map here, which shows it much better even, believe it or not, than Google Earth, because it's a little bit low, more low resolution. And I'll just say it, I was a little high when I was looking at the map, but it, it was true paradelia that I saw it on here better, that I saw the head of Zardoz here with the two eyes and the mouth, and I zoomed in and I said, oh, wow, there's the mouth of Zardoz right there where Sean Connery jumped in. And then I zoomed in and I saw that the direct center of the mouth was liberal Kansas. And then I said, oh, shit, that's where Dorothy's house is. And then that means somebody in the 1970s was sitting there tripping on acid or something. And they were looking at the view and they saw this head here and they wrote a movie about it. Or, or there's some real, it's well real base known. there. There's like a real underground base there. That's why I'm asking about the earthquakes. Like, uh, I guess if they were expanding it or construction, you'd see a whole bunch of little ones. Like, uh, it, only if they were building now. Oh, there are. Built, right? Brother, like, there are. There are. That's, that's all. Bring that up. That's where the thousands of Oklahoma fracking earthquakes go right up to there and stop right there every day. For the last 12 years, I've been keeping watch. We started at the panhandle. Right stop right liberal. there. They stop, they stop right, right there. Or they start right there, actually, is a way to put it. Is that starting right there, we go so that maybe that would be the entrance to the base there. 
and yeah, it would go down below all of Oklahoma. That there's not the consistent land, and the waves are like there's, it's a different medium there, so it most likely is an air gap instead of a solid or uh, liquid for those waves to continue through, especially them being seismic waves. That isn't that pretty much like direct evidence that there is a giant cavern in that spot that the waves stop or start there, the earthquakes? It could be. It would make a lot of sense if there was open areas for it to travel through uh, or around. And the big one that I found that I showed you at the start of the update, it points right into his mouth. So like this thing really points down into the mouth of Zardoz, the one that I showed you that goes all the way through the mouth of Zardoz down to our weird underwater base that's down here that looks like the lines in Nazca, Peru. But this is mm. 5,000 feet under the ocean. So this right here is 5,000 feet down in the ocean, but it connects back into this one that goes back up through the mouth of Zardoz right to our arrow. And Dorothy's house is right in the middle of it, which is really odd. Somebody's got, somebody's got to know. Well, I mean, that could be a, an antenna going uh, literally underneath, you know, the USA, right? It could be. Yeah. Yep. Or tunnel. So... Uh, these guys, the which I'm going to explore on uh, boots on the ground in May here as the snow melts in Canada, but uh, the famous uh, indigenous Western Plains warrior, uh, as well as the in the same uh, Badlands Valleys hill area, there's uh, this guy, the uh, Aztec Mayan feather serpent helmet warrior, and that uh, I also believe. Uh, to the top of the warrior's head here on the top uh, eastern right is another Olmex face, as well as uh, what looks like a Viking head on the very uh, top of the warrior's forehead and crown of his head here. But that uh, the Faram Foundation has gotten extra evidence of the purpose of all of these massive earthenworks and the evidence that it's not just pareidolia. You see these numbers here, these different sites around the valley in uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta, and that they are in fact what he's deciphered as geoglyphs or these radial earthenwork geoglyphs. You can see these lines, these straight lines going the same uh, direction as these arrows that he's marked out. And that, in fact, that these are earthen works of megalithic stone or earthen soil that is raised above the ground and that uh, mark specific lengths and angles that uh, then plot out as these uh, different radials from these sites that when you take the exact angle and its length and put it on, that it gives you uh, times his uh, mathematic equation that I... Need to find the time to actually read the chapter to get what it is so I can confirm all of this. But point being, it plots out to specific geographic uh, locations across the world and all the other ancient sites. And that uh, that pretty much also confirms that uh, all of these massive seen from above um, terraforming structures were for uh, mapping and uh keeping track of territories now, you know? can, I throw, can i throw out some food for thought on that um i hear whispers now take this with, with a grain of salt of course maybe even a whole bag of salt but i hear whispers that there's tunnels that are underneath those geoglyphs and the connections that you made on the topographical maps are actually tunnel connections between point a and point b so as you go deeper down the connection itself is actually closer between point A and point B if we're on a spear. It's interesting thought. We'd love to find out. Indeed. So uh, apparently with plotting these out, uh, you need both flat maps and the globe. Uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty interesting that you need both for the system to work. And when it comes to flat versus spherical round, that uh, mathematically neither can be proven wrong. They're both accurate to the point that whether it's heliocentric or, sorry, what's the other term for it? The second one, heliocentric? Anyway, the two different, they both work and you can never uh, disprove uh, one or the other, thus both 
must exist simultaneously. And for this geoglyphology to work, uh, both also need to be plotted out uh, using a flat and uh, spherical uh, curved mappatures with it. Uh, and I here agree. you can see the lines. Uh, those are some of those uh, radials, those geoglyphic earthenworks that he uses. So that's going to be one of the main things that we're going to confirm uh, when we go explore this spot uh, in May this summer. And it's going to be a YouTube uh, meetup. So anyone Western Canada, Western US wants to come or any rich sponsors want to come to Southern Alberta Badlands for the heck of it. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a week here. Uh, this what looks like an ear pod or earbud uh, going up to his ear area is actually a gravel road and an oil derrick. So that's how large uh, from above this uh, picture is. And that you can see here that it's not, another way you know it's not pareidolia is that this is it from the fall. This is it in like the spring. But, uh, this is uh, regular or maybe, uh, anyways, throughout the different seasons so that the shadowing yeah. and the angles to capture these images, it's beyond uh, a shadow of a doubt, pardon the pun, that uh, to give the, the actual depth and features of this face and these faces uh, that you're seeing and that uh, it's impossible. And they claimed the same for the face on Mars that, oh, pareidolia, and it didn't look like it, when in fact, if you actually do a deep dive into all of the official pictures released, whatever the heck it is up there, that uh, when you give them scrutiny, uh, Richard Hoagland's work, shout out to him, showing that there was from different angles at different times of year, and once again, it would still create the features that show that uh, these are indeed faces and depicting different things, just like Dutch, you found all of the geoglyphs down there in Florida of the iguana, as well as the different buffalo and shapes. Uh, was that in Idaho or where was that one you found? And you muted Dutch. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I found the geoglyphs of several of them. Um, the ones up in Idaho, they had turned the area into, it was a war fought over the location. Hog farmers had started bringing their hogs in the early 1800s onto this sacred land for the uh, Native Americans up in Idaho. Anyway, um, found that earthquake struck below it. And I zoomed in on it. I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. What is this? People told me first it must be farmers paying tribute to the Native Americans by carving the shapes in. And now, of course, it's a slam dunk. It's a, a Native American site that was... Uh, turned into a marshland and flooded every year by the government ever since they took it over and hid it. And, you know, this gets into something where this, we got to talk about it. I got to show it. I know we're, you know, we're going on what, like three hours now, but there's something that I, oh, good. yeah, there's some, something everybody needs to see, which is I'll bring it back over here. You're talking about geoglyphs and shapes and plates. And we get into the shape here again, here in the Midwest which is the giant star fort shape and in Missouri zooming in down here on the, uh, I, I, I hate to keep, you know, beating a dead horse on this, but the geo uh, spatial agency built in the middle of the star fort here in St. Louis. Now this star fort in St. Louis is marked here on the map. This is where the geospatial agency is being built right now. This is a map from 1796. Now the water flows out and it goes down to the river. This is fresh water, obviously flowing out and going over a, this is cliffs. I live here in St. Louis. These are cliffs that go up. There's a, a bluffs, if you will. And they got the, the waterfall I'm drawn. Sorry, I got to also there. point out that battery right there on the left, on the other side mm. of the above cliff, uh, on the other side there. There you go. Uh, the battery star forts, that that same battery shape, you're going to find them everywhere. And that it's the identical battery <laughs> the entire wall of uh, star forts that we showed earlier is made out of and that yeah. how is it over here in uh, St. Louis in the 1600s and then also a full wall of hundreds of them running thousands of kilometers across all of uh, Eurasia. I wonder, 
I wonder if they're attached through an aquifer of some way, shape, or form. Well, look what they, it is, it is. Look what's at the tip of this now. Up here at the tip of this now is the St. Louis water tower. <laughs> and so let me bring it in and show you. It's a giant old Tartarian Corinthian <laughs> column made of brick that's huge. Look at it. Oh, right? Okay, like, this is the water, this is the water. Yeah, and water tower at, at the tip of this. Oh, whoa, my Google Point Earth for just, point where that water smashed. starts here you're showing is literally where the area of where that water tower currently mm. is. And I think yeah. you said there was three or four of the water towers in that area originally. And yeah, this is there, the there's one two remaining. there. There's two huge ones and then a third one that they've built. And all three are at the pinnacle tip of it. I My Google Earth just crashed while I was trying to show you. I'll zoom back in on it again. Here we are in St. Louis. They have the geospatial agency being built in the center of this one. This was not disclosed to the public. They've hidden this. I had to find this myself and make everyone, including anthropologists here in the St. Louis region, aware of this. They built the X marks the spot housing project in the middle of it. And at the very tip of it is wow. the water tower. Side wow, by side. Wow, the X right in the middle. And then that and side the tower, by side. The white one looks really similar to the one that you find in Chicago, you know, near the World's Fair. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. And then look at this one. Yeah, identical, pretty much. And sorry, I got oh, a point no, out. No, this, like, one's got, this, one, showing... this one has spots to shoot out of. Well, how so, is like a water tower supposed to have spots to shoot out of? That makes zero that sense whatsoever. Yeah. It, this and, gets into, again, my Google Earth just crashed again as I was trying to show it to you. That's twice now. Okay, so I'm going to get to this. I have to show it to you. They built something down along the river where this fresh water flows to. And it ties in with what they're doing with the rest of these forts around the world. They built a sewage plant oh, to, yeah. take, to take all the sewage and trash. So yeah. here is the star fort. And right over here, here's the fresh water coming out. And here's our sewage treatment plant right yeah. here. Do you mind zooming yeah. in on, the, on, on the water. X yeah. building? Like the oh, X yeah, marks the spot. Is that an old world possible, like Tartarian esque, or was Not that yet. a new rebuild of it? And the they fact built this that... in the in the '60s. They came okay. in and built a housing project here, and so now they, they refurbished the outside of it, it to make it look nice. Remarked it, and then now they're repurposing, still using whatever energy thing that is with that geospatial thing there, right there in the center too. And that you showed uh, also that there's all the military forts in all of these spots and that Facebook data center. And now also this freaking geospatial unit. And they built a school, they built a school at the very pinnacle tip of it. That's been abandoned and it's for sale. You guys want to buy it? Yeah, we, should man. All pitch, we should all pitch that's our money that. in, buy this place and turn it into the School of Geophysics Studies of Tartarian Star Forts right next to the Geospatial Agency. It would be a slap in their face. Yeah, and that free, that. free energy, electrical engineering community. Right there. That's Water what the school is right there. Yeah, Absolutely. All these are dumps. These are all dumps that they built along here. So trash, recycling, turds, everything. Then, get this. An earthquake struck out on the West Coast last month out here in San Francisco. And it was a rare 5.0 in San Fran directly and they downgraded it, whatever, but it shook up everybody. And I zoomed in on the earthquake epicenter. Well, let me show you. Actually, a picture speaks a thousand words because I just showed you the trash dumps there and this matters. So an earthquake strikes here and I zoom in and I zoom in some more. I'm gonna turn off the place mark now just so you can see. This place is where the earthquake struck. And it doesn't look like much at first, but then I zoomed in some more and I, I said, whoa, wait, there's a satellite array in the middle of there. That must be why the earthquake hit there. Satellites at the center of this, this little valley. And I thought, what is this? And I turned on the place marks and it's a trash That's dump. A, it's yeah. a recycling center. Now, hold on. Yeah. Look, what and look at that cliff. That's a, that's a, that's like hold a on. natural speaker. Hold on, hold on. This, this is a star fort. Now, let me get a star fort picture open. There's our, there's our classic star fort shape, and it's here. Oh, and they built yeah, houses yeah. on one side and a satellite array and a trash dump in the middle. But now yeah, that you know no. to look for it, 
there it is. Yeah. It's there. It really is there. The, I measured it. It's perfect. It's the star fort on all sides, 250 feet going down, and it's 250 feet high. They built a satellite like array. It the, the beautiful metaphor for shitting on our history. Like, yeah, they are. They're literally track. shitting on the history. And it's it's that is in the, the hills itself. I can bring it in at an angle to show it to you. It really is there. It's an old bastion fort that's been carved out on one side. They put a satellite, a sa satellite array and a recycling center in the middle of it. And an earthquake struck below it, which is how I found it. And there it is. In right. San and Francisco how area. many of these sites that you discovered because of the earthquakes? That's the only know, reason you found so many of back. them. And that how many in a row do you need for it to be like, okay, this is absolute mathematical facts now. This is a system, a grid. It's undeniable. It's not pareidolia or coincidence. And welcome, Eric Hecker. Oh, oh, did we lose Hecker? He just and I have to go. go I'm, I'm dying very fast. Yeah, here. for much love. Twelve thirty. Midnight for twelve thirty. Nice to meet well, you, well, you well. Dutch. Nice to meet you, Gerald. Um, thanks, everyone. Have an awesome night, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye, bye, well, uh, Brother Campbell. And uh, Campbell. I hopefully, I believe uh, Eric will be right back. Eric's the uh, my friend, good guy that spent a year working at the South Pole. And uh, that you wow. had a couple questions or things you would like to discuss with there, Michael. Oh, All definitely right. the South Pole. My goodness, we got to talk about the earthquakes and the lack of reporting of earthquakes from down at the South Pole. But first, I guess, show please finish the last aspects of the star forts in St. Louis. And that you, I know there's a whole nother part that I keep interrupting you on that you really want to get out. So uh, but it's connecting to it because there's the the water tower, that original source of water in St. Louis that you see in that diamond shape of it that uh, was the original water moat or area of it that you see in the old photo, but that's supplying that water that's then running down into the river. And notice that shape there. And once again, how many coincidences do you need of geometry? No such thing as coincidence. Oh, exactly. The flowing water, and then right across the river, directly across, is the Cokia Mounds. So, Cokia please Mounds. share your screen again, Mike, because oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I interrupted you. Oh, oh, you're fine. You're fine. Let me get a display capture turned on. There we go. And over here in St. Louis, directly across the river from this giant star fort, right here. Here's the geospatial agency. Here's the outline in the road still. But we go right over here. Here's our racetrack and the Cokia Mounds. And let me turn on all our borders and labels and all that good stuff. And here's the Cahokia Mounds State Historic Site with all its big mounds. And they built train tracks and electrical lines right through the side of them. And the train tracks and electrical lines go down to the riverfront where we go right to the St. Louis Arch. And the St. Louis Arch is built on layers. In case you didn't know, it's built on a layer of coal at the bottom, just like the mounds that I showed you at the start of the update. And then on top of that clay and on top of that red clay, like what Paul's showing you over in um, the UK. Everywhere, the, pretty much. Is, right, is the right. Is like metal? Is it conductive? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, this the, the St. Louis Arch is um was built by a guy named cyril white he was the designer of it and if you look up cyril white his side project the thing that he was really interested during world war ii was weather modification and okay. so he designed the arch to actually be a full ring and we only see half of it and the other half he said foundationally goes down into the ground and makes it a full ring instead of an arch and then across the river they just built this they expanded the Gateway Arch Memorial to have the pool. Now, the pool and the phallus are something we should talk about at a separate time. You'll see it in Washington, D.C. You'll see the obelisk, which is shown, uh, an obelisk representing the phallus, yep. and then right next to it, a pool of flowing water. <laughs> and usually the pool of flowing water has suds and everything coming out of it. And they do that on purpose. That's, a, that's kind of an occult uh, thing going on there. But it has to do with geometry and flowing the frequency and stuff. It's not a cold. Oh, it. it. It's a massive yeah. front antenna array as well, those uh, the yeah. monoliths in those spots. 
not to mention the moving water just through electrostatics creates Char its own charging it. Circular weight. Yeah. And look where the river used to go. Right. The river used to go, it was directed over right next to the mounds. And we have closed that off. And the Star Fort used to flow fresh water down into the Mississippi. Now we put turds into it. Now you, you mentioned the quarries. On the north side of here is Fort Bellefontaine. Bell meaning good, fontaine meaning fountain. Fort Good Fountain is was here, but instead they've done this. You, I mean, I don't know if you see it on the screen. They've quarried it out, right? So quarried they, again. Yeah. Boom! Look at that. How big it's going, and it's like you'll literally yeah. find that. And deep down into the ground, like it's indented, inverted, deep, like a strip mine quarry at that point at, at most of these. And you'll see them all over uh, the place where in the old maps of the old world where these bigger star forts and citadel star fort uh, cities and places that were built up several stories. And now it's going several stories down into the ground and that they've reused all of that. Uh, stone to build the modern world it, it on, on the screen you, you see this on the screen here this is my house i've already been doxxed so uh it doesn't matter here's my uh here's my house there's my kayaks down at the the lake now right over the hill i found this now i'm going to compare this to this and what you're going to see is that this goes back to that, and it's another giant star fort right here next to my house, two miles away. Now, this has been hidden. I had to find this myself. I made anthropologists aware of this at University of Washington, uh, well, Washington University here in St. Louis and St. Louis University two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I made my video on this. Now, on the front end of this, at the very tip of this, right down here, is a radio tower. Okay? They put a radio tower and cell phone tower, big microwave tower. We have power line that goes right through the middle of it, and on the back side of it, a quarry. another quarry. Now, this is confirmed there. This isn't paradelia. This matches this one in St. Louis. This one's in North St. Louis, exactly 40 miles down to the foot to the east, due east. Wow. So one more time, 40 miles due east of here. We'll just go over, and we're at the Star Fort over in St. Louis. So this one is an ancient one. This is eight miles long. Now, guess what comes out? This starts at 800 feet. We're up here at 840 feet above sea level. And then we go down, 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 down to the river, the old Missouri River. Now, here's the one in St. Louis. I'll turn it back so it's proper oriented as it was made. So the one in St. Louis flows Next down, 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 starts about 800 feet above sea level and floats down to the river. The one I found over here by my house, this was built, guys, thousands of years ago. There's no way the French built this. This is eight miles long. It's overlooking the old remnants of the ancient Missouri River from back God knows how long ago. I had to find this myself in the topography, and every professional missed it. Now, guess what was built here? The old, See this big thing right here? This is nuclear radioactive stockpile from the Manhattan Project that was here. The Manhattan Project just so happened to build their nuclear processing facility for World War freaking II here at Defiance, Missouri, which is right here along this river right here, and at the Star Force. And they cordoned all this off and made this a giant government facility where now you can live here. But guess what? As a kid, I used to come out here and climb in the old radioactive silos and, uh, and go up to the top of the old uranium mills. I didn't know they were uranium mills at the time, but why did the U.S. government build another one of these radiological facilities there? Because I already showed them to you out here on the West Coast. We got our nuke test sites. We've got our nuclear bombers exactly. taken off in the, the middle same, of it. Same exact spot. Nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. Exact oh, and I didn't show you the nuclear on focal spots. the side of the Facebook data center. The Facebook data center and Apple data center on the right side, just like Area 51 and the nuke sites, all the way up here is the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility from the Manhattan Project. They're it's all on the sides of these star forts. 
it crazy. seems like an electrical circuit formula that's repeated over and over exactly and welcome eric we got eric hecker back welcome I good sir. Back. <laughs> had some technical difficulties before i apologize no worries can hear you loud and clear now brother good to excellent, have you excellent um, yeah, you, I was uh, enjoying you know the much? conversation before. I was just on the tail end of my work shift, so I did not catch at, as much as I wanted to, just bits and pieces. But it's been uh, fascinating, the work that you guys have been doing in Starports. Um, as, a, as a tradesman, I've always been eyeballing these structures as um, way beyond the descriptions of what we were given. It just what we were told doesn't make any sense. Exactly, right? Like, if they're just too complex and too much resources and, um, and yeah, just it's so unpractical and over the top and just ridiculous for the time period that they claim that they were needed uh, to, it just, it makes zero sense. that There has to be something yeah. so much more to it. And then when you get into fractal ray antennas and just fractals in general and uh, geometry, it all starts making a lot more sense. You, and, you know how long it would take us to move that amount of earth nowadays with all the massive heavy equipment that we have? I, I just look at those as job sites and I just try to imagine how these guys got this work done without the tools that I have available to me. It's like, you got to be kidding me. There's no way. It's like, I don't care what you pay me. And you're like, hey, grab a shovel, Eric, and go go help those guys out. Like, no way. No, no. I quit like it's immediately. Impossible. We're not we're not digging this. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's lunacy. Bang it on, would have had to be, I would think frequency of some kind. I mean, I would think cymatics frequency. You know how, I mean, when you vibrate sand or salt on a speaker and it gives you the shape of a whatever, that, that yep. it could happen on a huge basis. Ooh. And you were down in Antarctica, right? They're saying you were in Antarctica. Yes, yeah, I spent is it a year really? At the South is Pole it truly Station. cold? Is it truly? Cold oh yeah, down it's there? cold. It's it's cold for sure. There's no denying that. It's yeah, it's it's ruthlessly cold. How about the summer though? Like compared, like is it hot in the summer when it's 24 hours sun though? Like does it? It's a, get it's a relativity least, thing or? for sure, and there's a lunacy. So the hottest day that I was there was actually Christmas Eve, December 24th of 2010, and we got as hot as minus five degrees Fahrenheit, and it felt hot because of the atmosphere conditions being so thin. Um, we were outside in t-shirts and you got too hot. The sun was cooking you. You did not feel cold. Wow. That's wild. That's so wild. Yeah, That's so it, is, cool. it felt uh, odd. Did they let you go anywhere? I mean, if you wanted to go somewhere, could you like just take off and go somewhere? Do you have to get permission to go? Obviously, the Russians have their spot and the uh, different people have I different mean, certainly spots. You, 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 would, you would need to get permissions if you wanted to get anywhere far i mean you can't like you can't commandeer a plane or a helicopter or anything actually there's no helicopter like or something um i mean I, I i took so, like, a snow machine at the tail end of my winter i was i was there for a, a, close to a year at that point and i absolutely scored a snow machine that i was not supposed to have and i drove that until basically the the, the facility the south pole station was like a dot on the horizon but at that point there's, there's just nothing there's nothing to see i mean it's it's an ice field at ten thousand three hundred feet of actual elevation it is completely smooth and barren of anything to look at is it really that high i didn't even realize ten thousand correct ten thousand three hundred feet uh the continent of antarctica is on average the coldest highest and driest it's zero percent humidity literally it explains why it's so cold the height yes it's alone absolutely yeah i the seismic see the, the thing about, that i've got about antarctica and i don't doubt that antarctica exists or i've showed it you know with the shape of it it's shaped like a, a pentagonal star fort and that there to me it seems like there would be some seismic that would come from there and instead the entire 12 years that i've been online we don't have any, not one, single report of an earthquake down there below the ice, which we should pick up. I mean, we should be able to pick it up down in the plate, wherever that is down below. And then a guy, 
yeah, all of the guy, normal outfits that pick these things up aren't picking stuff up there? Correct, Shut correct. We, we don't pick up any seismic, and it's not reported to us. And uh -huh. the weirdest thing happened. Um, a okay. few years ago in 2016, I did a fundraiser uh, for my channel, like a, a few thousand dollars or something like that. Uh -huh. And a fellow shows up. His name was Professor Astor. And okay. Professor Astor showed up below my fundraiser. He's from the University of Colorado. And he called me a fraud <laughs> and said, and furthermore, went off on me basically and told people not to donate to my fundraiser. It was really odd. What was he calling you a fraud about? Well, this is odd. He was talking about fracking earthquakes. And earthquakes okay. can't be caused and induced by man-made drilling. Now, here's the weird part. He then went on to go down to Antarctica to install a bunch of new seismic sensors to detect the <laughs> seismic activity from Antarctica. So and your work this, opposes his work? And he was worried well, about his grant? I, I have no idea. It was really weird. <laughs> I didn't know who like. the guy was. But he ended up going down to Antarctica and installing a, the, a bunch of seismic which mm -hmm. we don't get any info on. And did they ever, de do you know of any earthquakes that were ever detected down there while you were there? I, 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 I don't, um, but then the other thing, like the, the first thought that crosses my mind is you have two miles of ice. Is it possible that that's a, a very effective dampener so that you don't feel the effect? No, I think that would actually, in fact, cause more, or at least on the smaller scale quakes, you'd think they'd be happening uh -huh. all the time from the constant it, ice Well, shifting. I mean, we, yeah, that did happen all the time. So how do you make a distinction? Like we had ice quakes all the time, um, but I don't, I couldn't tell you that it's an ice quake or an earthquake. What's the difference? Right, uh, right, I, with I, like I just, the fracture. Yeah, like with the fracture on, a, on an ice quake, um, I would think that it probably would look like an explosion or something. I don't, I don't know, but like it's really cool to think about that down below the ice sheet that there's, of course, the plate that it's scraping along, and then down in the plate there should be seismic that gets detected five kilometers, ten kilometers, twenty kilometers, fifty kilometers down in the crust, down in the plate, and it doesn't get reported to us. I'm just wondering if there's some other reason. Like I found this stuff from. Um, um. I, I, would, you know, I, would, I, I would say this immediately. There's a massive lag on the info coming off the ice. Hmm. That would make sense. Yeah, like, they might maybe so like, report even it later. If something happened, uh, the general public's not going to hear about it for 10 years. It's just, it's, it's, that's, that's, well, that's just, that's how academia works. That's, that's how the whole yeah. entire system oh, works. Oh, God. Yeah. I oh, mean, God, any yeah. scientist, yeah. any, anywhere on the planet, Antarctica is not exclusive to this uh, snail's pace of dissemination of information. True. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is the last giant ice wall, and that it, it holds the answers to humans' past or to a lot of the mysteries of our realm. I just wanted to point out uh, this old map there, Dutch. You were mentioning the inner sea, the old inner sea uh, that uh, was on the west side that went up to the Salt Lake there uh, on the previous uh, existence of North America. Uh, probably before the ice age or whatnot the catastrophe but here is a map that uh, actually has it depicted there before explorers have made it uh back over to the uh, north area of uh, north america after european recolonization of uh, whatever genocide or reset catastrophe happened Totally. And yeah. when you look at it, too, it matches up with where Salt Lake City goes back to where the old. So we still have the remnants of the old ocean that's still there. Speaking of the old ocean and interior oceans, that gets back to Antarctica. We saw that um, there was this video from Bird back in the 19, like his second first expedition or second. It was the um, Lando Lakes. You guys know about that, right? The Lando Lakes. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, my God. This is crazy. It's Declassified, um, yeah, declassified film from the 1920s from the U.S. Army archives, or no, I'm sorry, U.S. Navy archives. A bird down there, and when bird, it was maybe the second expedition, and they took. Yeah, I don't planes. think it was high jump. I think it was the one after high jump. Right, they took planes and they flew all the way along and went interior to Antarctica, and they said they flew all the way into the very center. But it, I was mind blown to see that. And they, they found this place that they called Lando Lakes. And they said it was several hundred square miles of an area that was staying warm in the middle of winter. 
and that they landed their seaplane to take water well, measurements. It has this light. It was lit up. So, Mike, Mike, it would have been North America's winter and their summer because it was daylight in that filmage because there was some footage of it that came out that's original documented footage of these lakes you're showing, talking about and them being de-iced and melted. Yeah, it would have been summer but down it, there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. for it to be yeah. lit, it would have it would, been, yeah, it would have been dark what if kind they of were flying during, the, during nighttime, yeah. But they, they found it and they said that... I, I, I don't know. I'll go get the um, before we go. I will actually get the the uh, it's from a channel called Periscope Films, who restores old film footage mm -hmm. uh, that's Epic donated to them. They got U.S. government. So check out Periscope Films. They've got it. But totally. And now check I, have, out. I have a curiosity on the way to figure stuff out on that direction, because I, I am curious about what's going on down there as well. And what we can start to conclude is if we know what type of plane it is, people can actually look up like it's going to take a very specific flight pattern. This hole has to be a particularly large hole for you to fly a plane in. Oh, the, these were freshwater just... lakes, Eric, and the the, the footage oh, I've seen the footage too. It's I'll like trying to surface. pull it up yeah. here. I'm not, I'm not it denying like it. I'm just trying to figure out how we can find it. Plane. Yeah, it was. Oh a yeah, I'm saying like when a plane that, comes uh, in for landing, it doesn't just lake. see a hole in the ground and then dive down into it. You know what I'm saying? No, it was freshwater lakes that they saw. So no, th this one that Mike's talking about because there's two stories. There's the story of when Admiral Byrd went into the center and experienced the inner earthness and okay. whatnot. But then there's this second one that Mike uh, Dutch is talking about right now. That is uh, okay. where they saw a bunch of freshwater turquoise colored mm -hmm. lakes with uh, no snow, like melted rock beaches, pebble beaches, and just. Oh, if you're talking colors. on the surface, that could be everywhere. Yeah, on the surface. It was on yeah. the surface. What, but what he found? Rock and bedstone. It wasn't a glacial lake. They were like mm -hmm. actual lakes in the bedrock and that it was uh, an amphibious plane. Maybe it was from Operation High Jump when they, because they did have the aircraft. I'd be, I'd be curious there. to know what Anywho, the plane was. It landed was. and there's color footage of, uh, of them in it. Uh, about oh, I'm sure there's tons of video it. from on the surface. I'm, I was curious about the inner one and what plane they were saying was for that, because then calculations yeah. could, I mean, there could be flight paths and, and hole dimensions figured out. Yeah, he landed um, what what Bird described as they landed, uh, they first spied it from above and they saw that there was no snow and or no ice or anything and that it was down to the surface. And then they landed the plane in the in the waters to test and see. And they found that the waters were somewhat temperate. And this was going on for hundreds of square miles, but they didn't test them all, obviously. But they, the, what they landed in was found to be temperate. And he, they specifically said that the shores were lined with fresh coal on the mm -hmm. surface of the yep. Right. Um, yep. on the surface. Right. Well, so it, guys, I'm, thinking, I, I'm gonna head off. Uh, thank you for having me. Sorry, I couldn't stay for too long, but feel a little bit tired after, after the event. Yeah. Oh, man. So, well, um, well, Dutch, I need to get a way to get in touch with you because we definitely need to do a show together, talk about some stuff. I'd love to pick your brain and go over some, uh, some proper history. Uh, and also, uh, Eric, you sound like someone I want to talk to you as well. Uh, so sure. if we if we could arrange something at some point, that would be absolutely brilliant. And Gerald, you as well. So anyway, on that note... I will leave you guys. I hope you enjoy yourselves. Have a great stream. I'm sorry I couldn't stay longer, but you know, had a Much busy lovely. day, and I, you know, great. I just popped in to uh, do a bit. But anyway, thanks. It's been great. Oh, yeah, much love, brother. <laughs> he had corrective uh, surgery earlier today, and still came in. Yikes! Always a pleasure with Luke. <sighs> Surgery sucks. Any, yeah. Anyway, the, the long story short is that they found this multi-hundred mile wide melted area that they said was melted year round. I don't know how they would know that, but they found it lined with coal. And I thought that was interesting because, OK, coal at the surface and you've got a lot of water, coal and water. All you would need is a boiler and you've got yourself infinite steam, steam power. power. <laughs> like mm -hmm. so as, as a plumber, we... I was confused why they weren't doing steam heat down there entire, for, compared to what they yeah, were doing would... with the glycol and heat exchangers and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, I've heard all of this stuff about uh, Bird before, and uh, have you have you never heard of the dry valleys? Oh, I, I've heard I've In heard Antarctica? the snowless parts. Yeah, I've heard of like um, I, I haven't dry seen valleys. Them, but... That is, is, but that's so he's. I mean, 
people don't realize that he can be discussing very benign things. And because they're not from, these people don't have analytic experience. They just don't like, I get that the story sounds fantastical. I get that it can be fantastical. I'm not against that possibility, but there are also very present facts that also explain exactly what he saw. The dry valleys existed then, the dry valleys exist right now. His explanation could have been him flying into the dry valleys. It could be that simple. It is, is are there? Possible. Is it like? Is it large areas of water in the dry valleys? There is large areas of no ice where there's never been ice, and that's why they're referred to as the dry valleys. They use them uh, as a facsimile yeah, the, of the Mars the, landscape. Yeah, they landed this plane in the water though, so that, that kind of. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm it sure was in the barrier areas between the dry valleys. And the areas that are completely covered with ice, there's probably intermediate situations going on. I, I don't doubt that in the A hundred percent, Eric. What, totally, what you're totally, describing totally. sounds like what uh, you see in the videos of it. And mm -hmm. uh, so these are supposed mountain slash pyramids taken in Antarctica. And uh, you said you were you witnessed at least one uh, of these while you were down there. I've, I've got a, I got a hold of. I have to my right. I have a, a massive, um, uh, panoramic photograph of a mountain range in Antarctica. It's from the program. My roommate was also in the program. She got this photograph from a coworker, like a gift, right? And this, you you sprawl this thing out, and then printed on the picture is each of the names of the mountains in the range. And as you're going through this mount this and mountain that and blah, blah. And then all of a sudden in the middle of it all, over one of the peaks, it just says pyramid. And it's the only one that's shaped like perfectly pointed. And it doesn't say mount pyramid or mountain pyramid. It just says pyramid. So to just me, that's, pyramid, that's photo it? it's photographic evidence from the program that I happened upon somehow. Holy moly. I love That's that. How life right? happens sometimes. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've I've brought this thing out to um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, conventions and things like that. I showed it to Did Brad. You say it's on your wall right now. It's 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 rolled up in a tube right next to. Oh me. darn it! I was like, come on, let's it's just, take a look. I, I've I've put it on the internet for it. The problem is, it's it's like this sixteen foot long panoramic, right? So it's really, it's not meant to be put on a webcam for people to look at because it just looks all blurry at that point. There's no resolution. And then everybody's like, oh, you can't see it. You're a liar. And it's like, what do you want me to do? It doesn't, doesn't translate through the medium. I mean, I can go hold up a picture for you right now and say, hey, here's no a big photo of a mountain you range. Can, you can Right, it's that you've experienced the pyramids down there yourself for the pyramidal mountains. And once you've experienced something for yourself, you know it is truth because you've lived through it. I've, I've flown over the Transantarctic Mountains, and that was that was gorgeous to see all the glaciers. Like it looks, it looks like oceans in motion. You're up so high, everything looks like waves, and and you kind of have to pay attention to the fact that it's not moving. But you can get the feel for the flow with great ease, the way everything's moving through the mountain ranges. You can see it all. Yeah, see, images like this that you put up, like, I see that image, and I start to wonder the labor involved. And, you know, just straight up, there are right? calculations that can be made for man hours. I want to know yeah. how many man hours were put on that site. Cool. Oh. No, how, many many calculation? People, right? like how, how many would you people? guys calculate it? I'm, I'm no expert on ancient construction. But how many men are needed for how many hours a day to do this from start to finish? What was there before this was there, before they moved all of this earth and structure? This is absurd. Right? Well, like the level of terraforming is insane because each one of these canals is literally a wall story uh, down or up from each other and that they've built these in perfect symmetry and level uh, to be able to flow like that, keep the waters like that, and these massive, massive walls up and up and up like that. It's mm -hmm. insane to have to level it all and that each one of these angles are at least one, two, maybe even up to like three or four stories 
of wall, pure wall elevation between each level of these moats and their walls and what they're building and that they have to have this inner same battery geometry, the battery unit, unit that uh, they've bastardized with the bastion fort uh, that we find everywhere as the base of it. And then a lot of the time, the more advanced, then you're going to have an outer shell of uh, with the water in between it insulating. And then between that, uh, then these additional radial pieces. And it's like, it does, they, these don't make sense for a yeah. battle sake. Like, what the heck is this little square here? This little square, this little, like, from people attacking? Like, no, that's not logical in any sense. Like, it, and that with horse and cart and shovel, and right. how the heck would they even level it or get yeah, this above yeah. perspective to be able to understand this perspective of above and then what they're going to have to level on the ground and then actually start doing it all with animal and manual labor? Like, are you freaking kidding me? This is next mm -hmm. to impossible. And no instantaneous yeah. communication either. So, I mean, you're trying to get it down to a point on either side. I mean, mm -hmm. just think yeah. about it, guys. This is the sure. man hours. You're right. It'd be like 20 trillion man hours. And how many, <laughs> how many, you know, how many bulldozers nowadays do you think it would take? I mean, geez, this is insane. Horse and buggy. They, and I, then I even, I, and then I also think too about like practical reality on a job site, right? How did the yeah. folks back then convey the information from the architect's head to the tradesman's hands? We have blueprints and stuff nowadays in conversations, right? How did they practically do this back then? Did they have blueprints for all these facilities that we don't have? Like, what was the medium of communication? Since you're right, they don't have, you know, a way to do it across the site, but let alone how do they even convey the, the idea? This is this it is would, what we're going to build. Yeah, like it would take a day's journey just for one person to take one of the prints to the worker on the other side of the city because they'd have to, like, walk it or hike it or take a freaking... Or like it, it's just it's so impractical well, Man, that, that star fort that. that you showed out in the florida keys earlier how many bricks were built like what how many boats worth of bricks did they send out there are you kidding me was it 16 million i think yeah how do you get how do you get how do you get truck loads of bricks on and off of a wooden yeah and they built the the Civil like, war where do you get the manpower yeah. at the height of the Civil War to do that? How many meetings would it take literally to build just one ah. section of wall? Or the be star fort being built over there. Impossible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's. Yeah, absolutely. we've got a hidden history. I mean, it's pretty obvious there's a hidden history. I'd say the one place where we don't have any clue on it is uh, where there, you know, it, it probably wouldn't be, would be down in Antarctica where it's just 10,000 feet of ice and anything mm -hmm. down below is going to be scraped away anyway. So we wouldn't have evidence there. And it would be so I, old anyways that you wouldn't know. Like it's I, just, I can tell you this much when they were drilling, uh, drilling and being a relative term, using hot water to remove the ice, to get down, to do stuff um, for the ice cube neutrino detector installation. Um, they were hitting trees and palm trees and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, I've there heard was, of that there stuff. Too. There was stuff in the ice for sure. It was Palm tropical, the subtropical ice? plant Correct. and animal, uh, like matter and fossilization they'd find underneath the ice and in the sludge. They, they found all, all kinds of weird stuff. They found a crate of That's old hot dogs awesome. from some old expedition and they ate them and got sick. <laughs> Finding palm trees, though, that's huge. I mean, apparently you know. Apparently, it's the exact in Alaska, too. About the woolly mammoths that were frozen, I don't know if there where that was, but there were those flash frozen over by woolly... Fairbanks. Is that what it was up north? So yeah, over by Fairbanks, the guy had five acre property. He's got over ten thousand woolly mammoths on it. Wow. Yep. The boneyard there, right? Yep. Like correct. Yep. And that a lot of what they're finding is that the plants are like tropical ish, or like. Uh, just subtropical, definitely a lot, uh, not just northern, but actually tropical and uh, what's med what's in between it? Some, I, I don't know. 
Sorry. So I'm trying to realize right now, the yeah. southern part of Alaska right now is a rainforest. Yeah. Oh, that, that's on the yeah. coast. Right. Well, how far north is Alaska, right? Because you're in Alaska. Freakishly compare... north. Alaska's just, Alaska's just massive. But the state of Alaska like, is one third the size position. of the lower 48. To where you were in, like, with the what you experienced in the South Pole in a year at the South compared to uh, where you are in Alaska in a year in the North. I've, I've been to the South Pole Station, which is 90 degrees south, but I've also been to places as far north in um, Alaska. I think I was up near, like, 72 degrees up in Barrow, Alaska, Ukiavik, which is the furthest northern point in Alaska. Uh, I did some work up there. So they do get 24 hours of darkness in the wintertime for a bit. Um, I guess they get 24 hours of sun for a little while, too, in the summertime. I don't think I spent as much time up there in the summer, though. But um, it gets a, uh, it gets cold in Barrow, but nowhere near, like, South Pole. I think the coldest that I saw in Barrow was maybe, like, minus 20 or minus 30 or something like that Fahrenheit. Okay, so, like pretty much the same temperature as I'm experiencing in Southern Alberta, Calgary. Probably. Next yeah, I, would, I would be surprised if it gets colder than minus 40 Fahrenheit in Barrow, which is the same as minus 40 Celsius. So you'd be familiar with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then how warm does it get in the winter too, when it's like pitch black there? Like uh, I remember a couple, like last year, two years ago, it was like, right around christmas and super dark and you were like it and above freezing temperatures for a week or two or something wasn't it oh yeah we get we get weird warm spells every now and then for sure you're talking about up here in alaska yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. I mean, we, yes sir yeah it gets it gets cold in the winter time um but it's not brutal up here actually and it, and it can it could warm up freakishly at any point in time like today they were today they were we were supposed to be in the 40s but it's going to wind up not happening and we got snow everywhere right now right so dutch i'm bringing this up uh in regards to a little bit we've talked off air about the weather and the weather patterns and how what uh, we're being told of what it is might not necessarily be exactly that. And that uh, there's been this extreme, sh like uh, uh, especially North America or America's where uh, on the East coast, it can be extremely hot. It will be the exact opposite on the West coast and be in an exact freeze, but it extends all the way down pretty much into Mexico now and it goes back and forth all winter long where now like Texas and Mexico are getting snow each year and that it can be warmer in Alaska when it's close to 20 24 hours of darkness and uh, warmer there than it is in Mexico pretty much like for like it, it's just nuts like or it I guess not weird. it would have uh, to be you know, Florida, not Mexico, because it's on opposite sides. When one is hot, one is cold. The USDA, the U United States Department of Agriculture, um, I think in 2018, or maybe it was 2017, I don't know the exact year, um, announced that they are a new growing guidelines for farmers and people who plant crops outdoors. And they had it organized by like a one, two, three, and four category going up north. And they shifted every area north by one full number north, whereas stuff that would normally be planted down in Arkansas and North Texas can now be planted up in Missouri. And they shifted that whole thing to the north all the way to the North Pole by changing the numbers and saying that, that that's due to climate change, whatever you want to call that, and that the warmer latitudes are shifting northwards the same year actually this was 2012 so it wasn't 2017 it was 2012 and the way i know it was 2012 they same year a bunch of airports across the country shifted their um there's like a magnetic declination for pilots that set into a magnet at the airport basically along the runway so you can find your way in in the darkness or anything else Anyway, they had to shift the magnet slightly because north had shifted slightly, which we all know is shifting slightly and heading over towards Siberia and picking up pace heading over towards Siberia. And the, they keep track every year. You can see the progression of the pole, the magnetic pole going over towards 
Siberia. Now this gets in with Edwin Haley. That, that last picture, does anybody know what that was? The sun dog one? The one on the right there? Yeah, so this one right here, the drawing? Yes. Uh, looks like a couple of comets and some sort of alchemical astrological. I, I meant the source. Any idea where that came from? No, I, I okay. sorry. I, I'm I intrigued probably that it matches the sun dog so well. Exactly, That's right? Perfect match, like, actually, yeah, yeah, it is. Truly, that was um, something that I did witness down in the summer season at the South Pole. I don't know to um, what iteration, but it was um, like, multiple like iterations match, outward. Um, when the sun dogs grow into their different iterations and get more complex, they really start to look like a giant flower of life in the sky. And I saw one that was very complex one time and it had a lot of the circles and the nodes. And I, I couldn't begin to tell you what level it was, but it was it was nuts to see happening. Really? Yeah, they get that, that one's just starting. The one on the left, they're starting to get bigger. And the top ring will grow and then more rings will grow around the sides. And it actually starts to wrap around your entire like horizon line they get more you can look up pictures on you can look up pictures they grow in a very determined fashion like in the different stages and such can you actually watch them grow line by line or is it sort of like a field growth it was i think it would this the, the latter it was more like a field growth it was more like That's cool. um it That's was more like it was more like in a way it seemed like it was like it was like something that you felt like it was there all the time you couldn't see it it was like it was materializing in front of you that's awesome it was like all in, in like in, in in sections this looks like underground tunneling beneath the fields coming out from the star fort this is tunnels Ooh. and look at the freaking geometry and weirdness what could be the rationale purpose of this it makes me vast think of a network. tesla valve the check valves the no parts check valves the one-way valves. oh yeah yeah that's Here what that makes me think of. that's what that is uh, it's exactly what that is water flow um, that's water underneath probably then keeping it in check hmm. interesting Did you guys happen to hear, it was uh, not that long ago, there was some information that just came out to the public, um, which was an example of what I was saying before, that's interesting, um, that the, the, the information comes out in a, in a lag. When I was in Antarctica, when I was on the ice, I was hearing information at the time. So to me, it was, it was understood. I was present in a place where this information was understood. They were already discussing the massive waterways in between the ice sheet and the continent, like rivers and stuff like that, and that there would be large caverns because the, the rivers flowing are at a completely different temperature than the ice above it. So it would carve out like a like a, a, a half a, a half pipe above the riverbed, and there would probably be shorelines and stuff like that. These were just things that I heard back then, and it was only just this year that that apparently they came public and they were like, oh, you know, they, we, we flew planes over with LIDAR. We just figured out. And it's like, just figured out seems to be a really screwy way of saying things. Mm -hmm. Like, right, they've, I remember learning about that like at least 15, 20 years ago. Oh, well, they're... Now, now they're, clar they're doubling down on that it's a massive river system, they said, equal to any other river system of any other continent that we see that's not covered with ice. Wow. Really? And then right. isn't this the actual uh, land, two chunks of Antarctica? It's uh, supposedly this is actually what it looks like. That's an like interesting way of putting the it. Water, and that there's like this uh, water sea between the two. Well, it's it, that that totally makes sense, right? Because the vast majority of the land mass of the continent of Antarctica is below sea level. So you go slapping ice on top of it, right? And then you have mountains that cut through that and peak all the way up. Well, down at sea level and or below sea level, it affords a lot of opportunity for there to be waterways in between the ice and the land. Very Which good. Is pretty point. much what Hitler's guys were saying back in the day. Right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that John Warner the Third, the former Secretary of the Navy that passed away recently, disclosed that we had submarines throughout Antarctica utilizing these waterways. 
Really? When he, was asked, when he was asked about why, his response was space operations. That what? explains the lack of reporting of earthquakes, guys. I would I would agree right. with that. I mean that if if they're going that far, it would cover a lot of lack of reporting for a lot of stuff. Totally. Totally. That's that that would explain yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Uh my mind. Yeah, once you add submarines to the mix, everything's quiet. It's the silent service. <laughs> Literally, that gets into the submarine base out in the middle of the Mojave and the supposed connection from the West Coast to the Mississippi River. The, 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 there's this video on YouTube from several years ago of two ex-U.S. Navy SEALs or whatever, and they're on camera going on record, you can believe it or not, that they say that starting at Monterey Bay off the West Coast of California, that wow. there's a undersea connection of tunnels and that the United mm -hmm. States is more like a plate going over the top of an ocean and that they take submarines all the way into Nevada and then all the way through the underneath the plate and come out in the Mississippi River in a freshwater pocket that comes up through the center of the plate. And that they're able to take saltwater subs out in the ocean, bring them into freshwater and come up and go down the lock and dam canal system of the Mississippi River. <laughs> I, wow. This is in all the video I watched. I, I'm like, what the heck? It. Now you got yeah, this is years ago. If, I saw that video. So if they, I if remember they can, if they can do that, that maneuver, they should be able to pull off the Antarctic maneuver. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you know, it's a, uh, if there's underground caverns, you can certainly bet that the submarines would use them if they could. They do biannual exercises up here in the north under the ice with the submarines. Ice X happens every two years. Yeah, uh, off the coast of Alaska and stuff. That's. Yeah, they're testing oh. to operate under the ice, which means you can't surface. So that's uh, let's just say that 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 might be getting a boat ready to go and do a little bit more developed operations. Oh well, yeah, but uh, I'm just thinking of like the size of the ice sheet up there, and uh, like it's essentially a continental-sized ice sheet, especially in the winter. And that's mm -hmm. what, at least what they claim to be there. And if they are traversing that entire thing, that's the same lengths and conditions as what uh, you're speaking about in Antarctica of navigating those lakes and uh, underground uh, rivers I and think, passages through the ice. I think it's actually more of a psychological test for the crew of training. I assure you that the submarine crew. Oh, for sure. Wants you're, you're the getting... ability to spawn that boat. You know what I'm saying? When you get on a submarine oh, and you go underwater and you have to do your submariner's job, um, no rescue. Everything's if great goes wrong. on the surface, right? Right. But you take that away, and that crew now has an issue. So I believe the Ice X operations. I don't think it's so much about the maneuverability training of tight quarters. It's just simply you can't get up. You still have some. You lose. You have a, a ceiling now, but you still have your left and right movement. You still have depth that you can go to. You just can't surface willy nilly anymore. There, you might be able to find a thin spot. Certainly, they do training to puncture through the ice. They do that every training with Isex. Um, but I think it's more of a psychological training for the crew to get acclimated uh, to I've, not being able uh, to before surface. Before I uh, change change the subject here and what's up uh, this star for it you can see the water of how they have the canals running through it's like uh probably 15 different yes 10 connections to the outer one going in and then three inner circles and that uh this is what milano the city of milano huh? And just so you know, Bernie, uh, in 1994, uh, and the, in 1994, you know, I was in the subservice. Uh, but then what the heck was what? They hey, thank you for your service, man. That's got to be a heck of a job to be down in the submarine, man. Uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't, right much of a makes it, wasn't, glorious. it wasn't much of a participation on my side, Dutch, since, to be honest. Um, it was a very peculiar enlistment, which is worthy of other conversations. I learned a lot of weird stuff about what's going on in the world from my short time in the submarine service. Uh, <laughs> but I, I wound up getting myself out technically. So um, I, I, I don't need any. You, you fake claustrophobia or something, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I yeah, no. 
Okay, I remember what I wanted to ask. There's a lot going on under the water that they're not telling us about. You're a thousand percent correct. Um, There was technologies that I saw in 1994 that they were apologizing to me for saying, oh, it's an old boat. We have old tech. We're so sorry. We're going to get upfitted. And that was stuff that the rest of the world didn't see for 40 fucking years. Touch screens on phones and stuff. You think Steve Jobs invented that? Come on. Mm -mm. These, These everybody out there that's loaded gets handed everything. We pay Just for it with our tax dollars. Our research and development goes into some program, and then some buddy of some pal gets handed all the info, and then yeah. they become indebted to them. And that company now uh, makes shitloads of money, and you think that the outfit that got them started can't dip into that? You think the CIA gets you all set up and then leaves you alone? <laughs> Yeah, here's your billion dollars. I heard they never do it. Yeah, you, we're, we're never going to touch any, You're never going to do anything for us. <laughs> you do everything for us, you mean. <laughs> yeah. So, Dutch, I wanted to bring up that uh, you made several very uh, interesting and fascinating discoveries over monitoring of these cycles, these energies, as well as the satellites and uh sensor information feeds over the years uh one being the uh radar the uh sorry forgive me i'm a little tired the which type of radar was it that causes the tornadoes and the toroidal spinning as well as all these energy laser beam blasts uh as well oh michael you're there you go oh my you. god okay okay hold on let me get this can of worms and let me open it up <laughs> we've got we've got so much that we could talk about when it comes to this. I could go on for three hours. This is where I got into all the trouble. This is where I got my channel shut down. This is where this was the forbidden topic, which is directed energy weapons. It was said to not exist. It was said to be a conspiracy. It was said it couldn't happen. It said it couldn't be done. And I, all right, I understand. Wait, pause for one sec. Pause for one sec. So, because this could get us shot down, and since Zertus isn't here and Campbell uh, left, I'm going to shut down on both of his channels, and we will just be live on my two remaining channels. So, uh, I will post the link on that and fully continue uh, live aspect of it. The, the, the forbidden word, man. The forbidden the word. The H word. Yeah. yeah. Do not say it. It's like Baltimore, but Harp. So it now I, I'm not blaming Harp. Harp is just the go-to word that everybody talks about. Again, we Harp is the high frequency active Aurora research program up in Alaska, does ionospheric research, and it can heat little pockets in the atmosphere and ionosphere up above Harp. Uh, it's not controlling your mind in Australia, and it's not fracturing the earth in Turkey. Okay, we can rule those things out for Harp, I think, personally. Um, but what I found, this goes back to 2011, and I noticed this quite by accident. Um, this actually started on New Year's Eve of 2010 going into 2011. On New Year's Eve, thousands of animals fell out of the sky. Thousands of, of birds fell out of the sky in Greenbrier, BB, Arkansas. And they exploded from the inside. They were, they were cooked. They, were, um, they tried to blame it on fireworks at first. But it turns out there was no fireworks done in the area for New Year's. And this was in a rural area in Greenbrier, BB, where they're doing a lot of oil and gas drilling. So I was thinking it could have been something to do with maybe an oil and gas release, maybe some kind of toxic chemical made its way out and the birds inhaled it or something and exploded the birds, you know, burned them inside. I don't know. And within a couple days of that happening, of the birds falling out of the sky, and it was like 10,000 birds. It wasn't just a couple. It was whole t- 